Alrighty, so we have who's who. Do you know who's who? Yeah. So how? Uh, go ahead and talk into it. Testing, testing. Yep, you're on. Okay, now I'm on. All right, and cool. Elena's joining us. Hi. Uh, how do you feel about your draft? Um, it started out really good, and then I think it's a train wreck. You always think every draft you do is a train wreck. Yeah, I mean, the first one was objectively bad. Uh, so left is Hagen? Yes. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, it looks very similar to the one you did... Um, in the second one? The first one without me. Okay, that well, that one was very different. That one had, like, a pile of creatures. Yeah, you were a little more stacksy, I guess. That one had a pile of creatures and, like, an eighth of Io. This one has four creatures in it. I was really surprised you didn't draft... Uh, actually, chat was also surprised you didn't draft, like, Colonnade was a big one. Colonnade is really slow in this format. Okay, cool. That's um, I, w I think of this more like Legacy and less, like, modern. Um, I drafted Colonnade in the first one, and I never activated it. And in Sorry, I got chat back now. Uh, in um, them hands. Left side, obviously hanging. Of course, I would not know that. Um, Steve versus Steven. Uh, I'll change it. Dang it, I forgot. He goes by Steven. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and then, like, no Lavinia. I guess it wasn't a high performer for you. Oh, God, no. That, <laughs> that card is garbage. Um, it's like pick three. <laughs> yeah, let's not talk about that. That, that was a mistake. Yeah, uh, no, it was cool. I thought it was a fun, like, draft. I like uh, how my deck, I like the average, like, like, I think my deck will perform in top half. That's definitely going to happen. Um, yeah, I think but so. I'm here to win, right? Because yeah, I've gotten third twice, and it doesn't feel very good, and, you know, the, the last two times I've been the worst seat, like, fifth seat, uh, and... Sorry. Was, one sec. Is there a interlay overlay over here? Oh, yeah, that should be... Uh, can you expand this a little bit? Just make this window a little bigger? You just can't see it. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, it's... Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Uh, so that should be zoom. That should be showing the, uh, the, the current record of okay. this match. Okay, where's that overlay? Uh -huh. Oh my god. Yeah, so that one's just the Emanuel Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Cool. I was what I was quick. All right, sorry, uh, there's a lot of uh, on the fly patches here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Oh my god, this I, is. One sec. Yeah? I fixed the zoom issue. All right, I'm back. Sorry. Um, All right, so we have. Uh, Steven versus Mark. Yeah. Uh, Mark is on mono blue control, I would say. Mono blue. And nonsense. Steve is on like some Abzan Vizier deck. So it's like kind of fun, honestly. I think my deck is better than Mark's, but like I'm. A I thought your upset. deck was better than Mark's, but I thought you guys fought for too far too long over the same stuff. I mean, but I was locked in. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, nice moon base mats. Yeah, they are nice moon base mats. Um. Mage's Charm, Force of Will, Islands, other cards that we'll see when we see. Uh, you say fifth seed is worth, but he got time ball, pick one, yeah. Okay, well, I think Mark and whoever was in fourth seed, who I'm, I'm forgetting, um, heavily misplayed there. Mark came into this with no preparation, but like... He, he was a last second add-on. I know, yeah, but like at the same tough. time, like third, I think you're just supposed to sl slam time ball. I think like, if time... If, I think I think if I think both, some, if, if number one takes Black Lotus and then number two either takes Time Vault or Ancestral and then you take the other one <laughs> because I feel like how it usually goes. Yes, but Ancestral was better than Time Vault, so I I was locked in. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think third or fourth, both of them should have taken Time Vault, and for some reason Blyden convinced them it was bad. Yeah, yeah Blyden I heard was talking a lot of s about it. Yeah, uh, and I told him it was bullshit, and then no one believed me. So for sure, that's hilarious. Good for Blyden. Um, for getting his Time Vault. 
it looks like we're resolving mulligans if there is. So I think Steven's deck is really interesting. Uh, I think the biggest weakness of his deck is he has the worst mana of the entire tournament. He has yeah. like no fixing, and he's got double black cards, double white cards, double green cards. Like, so it's going to be really tough. But like, I think his power level is good. I think he just wasted a lot of picks on redundancy. On when nonsense. Leads on a Mother of Runes tends to be pretty good against this... Actually, I mean, I don't think it does much. No <laughs> removal spell. Doesn't it doesn't, doesn't Archmage just charm? Huh? Doesn't Archmage just charm? Yeah, yeah, but it still dies to. Uh, I mean, Mark's win condition, as far as I'm concerned, is Delve for Petromander and Trinity. <laughs> forces the Mother of Runes. Actually, oh, makes goodness. sense. Well, because like, Mark literally just can't beat resolved permanents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. He's <laughs> got Chain of Vapor. That's in that the problem, right? Box. Wow, this guy leading on Mark. Stun Seems to be good. I'm gonna get rid of this. This, this is gonna get mana drained. Or something. Oh. Um, mystical tutor and mystical tutor. Cards. What card is that? Is that a, that's a devoted druid? It is. It's gonna go into what is that? Guys, I'm sorry about the glare. We're gonna see if we can fix it as the day goes on, but uh, as of right now, we're gonna live with what we live. Uh yeah, so I don't know. I think Mark probably wins this one. I think just Hagen is a tap out to do his thing kind of deck, and Mark can just wait on it. Yeah. I was shocked no one drafted red, like, at all. This was the most red averse draft I've ever seen. I mean, people play what they want to play. What is that? That is... 3 mana 4 4? That's an Ashiok. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that Ash could just win. Uh, that could just literally mill out your opponent. Yeah. Three I mana, was really happy 20. to see that pick. Uh, collect, collect company, company for four. We're gonna see Gush here. It's gonna go in response Gush. That does not seem like a correct use of Gush. I mean, if he hits Days. Yeah. Because he has Days as well, and it resolves. Ooh, that's tough. So you hit Days, and then you go like Days. Your collecting company have no mana left. Yeah, but I mean, like his deck is terrifying. Oh. Oh, Vizier. Oh, so he now has infinite mana. That's cool. Does Hagen just win? No. Uh, does he have a pool for it? Yeah, I was about to say, Steven is hate threatening legal. Yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> Mark counting up the green mana. <laughs> Just doesn't have it? Doesn't have anything. I mean, I guess he has to minus Ashiok and hope he just keeps hitting win cons. And just... I think so, yeah. Oh, he didn't minus it? He I doesn't. Would, I would have minus it. I mean, what sure, Ashiok dies. What is the other but... card behind the Vizier? Um... What, death right? You don't actually oh, it's a Vizier here. You don't need to tap mana for that death right. Yeah, misplay. <laughs> right? Like. Ashiok does shut off cord. Yes, yes that, that is true. That's true. It's, it's a serious. So sack it. Draw. Uh, to scry. It's interesting. You, you sack, sack the death right. Sorry, didn't. Yeah, that. that's bizarre. Sure, I guess. I mean, he's just looking for a mana pump dump, dump right? Sack is your. Says, make a bunch of mana. Now what? Keeps doing it. Sure, make some black mana. Uh, bitter Ordeal? Why is he mainboarding Bitter Ordeal? Uh, I mean, it's just Jester's Cap. I guess he gets... He takes the true name, and... So, like, if he takes the true name, and the Snapcaster, and the Terramander, then, like, there is... There's the Delver. There's Delver. Okay, there are literally four cards that kill him. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say, like, yeah, that's true. So, like... At a certain point, you know, and like, I have all the planeswalkers, so like, it's not even like a repeatable sort of so source of advantage. What's the deal with Ma uh, Mark counting on this? Mark is showing how much green mana is floating in the pool. Can you right bitter deal with Ashiok and play? That is a uh, your opponents can't search their yeah, libraries. It's a one way. Uh, can search their own libraries. It's a new like card, and we don't do uh, symmetrical offense on. Symmetrical effects on new card, if I remember. Can't you can't switch your own library? Yeah, their library. Which is yeah, is. basically, is what it is. So Mark is. It's half off screen, but it feels like Death Right Shaman got sacrificed straight into the exile pile. Uh, well, it is now exiled. I guess he's just putting it straight into the exile. That is true, though. We'll tell him to shape that up. You're right. In the middle of the pick, so you have maximum flexibility with each pick to see what people on the left right pick, yeah. Yeah, 
accidentally fixed, but yes, fixed. All right, Ashiok is dead. Kill the Ashiok. Now what? Just let's go. Where's the lance? Let's go. I mean, Steven just needs to draw any win condition. Yeah. Though at this point, it's going to be difficult to resolve anything. Yeah, well, yes. Still is going to slowly die. Oh, what? Dharmu's call? Yeah, it's Alpha Rami. That and will win the game. I mean, it's going to get countered, I assume. Yeah. Is that? Remand. Uh, this is remand. Is this says okay. It's just gonna be cast. Yeah, I mean he has infinite mana. He just as many pips. As oh, he only has one white. Oh, oh, that's annoying. Makes infinite mana. Makes a noble hierarch. Attack for three. Mark has some huge tracks of lands, but they're clear here. Yeah. Says what is this? Is that a ancestral visions? Yes, did not is. think that that was um, something in this deck. I must have missed that. Counter spell of the call. Swings for three. Mark is down to 11. I would counter the creature gets. Well, he had remand. Well, I guess he did have counter spell there. Yeah. That's fair. It's hard to tell exactly what was had, but. So, like, if you're Hagen, you just. Bash. You bash while. I just wouldn't cast anything, and then Makes like, mana. at a certain point, you just play a bunch of things. Because Mark literally, like, deck lists are open, that's how this format works. Yeah. And like, Mark can't beat resolved permanence in game one. 22, Kitchen Finks. Alright, well Mark is dead, basically, I don't think he has a card that gets him out of this. Ancestral's ticking down. Get probe can't. Well, he can cast it. Get probes his opponent. Sees a path to exile in a forest. Draws a card. Draws another island. Very mana flooded. True name nemesis and chain of vapor. Yeah, he's dead. He's conceding that one. All right, first game goes to. Yeah. So I believe. Mark has some sort of like bounce or green creatures or whatever thing in his hand. Doesn't he? Have, was it you who drafted acid rain? I did draft acid rain. Okay, well, um, yeah. But he has like bounce green creatures or something like that in his deck. Yeah, I need a one sec. Let me double check his uh, deck list. Hibernation? No, I don't think it was hibernation. But if we take a look, scroll down. It's pretty far down, I think. So I think in Mark's deck he should have taken Aethergust over Flash Freeze because Aethergust can deal with something that's resolved and that's something that he has a weakness for but that's- oh! Curfew! Yeah, yeah he has Curfew. curfew. That's, that's like a reanimator tech card, I don't know if he's- Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, that's a- each player bounces the thing? Yeah, that's yeah. not good. Never mind. Uh, let's go back to play. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think Caterberg just has to counter spells. Like, that's really what it is. Is like, Caterberg has to kill or a counter Vizier of Remedies, and then... Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Like, just really stop. I mean, that was a really good Coco, right? Like, it was a Vizier with... Yeah, but, like, it's a 40... It's a 40-card deck. It's a 40-card deck. We see... Mm, we see joke. Something. We see his sideboard cards. It's all of his anti-blue stuff. Of course. Yeah. That's, like, one of the, I think, issues with playing blue in this format is... Oh, he could shackles it, yes. Upheaval, upheaval shackles it. There's no upheaval. Uh, shackles and bribery, that's true. Yeah, yeah but I mean, that uh, Coco came down on turn three. Like, that Coco came down into turn turn three yeah. against, uh, like, but it's, it's hard, guys. Like, yeah, it's a 40-card deck, but sometimes there's gaps. You can always shoot the gap. And it's tough playing these blue decks when you just know that everyone's bringing in three silver bullets against you. Like I mean, but this format just you can play a bunch of silver bullets. Oh yeah, it's allowed. Dismember, your name nemesis, Mystic Confluence. Yeah. Which member? Dismember. Does Mystic Confluence bounce things? Uh yes. Oh. Mystic Confluence bounces and 
spell pierces things, I think. It spell mana leaks and yeah. draws cards. Yeah. So. Good card. Yeah, I should have taken that. It'll be better post board for Kettleberg. I don't know about that. I think. So, like, his deck is something that I'm very scared of, but I don't. I think if you two play, when you, when you two play, it's going to be a really interesting game. Yeah. We should uh, save that for the camera. Yeah, it's just going to be a tough one for both of you. You both have so few win cons that, like. I have Mentor. You do have Mentor. That's, like, the big one. Yeah, that's, yeah. like, your big advantage. That's a big one. And I think that, like, even, like, Narset or, like, Teferi, like, granted, it doesn't win the game, but, like, it basically you have wins the, the game. Friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have. And, like, Dovin's annoying. Dovin's annoying, and, and I have Jace the Mind Sculptor. So it's mm. like, if I, I was stick. I am surprised how early you took Jace. I mean, I know you were next to Mark, and, like, Mark's going to draft yeah. Jace eventually, but, like, I was like, wow, pick three Jace. Ooh, fast. I think it will be a little bit better. I mean, he's probably bringing in more of those bounce effects. True Nemesis is a great catch all, but the thing is, like, the mana dumps that he has being Steven just win the game. Like, sure. If he gets the Yogmoth combo. That off. mana leak is not staying, staying in. Yeah, the mana leak is not the answer. So, like, the way I was thinking about it is, like, I think mana leak is, like, in constructed 60 card formats, mana leak is a lot better than people think it is. Um, and. Well, yeah, it's such a great tempo card. Like, it on curve until the first, like, seven turns of the game, it's a good. Like, I've seen people play it in Legacy. Yeah. Which is, like, insane. And I think that this you think of this format and evaluate these cards based on their power level in legacy mm -hmm. i think and that's kind of where that came from and like <laughs> merc took the mana drain and the counter spell super early i mean someone else took the drain and merc took the counter spell and it's like well i mean i guess yeah i mean i don't know that dolphin speed i, I could have floated. You could float it to 45th on that one. Yeah. I mean, but there were so many blue-white cards I could have floated. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, I'm seeing treasure because I'm seeing no lands. So Should that's a mole. I'm surprised. Manalik sees play in modern. Manalik sees play in modern. How bad do people think it is? Manalik has see, has sees play in modern now, but for about a year it saw no play. People were just playing Logic Knot. I'm a blue-white control player. I know how this works. Yeah. Um, but like, a lot of the time that format got slower and and a lot of the time time like mana leak was just dead so people were playing logic knot yeah now you're seeing mana leak being played because logic knot's like well now people are playing hogak so well, it's yeah. like because the format speeds up people can play leak and now it's better yeah. um so that's the analysis i've had if it's better to evaluate as vintage cube or regular vintage i have played neither of those formats so i don't know uh, it's better answer. to evaluate as Vintage Cube. Um, I regular mean, Vintage is far more consistent. I mean, uh, yes, but Vintage Cube, I think, is a, a s slower format than this. Yes, for sure. Uh, it's a Crown Scepter with a Counterspell underneath on turn one, because we're playing fair and balanced Oh, magic. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, God. I don't think Hagen can win. I don't know if Hagen can beat that. Uh, what's the uh, Ice Crown Scepter activation cost again? Two. Yeah, so... You can just, yeah. I don't think Hagen can win. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I mean, so this is vintage rotisserie draft. Um, stuff like this happens every once in a while, and you'll notice the. You get to explain this all the time. I want to explain this. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so vintage rotisserie draft is a format in which basically, um, we get to, we snake draft all. All cards that are legal and vintage. So, for example, the first. Player, I was more talking about oh, how okay this is. How okay this is. This is? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. How this is just casual. Uh, Prowling Sephiroth. Ooh, that's like one of the few cards Hagen can oh. resolve. Rep. That's a, that's so good against Counter Spell. Yeah, it's <laughs> devastating. Oh, does he have a? Is that a dismember? Yeah, that is he a does. Prowling Sephiroth. That was probably one getting of the dismembered. Few instantaneously dismembered. That was probably one of the few outs um, he had to that. To be honest. Yep. It's pretty brutal. Yeah, he's just playing lands. He'll I lost draw that a lot in standard. The Sephiroth. The Sephiroth. It was a good card in standard. Yeah. Until you know, I would just make. cast out it. Yeah. What is this time walk? Sure. Time walk as, ex explore, as explore because I mean. It's not 
That's a chase architect of thought, right? No, that was a spell star. Oh, okay. That's fine. Yes, the London Mulligan made cards that needed two to three card combos better. So here's what Hagen needs to do. Hagen needs to just play Drago for like six turns and yeah. then vote up a bunch of things and then cast them all on, on, on the same turn. Because the one thing that he does have going for him is Mark doesn't have, especially when they're not deployed, very many win conditions. He could reasonably... Mark also doesn't have consistent sources of card advantage. Yeah, yeah. He could reasonably fade right. losing like to a true name. Yeah. Like it's, right now. <laughs> um, it's not like Mark is going to like slam a Jace. Or is Blue Sun Zenith. Blue Sun? $3,000. Explore. <laughs> yes, that was a $3,000 explore. So did Mark just Mystical for a Blue Sun or something? Oh, he Cunning Wish for the Blue Sun. Cunning Wish for the Blue Sun. Okay, well there's your card advantage. So he passes and then he draws four cards next turn? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yep. I, I like it. For some reason I thought Elaine had Cunning Wish. Uh, I didn't I did. realize he had. He has the cunning one. Yeah, I thought I knew one of you had it. Kitchen Finks. Uh, so his thought process, what, right, was that so he's double spelling E witness back for the Kitchen Finks. Let's go, because the E witness really isn't going to do it at the end of the day. I don't know. Yeah, I guess you keep those creatures in the graveyard. Probably except for five. Yeah, that makes sense. So the reason why Mark he has a bribery in hand. Oh God, he's not a bribery, a treachery. I I I you have the I have I'm getting your guys' sorry I'm getting your deck list have, mixed up. I have the treachery, yeah. yeah. So Mark's thought process for doing the cutting wish is because he looked at his deck and was like, I have a twenty eight card main deck. So I'm just yeah. gonna put some of these put in the sideboard and yeah. wish for them. Which makes this sense. Fair. Yeah. Like I think his time. use of wish is probably the best out of everyone. I saw someone has living wish. With Registrar it. Alpha as the target, like, come on, right? It's just, gonna, it's just not really powerful. Uh, he has an extra COP red. So... <laughs> Katerberg is Weissmanning up. Um, Katerberg is drawing cards, yeah. Katerberg is Weissmanning it up. I mean, I would like to say that I'm the Weissman deck. Yeah. I don't know. Katerberg is like this weird... Katerberg has Delver. That's a win condition. Yeah. I mean, come on. Katerberg has... Um, Here's the bribery. What's, What's he, he get? get? Uh, Frick. He can get Yagmoth. He can get uh, Murderous Redcap. Oh come on! This has to be something better than that. Probably. Goes in response. Fetch. Just oh, like, just like. Just, hey, while you're looking through my library, could you please get this <laughs> land out? Please get this land for me. <laughs> Both of you, he says. By the way. Both of you are. We're both Weissmanning it. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, but, I mean, given the things I've heard about Weissman recently, I mean, I don't know if I'm a fan of that idea. Like, wait a minute. Hold on. Um. <laughs> so weird. What does he get? He gets. Is that a war? Is that a war spine worm? Was that him? No, no, no. no. Um, the sneak attack player has the war spine worm. Okay. Oh, he could get a Shalai. That seems pretty good. Shalai. Yeah. It's a flying 3-4. That that's can't good. That go away. I mean, I think gonna get usually when you bribery, you can get something bigger than Shalai. But I guess that's just like... There's not, he's playing a lot of mid-range cards. Yeah, it's Yagmoth or Shalai as far as I'm concerned. Death right, not really worth it. Yeah, I think he takes the Shalai. Oh, he has Hoof. He could take Hoof. Just bash in. Hoof? It's just a 5-5 that like has to go away. No, Shalai protects him from Murderous Red Cap for a little bit. Hoof is a 5-5. Five five. Did Hagen not find his land? Uh, Mark just chose like just not to find his land. <laughs> Mark chose not to find his land for him. What a jerk. <laughs> this is don't be a dick, Ario. Come on. Yeah, come on, guys. Hoof is Very five conclave, five. win condition. It's a si the first turn, it's a 6-6, six six, isn't it? With a haste. Exactly. Counts itself. Well, he's going to Snapcaster or Bribery him again. <laughs> Deck for seven plus uh, yes. five for twelve. He's like, excuse me. Well, well, I guess also Snapcaster is a creature. So yeah, Snapcaster. And so eight plus six. And Shalai. So everything gets plus three plus three. So eight plus six plus five. That's lethal. We're dead. Well, I mean, Snapcaster doesn't have haste. Hmm? No, the hoof will give it haste. Does it actually do? Yeah, that? it gives every creature. Uh, hoof is gross. Hoof gives haste. Hoof gives trample and haste. I don't think so. Because it gives itself. Doesn't it? it? It itself has haste. Or am I thinking of the 
or am I thinking of the? Does not have give creatures haste. Oh, the I'm number of the elves. I'm thinking of the boars, the new one. The number of elves that are like. I'm thinking of the um. Ilharic. The, it's the end race, race, the race end race forerunners. Yeah, yeah the end yeah, race forerunners. Those guys get plus three, plus three haste. Plus two, plus two. Plus two, plus two. Plus two. Whatever. I, I've lost, lost two and sealed. Points. Whatever. And it has vigilance too, because why? For sure. Finale, Finale of devastation, devastation does give haste. Yes. All right. Okay. So we're looking at a spell snare. A. I mean, I just don't know how Hagen ever. I guess there's the Seraphod, but. I mean. <laughs> Does Hagen have an answer for a... For a 3-4 flyer with hexproof? A 3-4 flyer <laughs> that, <laughs> that gives you hexproof? He doesn't have, like, infinite amount of removal or anything like that, yeah. so... How big is the Seraphod? It's a 3-4? It's 4-3. Three. 4-3. Three. Okay. So it three. trades with Shalai. Which I would 100% take that trade. As the Shalai? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, especially with the counter spell under his Crown Scepter. Be like, yeah. please, please, <laughs> let me do these things. So he's going to trade, and then he, he, it's going to get vex Did okay. he cast Finale? He did. That's a Finale for one? I mean, if he assembles Malira... Doesn't Sacco. he have the... Yes, it does work. I don't know why he didn't counter the Ewit. I agree, he should have countered the Ewit. Well, it came he may after not the... Um, he may not have had the No, he didn't have it. Yeah, that was the thing. He countered the first creature. He countered the kitchen things first. There's yes, and he didn't have the spell for it. Attacks. Kittleboard blocks. Trades. Trade. What have we got? So he finale devastation for Viserys here? Yeah, I'm confused. Doesn't he have Rex Age? Yes. yes. Could, have, could have finale for Rex Age and gotten the scepter. Mm -hmm. That would have been pretty sick. Bitter ordeal. For That's a lot of cards in the graveyard. Five. Four. One, one two, two, three, four. Five. No, I'm. It's only permanence. Oh, it's only permanence. Okay, four. So it's for four. Yeah, yeah the serious here, e witness. Um. Mark has to have brought in more. Takes Ashiok. I can't believe this bitter ordeal has just been like popping people. Against some decks, it's so bad because it's just like I have redundant. Like here's another. Right, creature. but like. like but, but against, like, a deck like yours or Mark's, it's, like, pretty brutal. I mean, I've seen in VRD's past that people have played literal just to a mm -hmm. so, like, True name Nemesis, Delver. Just take all the, take all the win Ashiok conditions. Ashiok, and what is that card? Vendelka Shackles. Vendelka Shackles. Nice. And I guess he's just making on Mark not having... Not a, having a win condition? I mean, and he might be right. I don't think he got Petromander. Got Snapcaster, you didn't get Petromander. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's about, about it. Mark has a Petromander in his deck. I mean, that's Conclave probably good. Conclave in play? Conclave in play. play. <laughs> that's probably good enough. The Petromander in Conclave? Yeah. Oh, I think so. Pe Petromander and Blue Suns. Yeah, I mean, that's it. He already Blue Suns Zenith. Oh, it shuffles back in. Sorry. Yeah. I bet. It does that. It does do that. God, what? Fair magic beats being laid. <laughs> You're just like, oh god. This is absurd. <laughs> this, is, this is vintage rotisserie draft. Okay. You have to be casting something that. What is that? A hoof? That is a hoof. I and mean, it's going to get counterspelled. So, like. If he has just, a second spell, right? If, like, he has to. But if he doesn't, he's tapped out. I don't understand. Does he just concede to this then? Maybe. Right, like, I, I, I think that if this is your play, you just instead just say go. Why, Why is Mark's, Mark's last name uh, spelled incorrectly? Because uh, I spelled it incorrectly. Katoberg? I spelled it Katerberg. Oh. It's Katoberg with a B, E, R, G. Being corrected by me. Oh man, this coffee from this morning is wearing off. Um, Caterberg has a blue sun zenith, so he can never mill out. Yeah, he can always just even if it's the last card of his library, he can just draw it, blue suns his opponent for zero, shuffle the. You can also just blue sun his opponent. 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, that is another way to do it. It'll, it'll take a while, but yeah, it'll work. So yeah, Caterberg literally can never mill. Unless it somehow got discarded. Which it probably won't. Mm-hmm. Pass I have to exile the Fairy Conclave. That's probably not going to resolve. Force of Will, I see. Is this going to Isocon? He has Force of Will in hand. <laughs> A plethora of riches. The age-old control deck when con milling. Ugh. I don't see any elixir of mortality, so... Uh, there was the blue sign. <laughs> There's a blue sign. Exactly. It's basically the same. It's basically elixir, right? Yeah. Uh, I, if I was Steven, I would have conceded by now. What is that? That was the... Flash uh, freeze. Flash freeze, yeah, counter target uh -huh. green or black spell. Green or red. Like I said, he should have Aether Cost. Necrotic Ooze gets Force of Will. Yeah, if... I'm Steven... I just double spelled for the second time in a row. I don't think I have anything left. Egan might have more threats than Hadelbrook has control left in this deck. Um, it's possible. The thing is, he has to double spell every one of those threats because of the Isochron Scepter. Which is fine. It's fine, but it's slow. It's really slow. No, but like Higgins able to do that. And what is it? The clock is what five? The clock is five, but like he just refilled with a treasure cruise. Yeah. Like it's slow, but I think Mark has it. Probably. Especially because the finale is gone, which gets the creature out of the graveyard. Like you could finale for Ewit, Ewit back Surfer Pod or something. Oh God, a library. <laughs> Merchant scroll. Merchant scroll. For a blue sun. Yeah, the Scepter Counter spell is really good here. Holy yeah, God. it just holds it down. It gives... Hagen has to draw three relevant press in a row, stick one of them through what will almost certainly be enough counter magic. Like... In the next three turns. Mm -hmm. Or the Fairy Conclave kills him. Yeah, so... So in three turns, he can attempt to do it again, you know? It's kind of and if it doesn't work, he loses the game. Mm, Mark is counting his library, he has six cards left. Yeah, but he has a blue sun, and he has, unless he gets unbelievably greedy, <laughs> um, which I have seen him do. That's true. Like this, just casting Ancestral for no reason. It's not an Ancestral. It's fine, <laughs> it's just Ancestral. It's a Visions. Yeah, yeah. Wait. Oh yeah, you can target like your opponent, it's fine. Yeah, 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 for sure, of course. He's being so... Make, make this, this actual, actual vintage. What is this? Is Coming off on turn one, only to get forced. Collected combo. I don't think uh, com turn one combos actually happen that often in vintage, I'll be honest. Uh, I mean, well, I've seen it, but... For sure, not I mean, like like same with Legacy. Right. But, like, very rarely. Mm-hmm. What is Mark doing? Mark is... Is he going to draw his entire deck and then just do a Blue Sun Zenith loop for the rest of the game? Probably. So rude. Blue Sun for this money. Huh? Oh, this is Blue Sun for... Mark came here to play Magic. <laughs> so rude. Turn one card... Yeah, that's fair. Turn one Karn, the great creator, is pretty Oh, the, normal. that Coco is solved. Yeah. Got a Yagmoth, but you can't get it. Whiffs. Oof. Didn't have to show that Yagmoth. I mean, chose to anyway. I smile every time a Coco uh, fails to resolve. Uh, fails to work. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm like, oh, you missed on Coco? That's really unfortunate. Yep. Conclave you. I am blown away by this Conclave right now. I mean, it's good. It's good. It's just like... Invoke Prejudice. Invoke Prejudice. It's gonna make a... Uh, so it's counter... It's counter uh, creature spell. Counter it's a like, color that you do, but you have to pay twice. It's converted mana cost. Yeah. 
he doesn't control any creatures, so it will always have to do it. That's a blue creature at the moment. But uh, basically, it's just another hedge creatures. Yeah, it's a it's yeah. a peasant piece. Yep. Cast for zero. Pain. Uh, I think Pain. honestly, Hagen could have conceded about four turns ago. Probably. So I don't know why Mark even bothered to su suspend the, the suspicions. Feels bad. I don't know because he's, he's playing, playing judges. What's the judges, judges format where you have to do every action you possibly can? <laughs> judges Tower. <laughs> yeah, he's like Judges Tower. He's like, oh, I have to activate this. I have to cast this. I have to in response to that. Like Blue Sun for zero. Put it back. Yeah, it feels like he's playing Judges Tower right now. He's like, well, I have to use all of my cards. Yeah, exactly. That's how yeah. this works, right? He didn't come here not oh, to my. cast Blue Sun Zenith. No, he didn't. Like, um, all right. Does Hagen have the answer? Nope. Concedes. Yep. All right. Well, that was vicious way to lose a game of Magic. <laughs> oh, oh my God! What a terrible way to go down. What? I'll give credit. I would have conceded so quickly there. Hagen played it I out. I mean, so would I. Probably. Um. <sighs> so, when you see that, that fairy conclave beats the oh my light. God. How do you feel? Um, knowing that that's a thing that exists. Um, I'm thinking that... Honestly, Mark's deck did not look as impressive as I thought it was going to. I was very scared of it, but then I saw it perform. And I know that, like, Turn one ice across the with a counterspell and it's like, pretty strong. I mean, they can't always have it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they can't was... always have the mox. I'm just gonna... Yeah. And, and it feels like without the mox, like, that would have been not as good. Yeah. So. Also, I have force of negation, which against him is better than force of will. Yep. Well, I don't know. I think Mark's deck is a little slow. It not, is. It's very threat light. I just, like, slam a mentor and they... And he can't beat it. Looks like Ancestral Visions is going back in the sideboard because it's unbelievably slow. That seems reasonable. It's too slow. Mm -hmm. Like maybe in your deck it'd be fine. Manlands have been control deck finishers since Mishra's Factory. Yes. Since Mishra's Factory. Alternative point of view: Judge's Tower is the worst format. Um, or Stalking Stones. No, I agree with that. Shut up. <laughs> like, uh, no, Judge's Tower is terrible. Like, I've played it with several of these people in this See, tournament. See, but Judge's Tower is great if you're a judge, because then you, like, like that kind of stuff. We have 12 judge levels in this house right now. When I was almost a judge, what? I just was like, I don't want to do this. So, yeah, I, I passed the exam. I just didn't want to sign up. Okay, um, well, you know... My point stands. There are twelve judge yeah, levels. Yeah, I know. In There's this. a lot of judges here, and they're terrible. We're all terrible. You're all terrible. Even if you're a judge, I think it's terrible. I agree. I am a judge. Still terrible. It is terrible. There's nothing fun about it. It's just like, like, fedora tipping to each other as you point out how the other. It's the game. It's literally well, actually, Magic the Gathering. I do this? Well, actually... <laughs> Judges Tower is not a format? That's fair, actually. It's not a format. It's just, like, it's a puzzle. Right? It's not magic. Yeah. You do have to start with extra cards. I'm not terrible at all. It's a completely subway game that uses MTG cards <laughs> as game pieces. That's fair. That's actually, like, a good um, way of Judges thinking about Tower it. is a tool. <laughs> Just All right, we have a noble hierarchy. Ooh, Delver, turn one. Delver, that's so good, actually. <laughs> that's really good. Alex, why aren't you a judge? You're one of my what favorite s talkers. Collector or oof? Uh, collector oof, which then just got dazed. Man, this is insane. This has been the mo this has been a hyper interactive game. I'm not a judge because How I don't did have he time miss? to be a judge. Attack. This is okay. That was a wild interaction. That was days. Uh, that was a days protecting, not even protecting a Delver. It was just Delver into days. It felt like pop roll over again. It feels like legacy. More like. Life is what? I said it feels like legacy. Yeah. Islands don't flip Delvers. No, they don't. That's true. Mark so real, the well actually of judging. <laughs> Judge's Tower is the well actually of judging. I do this well actually. 
You forgot to activate that ability first in response. <laughs> like, like, no, please. Hey. Uh, that is that a, is a choke? choke. Is it getting force spike? It's getting force spike. That's pretty sad. This is amazing. I mean, Mark Strauss and Flipped is his, his, his fugitive wizard. No, he, but he's force spiked and dazed, two very relevant spells. Yep, that's true. Because of Mox. I mean, like, I think judges do a great thing. Like, playing's where it's at, sure. Like, I enjoy playing more than I think I'd ever enjoy judging, but, like, it's important to have them. Mm -hmm. As a level one judge sits next to me. Two. You're a level 2 now? Yeah, I've been an O2 for almost a year. You never told me. I haven't level seen you. Two I haven't seen you in like a year. What's happening? Just right here. Oh, it's too big. <laughs> I was trying to change it to L2 judge. <laughs> uh, sorry, level 2 judge, Elaine. You suck even I know that. Yeah, yeah. Wow, Alex. <laughs> yeah, everyone's mad at me now. Everyone's. I mean, should have known that, duh. Now he's doing a Connor. <laughs> e <laughs> that, that, that does work, you know what? No, don't do that. Please <laughs> okay. don't do that. Fine, I won't do that. <laughs> <That's so laughs> like, no, 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 no. All right, let's go back to the game. Uh, we have a Viserys here. Stuff that's happening on the board. I mean, he. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I feel like Okay, that's a win condition. Yep. He still has yet to flip this Delver. Yep. Hagen, I believe, has a Toxic Deluge in this deck. No, Brandon Curry has a Toxic Deluge. Damn. Okay, so Hagen he has, has no the, answer for this. Hagen doesn't even have the Forces of Spare. Hagen might have the Forces of Spare. Hmm? Might just be dead? The L2 judges are the F-150s of this analogy. Uh, the, I don't understand what that means. I don't get it, but I like where we're going here, F-150? Like... I'm a truck? Yeah, you're a truck, didn't you know? <laughs> that would be um, quite odd. What is that? A small, small truck. truck. I'm a small truck. You're a small truck. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm just going to let chat just do their own thing for a minute. I'm just going to watch the game and commentate. Okay, so we have a true name nemesis. And we have a... Call found something, I don't know. Something happened while he was shit-talking me. <laughs> can I be a big truck or can I make all three? Uh, I think you have to be all three. I think that's, I think that's how that works. So Eric is a big truck. Draw. What do we got? Better on seeing graveyard on camera. I agree. I think I'm going to ask them to flip next time to have the decks over here with the graveyards. There's a Coco. I, main there's face. Lister. This says okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have. Uh, it's gonna mess. Next match, we'll have the decks on the other side of the camera, so there will be less glare. Oh, on he's not gonna mess. Those are both quite good. I have the metaphor making abilities as someone who isn't very good at making metaphors. So, Kato Park should, should have Blast Zone. I'm just now realizing that. Should have what? Should should have Blast Zone. Yeah. Does he have? He doesn't have it. He doesn't have it. That would have been good deck. Flip your stuff. damn Delver. That's pretty vicious. Nice fugitive wizard is, nerd. Is he baiting? Is he like baiting it out where it's like, oh yeah, I haven't drawn anything. Meanwhile, he's just drawn two counter spells in a row. <laughs> I <laughs> like, doubt it. I don't know. That would be amazing. That would be like such a good next level. I feel like if you have it, you have to reveal it. I think you just it. do the mox instead. What is this? Uh, that looks like a prejudice. Invoke, Invoke. prejudice. Invoke. Yep. Prejudice. So everything costs double. Which that is does seem really bad. I would agree with that assessment of my possible plays that Mark Kederberg is making. <laughs> I don't know how Hagen beats a true name nemesis without comboing off. He could just combo off, though. Yeah, that's true. That would you know not what beats? Mean, that would be the next level, <laughs> next leveling. You know what beats true name? Infinite life. Kratohoff. Crater Hoof with a sufficiently large board, which Mark Crater Hoof with enough mana to get through and invoke prejudice. I mean, yeah. Or a finale. Uh, shall I get countered by the invoke prejudice? Yeah, he, we're rewinding because I don't think Stephen Hagen was fully aware of how that card works. Yeah, and how annoying it is to play against. 
I just realized there's the mom, but that doesn't really do much. It's a race that just doesn't... I mean... So five. Put that in the graveyard, Steven. Uh, we're playing Don't Be a Dick, R.E.L. Guys, uh, <laughs> you cast it. This is Don't Be a Dick, R.E.L. Come on. <laughs> this, is I mean, a, this is an comp R.E.L. Vintage George History draft with full proxies. No. It's not. Come on. 12 judges in the room. <laughs> 12 judges in the room. We have enough judges to run like an SCGL. Yeah, I was about to say. Like, So, so R.E.L. axed? It's don't be a dick R.E.L. What part of that is hard to understand? Yeah, yeah. it's like, hey, we're here to play Magic. That's the finale for uh, Foy, I believe. With the death right and the noble tap. I don't think it's being a dick make people do their actions. Hey, if it was Elaine and I, sh she would have 100% made me put that card in the graveyard. Uh, probably. <laughs> yeah, like, it's more, I think, a personal relation thing. Um, but, yeah, I agree. But I'm also not going to stop him. <laughs> I imagine Hagen asking, well, does prejudice stop this card? <laughs> well, both of these are O2s. They could just, you know, read the cards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, reading the cards here doesn't help, but they yeah. can pull up Oracle text whenever. As I say, yeah, reading the Invoke Prejudice card probably is like, hmm. Okay, so that was a finale for Yagmoth. It looks. Uh, that's. Did. I don't know. I mean. Don't know. So. I didn't know Hagen a few years ago. So. So. Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess that's that's fine. Kiddo book is in and swing well won't resolve. Just Hagen lapsed a few years ago. Hagen uh, did his upkeep last year, and I just saw him. Ju uh, I just just judged an MCQ with him. So you would assume I would assume that, he, that he's still a judge. <laughs> Original text on invoke is pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Think they could figure it out. I mean. Also, these are judges, so they like the concept of Oracle Test, usually. True name after a time walk, he's just laying beats. Uh, yeah. Time I mean, guys, I would say this is far closer to Comp REL than it is Casual REL. It's just... Oh, hey, what is that card? Oh, hold on. One sec. So going back to Judge Towers. Okay, great. One of my first experiences on the tournament. See, but that's not what Judge's Tower is for. What is this? Did he Ashiok. just scroll for time walk? Maybe. It was an Ashiok and a takedown. He did merchant scroll. He can scroll for time walk, can you? No, you can only scroll for instance. No, he didn't scroll for time walk, he scrolled for counter spell. That makes sense. At least that's what it looks like in my opinion. He had time walking, and he was just getting back up for, I think, maybe a pat set for uh, something. But He's in a pretty dominating position, Ultra although Dementia. that is a alter dementia, and then there was... Is Mark empty handed? Veil of Veil Summer. Summer! Oh, Ooh, got him. Does he have the days I mean, counterspell, force negation? He has none of those cards. Days doesn't counter that with two mana. I didn't see the two mana. I saw these three lands, and I didn't see those two lands. I see. Yeah, I, I, saw I saw the three tap, tap lands. I was like, "What's those other cards?" I was like, "Oh, that's mana." <laughs> I thought mana. that was gonna be. I have okay. the force of negation. Also, yeah. Yeah, spell, spell snare spell doesn't work. Looks, looks like veil vale summer worked. Nice. Veil was really good. I'm beating people with space and with it on. You know, we should add that. I will try getting that added. Um, Great thing to put on player profiles. To how long have they been playing Magic? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah so. so in case you can tell, there's a lot of judges playing in this tournament. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Scroll rack has been picked two times. Yeah. Uh, land tax is only ever picked when someone's playing white weenie. Which is never. Might be me next time. <sighs> Lay beats, the lane. You're gonna love it. Next time, I might just commentate. I've played in three of these already. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like commentating. Yes, this is match one. It's Mark Caterberg versus Stephen Hagen. Uh, Steve won round one. Currently under a lot of pressure from a... Elaine. But Elaine, I like your control decks. Thanks! Uh, 
Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, if you're Go interested in playing in the STL VRD, um, you just shoot us a line. Honestly, we are trying to organize them in the future as well. Uh, the only thing here is the top two people in this one are going to get invited to the next one. After that, it's kind of an open invite. We've tried getting new people mm -hmm. into it. So, like, I've competed in one. Um, Elaine has competed in several. Uh, uh, so, we're trying to get more and more people into it. And yeah. if people want to travel and visit us and stuff like that, like, let us know. Like, yeah. That would be super cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, we're already trying to, like, get more people from, like, in the St. Louis community. Because when this first started, it was literally, like, Mark, Naveen. Me. Myself, you, and yeah. then, like our friends. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. now it's like. Is Mark and his friends have to fight us Joe for the next one? Oh man. I mean, if you want to do that. If you want to do that, I mean, I'm sure Mark would be okay with that. But. Yeah. If you hey, if you want to do it though, you let us know. I like. she was doing them when I was still in us too. Yeah. Do we know Scott Jones? This, I know the Edward Jones Dome. St. Louis reference. <laughs> see if anyone. It's a chord. Cord for three. Is Hagen winning this race right now? Uh, no. Probably. I mean, he has no answer to true name. Like, he has to combo. That's really it. I don't think he can mill him out, especially with the blue sun zenith. Mm -hmm. Mark's wife likes cupcakes. That is true. Death rate? Death rate sort of yes. answers. That's fair. Yeah. There's a Malira. It runs out of ammo. After so there's a, while. a Malira and a Seer. Just needs the third piece of the he combo. Just needs the third piece. Hey, it's close. That really sucks. I See, Neem here in the chat really likes cupcakes. I don't think you get it. No, no yeah, like <laughs> Neem really likes cupcakes. Really likes cupcakes. She could be bad with cupcakes to give it to you. Oh, oh, um, um, um. <laughs> I have no comment on the chat yeah. that's happening right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not allowed to make these decisions. <laughs> Alright, so we're reading Altar of Dementia. And we're seeing I mean it's almost infinite mill. Is that? Yeah, with Altar of Dementia. If you have you put a one one counter on it. Hmm? No wait, hold on, how would you do it? Yeah, you can't put a one one counter on anything though. I'm trying to You're remember. thinking isn't, of isn't you're thinking of Something else. I'm thinking of a different combo. Yes. It looked like an infinite mill combo for a second. But There's a mystical tutor and a counter spell in Mark's hand. That's quite good. So sack the seer to uh, Yogg Moth. Moth. Draw a card. Lose a life. Sack, sack this. Draw a card. Draw a card. Lose a life. Exile. Gain two. Huh. That's quite good. Yeah. So draw two cards. Still mm -hmm. sacking his board out. I mean, those cards weren't doing anything. Yeah. The mom's not helping against uh, True Name. All this nonsense, yeah. Incoming sick chain of vapor. That would be devastating, yes. Would that matter? Uh, I mean, it would get rid of the Yogmoth in response to, like, anything. Or, like... Oh, I mean, yeah, sure. And he's tapped out, so I guess it would just end the game. Going through his graveyard, seeing what goodies there are. Draw. So the Deathrite Shaman's not really racing, though. I kind of said to an earlier comment, it's keeping him alive. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely not winning the game. Tap two. Exile mom. Go to eight. Sack. Sack to this. Lose a life draw card. Mm-hmm. Y A W G. Yeah. -H. Yep. So this uh, pay a life sacred creature. You may put a counter on something and then you draw. Yeah, a but if I'm only at nombos. Well, mm -hmm. there's also really no valid target with the. Mhm. Mm so the separate pod. It was mystical. This is gonna get a treasure cruise, I think. Yeah, that would be um, my DRS guess. major name now. It's just a nine turn clock. Hagen had Caterberg on a five turn clock. 
Uh, that also assumes that Mark has nothing. Keeping in the graveyard as well. Yeah. That this assumes Mark has nothing, which is not half true. I mean, yeah, Mark's entire deck is card draw and counterspell and interaction. It seems like. But the good thing is. Dot dot dot. He's he's keeping our bated breath. He got a. Uh, Treasure Cruise, and then immediately cast Treasure Cruise. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Wait, was that a thought? Once Trunane is forced to block, DRS goes on offense. Yep. Yeah. That's fair. But I don't think but, like, True Name is forced to block. I mean, I think if True Name wasn't played on turn three, and it was a little bit later, and didn't apply as much pressure as it has been, the math is obviously different, but I think where it was played... It was a Phinx. And when the... DRS was played. It's just different math. This is a counterspell in hand, right? Yeah. He has to. I mean, this is pretty obvious, Six I mana think. Finks. Yeah, it's a little tough. <laughs> Six mana for a kitchen finks is a little hard to... Yeah, counterspell. I mean, I think that counterspell is pretty obvious. Well, no, the six mana for resolving it. Yeah, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yep. I think this game's over. Mm-hmm. Well, Mark, I think, is going to secure our first on-screen victory. Mm -hmm. What format is this? Legacy Cube? This is not Legacy Cube. This is Vintage Rotisserie Draft. Uh, yeah, so the Bl Shotgun Lotus Draft is format uh, from, like, the Bueller uh, sponsored, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's pretty sick. It's really cool. Uh, it's really hard. It's really fun. This is our third one we've done in St. Louis. This is the STL VRD, as we call it. People are saying it's super sick. Appreciate it. It is. Uh, you're currently seeing a mono blue deck with three win conditions go up against a Absan. <laughs> Hardest to fire? Absolutely. <laughs> Very oh my hard God. to fire. Uh, <laughs> going up against a Absan Malira combo deck. And the mono blue deck just got it. So oh, Mark Canterbury gets the first Vic. Nice. Good for him. All right. Uh, I think you're going right. to be up pretty soon. So Probably. All right. Yeah. Well, good luck with your rounds. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your help and commentate. Yep. Appreciate it. See ya. Uh, what's the STL about? Yeah, appreciate it. Just meeting camera. You good? Uh, St. Louis is what the STL is about. It's where we were from. Swords to low shares. Oh, so, sure, I like that. You know, this is a uh, collection of judges and kind of known players in the community. We have Eric Levine also hosting level three judge from Midwest Coordinator, if I remember correctly. We got several level two judges, a couple level ones, a couple people who have helped a lot with like establishing the uh, community in St. Louis. Uh, from a like store perspective and other stuff and we all really like this format so we're playing it technically he's still the central regional coordinator you're right I didn't know I was just taking a guess uh, appreciate that though chat keeping me honest uh, all right next match is on the table uh, yes the next match will be getting on like literally under three minutes I'm gonna update some stuff for you guys and have it Yep, and it's going to be Elaine versus Joe. It'll be exciting to see. Um, all right, guys. Uh, I'm going to have Eric in here in just a minute, and I might take a quick little break, but uh, Eric will still be on. Uh, and if you guys are enjoying this, uh, let us know in chat. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, and Eric will be joining me in just a sec. This is so much better than GP Vegas. If you insist. Is GP Vegas today? Yes. Yeah, oh. Kind of nice. We're very smart. Why aren't you uh, at GP Vegas right now? Because it's 110 goddamn degrees in Vegas. <laughs> oh, well, that's really fair, honestly. <laughs> like, that's it. I just, I've, I did Vegas 2013, 15, or 15 17, yeah. 18, and I was like, you know what? I need a case. I need a break. I need a. I need to take a nap. Yeah. Uh, I'm seeing predictions of Elaine crushing Joe. We think Elaine is going to crush Joe. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's show the standings. That sounds like a great idea. You have the standings up. Yeah. Kyle says they're updated. Um, oh, we need to load them oh, so that they become them. updated. Yeah. One sec. We know how OBS works. It's fine. Uh, STLVRD. Uh, nope. 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 nope, 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 nope. Oh, God, the feedback. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, 
what if we type the standings command into chat and then click? Oh, there it is. There it is. You found it. Go to standings. Yeah, look at this. Uh, well, let's see if that worked. Yeah, hopefully that works. Yeah, there we go. All right, so there's our standings. We have uh, Jeff, Cody, and uh, Mark winning. Uh, Alec and Elaine didn't play that round. Yep. Just to make sure we get everyone on screen. We're kind of doing a staggered start. Uh, and then we have Joe, Brandon, and Steven losing the first round. Yep. Yeah, I watched... Uh, any, I watched, yeah, any exciting games? I watched Jeff play against Brandon. Jeff, there was a moment where against Jeff... With Jeff and Brandon, I was like, oh, okay, everything looks chill. I'm going to go grab a drink. I'm going to come back. And then I came back, and Jeff had comboed out with Vault Key while you I was gone. See Alec at some point. We are going to put everyone on camera at least once. Oh, so yeah. Everybody's going to be on camera. Around, we'll have someone on camera. Everybody who wants to be in the booth is going to be in the booth. So we're going to see everybody. We're going to have everybody here. You are going to get the thing you want. So, oh, Clam I am 45 thank you. For yeah. supporting the VRD content, I know Mark. I know Mark will use that to improve the stream, improve the materials. Once eventually, you know, when we reach that yeah. hundred dollar threshold, Twitch sends them the money because that, uh, as I know personally, that does take a while. All right, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna let Mark reset the OBS. I'm gonna watch some games on the floor. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll keep updated. And uh, Eric, thanks for taking over, and we'll have Mark Caterberg on. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. Stream looks good right now. Yeah, Brand yeah, Brandon lost. He got he got beat by Blyden. Blyden Jeff Jeff Blyden uh, went off with the Bomberman combo in game one and then he then he did Vault Key game two. Nice. So And wow. uh, I know Cody got uh, turned to Gristle Brand in one of his games against Joe Wisdom. So nice. there were some spicy combo games off camera. Rincion, thank you for the Twitch Prime yeah, sub. Thanks. We appreciate it. Now you have access to that sweet bad pick emote. Yeah. You should try it out in the chat there. It's, it's pretty good. Chris, you missed uh, one round of play. We're about to move into our second round, um, which I think is going to be Elaine versus Joe. Correct. So we've got Joe's teamer deck versus Elaine's blue-white control. Batman. Do you know, are they both OO, or what was the, do you remember offhand? Uh, Joe lost round one to uh, oh. Cody's reanimator deck, and Elaine was in the booth here, so she has not played yet. Perfect. Yeah, that last match we played, I think Steve oh described gosh. it the best as a chess match. That was, was a great, amazing. that was a great magic match. I was, I was really enjoying the parts that I got to see. I was also popping around, looking at the the different matches that were going on. And so. I almost didn't realize an interaction that would happen <laughs> where with Yogmoth and uh, Kitchen Finks and what was, is there anything else to that one? And the the altar. Yeah, the right? altar. Would have milled up my whole deck immediately. And the, the the altar was altar Finks and then you know, Malira or Vizier, I forget which was on the battlefield, but... I love that bad pick emote. It's just, it's there so that you can do it every single time Jeff plays Mystic Foundry. Oh it's, my god. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, this match, though, Elaine, uh, Elaine ended up, she was sitting right next to me, we were the only ones fighting over blue counter spells the entire match. So oh, yeah. to see how hers stands up. It'll be cool to see, from your perspective, how these, uh, how her deck stacks up to yours. Yeah. Um, do we have a way to reset that game store at the, game score at the top? Oh, absolutely, we do. Let me get that Awesome. Frame. I don't... Oh, it's that layer. Okay. Yeah, that one doesn't have a spot. It doesn't have a... <laughs> oh, hi, Mock is being called in the chat. Oh, Fantastic. No. Some some good Tommy Wiseau references. That's true. I'm sure you, you deal with that, you know, once in a while. I have heard it. I have heard it. <laughs> He's apparently uh, really big on Mixer, is what I've heard. Yes. Uh, I'm like, he doesn't like Twitch, but he, he is, has his own stream. Tommy Wiseau does strike me as the kind of person who would choose to stream <laughs> on Mixer. Like, he wouldn't even, he wouldn't pull a ninja. He wouldn't start with Twitch and then get bought out by Microsoft. He would start on Mixer because he's, he's counterculture. Yes, for sure. What are you drinking right now, Eric? So I'm drinking some uh, some scotch that I brought with me, some Talisker Darkstorm, nice. which uh, is available in duty-free shops in airports worldwide. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> what and do I, you have? I have a Elysian Space Dust IPA. It's, Ooh. It's one of my favorite IPAs. It has a lot of hops to it, but it also kind of 
there's good flavor. Sometimes you just get so overwhelmed when you drink a stone or something like that. Yeah, yeah especially nice especially the stone these days. It's just, it's it's hoppy in a way that I find is like, I don't yes. know, a little unpleasant. And this has kind of the consistency of a like, of a porter or like kind of a um, a really like imperial stout. It has like kind of a thicker Ooh, taste. Yes. But then it has all of the hops that hit you. It's great. Right. It's thicker, but it's not too syrupy, which right, is good. Exactly right. Yeah, so let's see. What, what was Joe's deck on? Joe is that is the the Teamer Twin deck. Yeah. Um, he's got the Kiki Jiki. He's got the Splinter Twin, but he also has cards like Regisaur Alpha mm -hmm. and Carnage Tyrant that are threats that if they're if they're left unchecked, they can end a game by themselves. That's gonna be great. Yeah. His his deck was very interesting. I I think he was one of the people that saw that blue was relatively open. I don't mm. think he planned on being there originally. Um, but he, he just moved into that by taking Brainstorm early and then kind of yeah. picking up the best counter spells. He kind of played that Jesse Hampton style of draft where he just right. needs to see what's open and just grabs the best card and ends up in five colors, but it all works out. Yeah, I we were talking on uh, on stream during the draft about whether we thought we had wait, he had waited too long to kind of commit to something. Mm -hmm. And we we thought that he had waited too long but you know it's he's only played one round it's hard to say at this point we'll we'll see how the results play out it's yeah. you know i'm glad those mats got adjusted correctly so oh yes it is this is literally on my dining room table and we have like several cameras strapped to it so it's pretty easy <laughs> to uh to, to get it screwed up yep we're 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 trying to make sure this setup works for everything. Yep, he has Twin Exarch, he has Kiki Resto. Mm -hmm. um, Joe has a couple ways to end the game in a hurry, but it looks like Elaine is showing us uh, an island and an ancestral in her opening hand. You don't need to see more than two cards to design no. a then. Because Elaine's about to see three more. And ancestral, of course, was her first pick in the draft, mm -hmm. being the second seat. Yeah. I, did chat have any feelings about leaving Time Vault to go to Blyden? They did. Um, it's sort of they, they sort of said that you know the, the conventional wisdom is that Time Vault should go a little earlier. And Blyden, when he came in here, did talk mm -hmm. up the fact that he had really he had been talking talking crap about Time Vault before the draft to he try does. to get it later in his seat, which seemed to work for him. You know, it did. And my, my position was I got tagged in for this about two a.m. last <laughs> night, so I was not in a position to draft Time Vault. I was just like, look, I know what counter spells are good. I don't have planned out how to counter draft for Time Vault. I'm going to take blue cards. Right. Okay, so Renin 6 is going to be coming in turn 1. Yeah. Mox Ruby that's there. Joe's starting off with Forest, Ruby, and the Renin 6. And he'll just plus and pass. Mm -hmm. Not really interested in pinging Elaine for 1. Elaine's 1 mana play is a little better. A little better than Renin 6. It is a little risky leaving up... I think he has Mana Leak. He has one of them, though. He's oh... So strip mine. The response here is ancestral. That's better. Yeah, a little bit, but that that does put Elaine a little bit behind on resources. And if uh, if Joe can keep strip mine going with Ren and Six, True. and Elaine oh, is not interested in continuing this game, I think that island she showed us may have been her only island. That yep. that and might have been her only land. I'm willing to bet she didn't draw one in her top three either. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, sometimes that's that, that's unfortunate, but sometimes you just get locked out by the strip mine combos, whether yeah. it's Crucible, Ren and Six, Ram and App Excavator. There's a lot of ways to recur that strip mine, and Elaine just decides she's not interested in playing out that long grindy game where she inevitably loses due to resource denial. Reasonable. I know that I'm not an, I'm not a participant in the Oathbreaker format, which is where you're allowed one legendary per, uh, planeswalker and a spell to go along with it, a signature spell that you can cast if you have the planeswalker in play. But I know there's been talk of uh, banning Renin 6 because mm. Renin 6 plus crop rotation is so overwhelmingly powerful that you just lock everybody below 3 mana forever. Yes. And yeah, that was a ru Mox Ruby up there for Joe. Uh, the glare made it a little difficult to see. But uh, yeah, no, Elaine just decided that, that after getting her, what I uh, can only believe was her, her either her only land or one of maybe two lands there. She she just decided she didn't want to play anymore. Yeah, it is it is a shame when you lose your only island. Yeah, so. I mean island is just a beautiful card. It's very important. <laughs> it is the best of them. It's so. it's it's the best of the cards. So yeah. Joe Wisdom taking an early one zero up a game against Elaine. Yeah, that's that's a tough way to, for it to go too. I mean you best of intentions, everything uh, everything works out. But hold on, sorry, I think my 
might not might not be high enough. Let me know if that's too high now. Um, I know compared to Eric, I don't shout, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> I only have two volumes, unfortunately, on and off. <laughs> yes. Those are the only settings on Eric Levine, so I'll try to keep my volume at a reasonable level, but uh, we all know that's not going to work out very well. I can't believe that that was literally a turn one kill. Yeah, it was <laughs> unreal. The first turn one kill we've seen today. So it sounds like your volume is a little distorted. Interesting. Oh, no. Or your voice, rather. We'll, we'll see what we can do. Uh, let us know, please, in the chat if there are audio issues. We're going to try and resolve them as best we can. And uh, for those of you who are who are subscribing, we really appreciate you because you're also helping us in a way to resolve our audio issues. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Right now, we are literally using uh, this headset that I have is relatively recent, but the one that Eric is using is the one I played Eve Online for 40 hours a week. Oh with my gosh! About 12 years ago. Oh, so, so this headset has a lot of good spreadsheet history to it. <laughs> it so this was the headset I wanted. I just didn't know that when I sat down. <laughs> That's right. We are now playing a format where you. Would turn magic into a spreadsheet. Alex, previously... Alex, did you just subscribe with your Twitch Prime? Oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. I use my Twitch Prime to subscribe to my own stream because I'm a greedy jerk. But thank you, Alex. That's super nice of you. I forgot to do this, so I subscribe to somebody else's. But next time, I assure you. Next, I'll 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 at least give one of my months to to our to to the VRD. It looks like Elaine has has started off. Well, I I can subscribe to my own because it's a I have my own, and then there's a different one. WCNG, another Twitch Prime subscription. We really appreciate yeah, it. You. So Elaine's starting yeah. off with the classic Island and Plains combo, and then Joe has tutored up this Volcanic Island, and it looks like he's trying to do I something. A Wife and a Deceiver Exarch and some Red Spell. I yeah, that's, that's a oh, Kiki Jiki there. And just drew a Portent, so he'll start getting that fixing going if yeah. he doesn't want the Tarmogoyf. He doesn't, he realizes he doesn't maybe need the Tarmogoyf right this no. minute. Goes for the Portent. But it looks like that's going to be a... Playing a 1-2 isn't super necessary. No. I, I think I would shuffle this away. What do you think? Uh, yeah, the hand's really bad. Yeah, Swan he, Song Island Island uh, Mountain is not what he's looking for. And he has three lands in hand already, so I don't know. This wouldn't even be a thing for me. Unless he needs that red for Kiki Jiki, that might be that the only possible. thing he's thinking about. That's, that's the difficult thing about this format, is that you, unlike in Vintage, you don't have four copies of all of the dual lands and all the fetch lands. So you have, that's probably one of maybe two or three fetches that he has in his deck. Yeah, the lighting is pretty rough. Um, the card on the far left is a volcanic island, and a crop rotation is played right now, uh, and Portent just resolved. So. so crop rotation, Elaine, Elaine says, hey, pay your cost for crop rotation, which tells me <laughs> that she's got a counter spell waiting in the wings. I believe so. I think we're going to see a mana leak here. That swan song he drew would be very good if he had one mana open. Oh, yeah. Swan song is an interesting one. It's, it, it's probably better than spell pierce. But it, it's tough, right? Some decks like mine, I can't give my opponent. A no, two -two. you have lose. You you <laughs> actually can't afford to give your opponent that two two bird token. Correct. Um, but I think it's it's one of those counter spells that's not embarrassing, but is in the discussion of like mid tier counter spells in the like yep. round sixteen to thirty range, somewhere around there, where you're saying, all right, all the premium stuff is gone. What can I take that's efficient? And Swan Song really fits the bill. Agreed. So he got a he got a, an ancient tomb off of his crop rotation. So that is definitely going to ramp him towards the Kiki. He needs two more red sources, and he has it. So, yeah, he's got a, a mountain in hand, which means that theoretically he can go to Seaver Exarch this at the end of her turn and then cast Kiki Jiki. But that's really praying that there's no counter spells in her hand. Yeah, if he, and and it, if he did stack that other mountain on top of his deck then he will have the mana to go Kiki Jiki. But again, like like you said, that is a uh, a big ask for a Layden's deck, which is, has some counter spells. Alex uh, wants to know why I'm an <laughs> inferior judge to you, uh, which involves a lot about the amount of time I'm willing to invest into the judge program. Oh, right. thanks for those I, five bits, Alex. I think I think the the sort of the difference between me and Mark in our in, in terms of our commitment to the judge program can be summed up pretty in, in a pretty small amount of time, which is that you you had a child. Yes. And I don't. <laughs> <laughs> also, you are employed for by the judge program. And right. I am not. <laughs> right. Yeah, I am currently contracted by Wizards, and I will soon be contracted by Judge Academy. Whereas yes. you live a life of of happiness and freedom. <laughs> <laughs> 
This, uh, this uh, stream is not sponsored by Wizards of the Coast. No, nope, so not one bit. Uh, cheers! <laughs> cheers to not being a GP Vegas. Indeed. So. We do love GP Vegas, we and do. everyone that's there. I love Vegas, I just... I didn't feel like going, and also... Uh, there was a form for head judging that I forgot to fill out for oh, Q3, no. so that's why I'm not head judging anything in Q3. That's the truth, everybody. That's awkward. You know what I am excited for, though? Eternal Weekend. This is my first um, one. I get to go in October. Oh, you're going to go to Eternal Weekend? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I wish I was... So, I, I do wish I was going, but I'm going to be at GP Nagoya that weekend, or oh, Magic nice. Fest Nagoya, and I love Japan, Yes. but... Uh, but, is, is your wife joining you for that one? Uh, I don't think so, because okay. it's right in the middle of her semester. But okay. Uh, okay, so Tarmog Wife resolved. Uh, there was also a mana leak that came down that countered... Was that a Deceiver Exarch? It looked like that countered the Deceiver Exarch. Yep, I can't quite see through the... Yeah, no, that definitely is. It looks like you have a place to stay for Eternal Weekend if you don't already have one. Oh, nice. I'm actually staying with uh, with Thurston, who... Oh, nice. ...gave me this computer today. So. Oh, he did? That's super sweet. Yeah, he's, he's loaned it to us for... I don't have a computer, because I'm unemployed right now. Um, so, yeah, uh, he, he's been helping us out. <laughs> I didn't realize. Well, like, work always gives people... I don't know. It's yeah. just, like, difficult for me to right. justify it. Yeah. If, but if thank you. That's really nice. Yeah, if, if as a programmer... You you know you get you get a computer with work. There's there's just no reason to, to purchase one. Yeah, we we don't have a hotel yet. So hit Jason up and let him know. Are the basics proxied too? No, they are not. And we're <laughs> just we're just sort of this is this is at um like be cool REL. Yes. So like we're just expecting people to not cheat. We're we're playing uh the Will Wheaton REL. So. <laughs> Will Wheaton, Indeed. I believe. Okay, so there's a mana drain in hand now. Ooh, that's pretty intense. That's a big game for Joe. Now he's gonna have trouble getting that Kiki Jiki on the table because it looks like I was wrong about the, where that mountain was, and there is not a third red source mm -hmm. currently in the cards for him. Ooh, cryptic command. Cryptic command is being cast. I was quite annoyed that I lost that card. Mm, yes. Up, oh, but uh, dispel coming back from Joe. Countering I, that. Do, do you cryptic. think he didn't use the mana drain just because he doesn't have anything to do with the four mana? I think that's probably it, because he, he doesn't, there's no equity for him to gain with the mana drain, but I think there's often a lack of equity for him to gain with the drain. At the same time, it can counter a creature that comes along later. For example, it can counter Gideon, oh. ally of Zendikar. That's several creatures. But Gideon just resolved. Really? I, I'm surprised. I guess the thinking is Tarmogoyf just kills all the creatures that you get from it? I guess, but... Yeah, I don't know. I don't... I don't feel like Joe has an effective answer to Gideon other than just using Tarmogoyf as the abyss here. And I don't right. feel like that's terribly sad. Oh, that's, that's Carnage, Carnage Tyrant. Tyrant. Hmm. Man. You know, all those green lands he has will really help cast that card. Yeah, that that is Joe's Goyf die there, as far as I understand it. It's that a, is... Uh, a Tarma die trademark, I believe. Yes, TM, 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 StarCityGames.com. <laughs> um... Eric, will I tell Eric to staff you for Eternal Weekend? I will I will recommend you to him. Please don't worry. <laughs> I'll tell EDB, hey, this guy, he's good. Um, I w again, I wish I was there. I wish that it was a different weekend from the Japanese GP, because obviously yeah. I'm going to go to a Japanese GP if I can. That is reasonable. So Magic card. Card. What's the top one there? That's a great question. Um, it looks like an all-white card. It is a... It's a it's, oh, let's see. It's being turned sideways. Still not helpful at all. Is it? Um, so let's let's decide. He paid four mana, five mana for it. I bet it's a Kiki Jiki. Is it Kiki Jiki? Wait, no, that's an island. We have island. We have no. It looks like it's Kiki. Now hang on. Somehow it made a morph. I think that's a copy of Tarmogoyf. How, where's the third red? How are we? How are we casting this spell? I'm going to jump out. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Would you? Because this does not seem possible. Hey, folks, it looks like we are... Uh... <laughs> the, the answer for where's the third red for Kiki Jiki was, oh, other word. So it looks shoot. like we're oh, going shoot. back. Oh shoot! Let's say so. We're going back in time a little bit to before that Kiki Jiki was cast because, of, because of course, that could not happen. I was like, that doesn't seem. Right. Yeah, 
I was wondering where that third red source was, but you know, we forget. Sometimes we say, "Oh, look at all this man on, look at all this man I have access to. I must be able to cast literally anything in my hand." Right. You know. And that is an island. That's not an island. It's actually a forest. So he has. Oh, it's forest. a forest. He has all three of the basics. Okay. Plus the volcanic island. So we are one colored mana away from both from either Carnage Tyrant or Kiki Jiki. That's a Dovin Hand of something or other. Dovin Hand of Control. There we go. Um, and that's going to make Joe's instance sorceries and artifacts cost one more to cast. Um, and it's also going to be effective at preventing damage from the Tarmogoyf, but if the Carnage Tyrant comes down, it will not be able to count target that, of course. So that totally makes sense why he allowed the Gideon to resolve with the assumption that Kiki Jiki was coming down next mm, turn. Yes. He must have forgotten the cast. But now he's got the Fiery Islet. He can cast the Kiki Jiki if he so chooses. Yep. Yeah, the Dovin, uh, I don't love that card. I mean, it seems fine. It's an interesting card because it allows... I don't think it's really for Joe, right? I think it's for more for somebody like Jeff or for you. Yeah. Because it's a Thalia-type effect that is aimed at the opponent. Reasonable, yeah. Do, Dovin put it on hold. Dovin, like yeah, Dovin uh, just just taking out some liens on Tarmogoyf's property here, making sure that mm -hmm. that it can't do what it wants to do, which is, of course, attack Gideon, attack Elaine. That Jace, I, I knew I wasn't going to get Jace the Mind Sculptor. Mm. I really thought I was going to pick up that Jace, and Elaine just sniped it from me. Jace for its Prodigy is a fantastic card, and yes. I think that the... Not only does it flip into a great planeswalker, but playing Merfolk Looter for quite a while. Oh, it's That's a dig. But dig through time is getting mana drained. Oh, That's going to give Joe eight colorless mana to play with on his upcoming turn. I'm willing to bet that that fiery islet might not be around anymore. Fiery islet is going to go into the garbage. <laughs> that is solid. Wow. Joe is really hoping that he rips another green source. You know, when you're going to cast your Dig Through Time, oftentimes you want to cast your Teferi first. Mm. That's what I'd recommend. Mm. <laughs> now, did she dig end of turn? Yeah, she digged at the end of his dog right. at the end of his turn. Yeah. And now is getting the Teferi bouncing the Tarmogoyf. Ooh, which makes Kiki look a lot worse. Yes, it does. Oh, man, this is just straight Planeswalker tribal. Right wow. Now. That is a Narset Parter of Veil. Narset is here. So Elaine has gone full super friends here with Gideon, Dovin, Teferi, and Narset, yes. plus the Jace, which it hasn't flipped yet, and it may not ever flip based on the fact that she, she used Dig Through Time, but that doesn't matter. Correct. Narset is one that's been kind of a VRD all-star. I didn't expect that card. When Steven took it second pick, I thought that was clearly ridiculous, as did everyone. But I was I was very unhappy that Steven took it second pick because I had it a little further down on my draft board. Yes. And then after after playing against it, I realized how much further up it should have been on my I think draft it went board. Third or fourth this round. Yeah. It that card is very good. It's actually. a f fantastic card. Yes. So let's check. Let's check where Narset is. So yeah, she averages... Okay, she's only picked once because we don't have the stats. Right, we don't have yet. the stats loaded in from this draft yet into the, your database, but... Yep. Yeah, Ninth Seed has been doing good work. Elaine is pointing to the Fiery Islet and saying... Uh, no, no, no. No, no. One card per turn, please. And of course, uh, Joe is not asking for takebacks. He's just playing, right. playing as he would. You gotta, you gotta play the game how you play it. Yep. That's your your. So we have a second copy of Kiki Jiki in the form of Splinter Twin. Yeah, but well, that's not going to do a whole lot for Joe here. Joe is going to resolve Regisaur Alpha or oh. try. Um, I'm not familiar with that card. So that's going to be a four four dinosaur that makes a three three dinosaur token and gives that other dinosaur's haste. So that's going to be a hasty three three. Okay. But. So seven power for five. Not yes, bad. seven. It's it's a lot of power in a in terms of how much mana you're spending, but it's also not super impactful on this board. And also... Well, I mean, it could kill two... It'll kill at least one walker, right? There's, are there creatures over there on the far I right? I think... Are those the knights? 
I think those are Gideon knights. Yes, okay. I think those are knight allies. In that case, life's not looking great. No, I think you, you may know it better as Slash Panther. Yes, for old school vintage <laughs> mud enthusiasts, Slash Panther has been called. We do have Slash Panther printed out uh, yeah. since it has been played in VRD before. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's one of those things that it's a, it's a card on somebody's radar. Whether it's any good or not is uh, up for debate. Yeah, so Crick says that uh, Narset actually went second this pick, this draft. It was and the 15th card picked. Thank you, Kyle. That's insane. Yeah, that's uh, that's Kyle, our, our, our logistics guy out there in the, the um, other room taking care of us. He was also very excited that Karik, or whatever that card's name was, was take this time. Oh, yes. His, uh, <laughs> the son of Yagamoth, yes. yes. And Elaine, seem, uh, based on the speed of her, her hand movements, she, she feels like she's got this covered. Yeah, I think we're kind of just waiting until right. somehow these knights start turning sideways. What does Slash Panther do? It is a 4-2 haste for 4 and a red Phyrexian mana. It is an artifact creature cat or something. I don't know. I don't... Not 100% sure of the types. Yep. And yeah, Slash Panther has been taken twice. Yeah. For an average of round 33. I mean, if you've already got Mishra's Workshop and you're in... You're just playing mud, sometimes you just want a 4-mana... Uh, a 4-mana yep. four 4-2 uh, four haste. And Mishra's Workshop had taken this time, right? It was... Yes. Okay. Yes. Shop is in Alex's deck. Got it. Or in Alex's pool. I, I haven't seen his deck. I am most interested to see what happens with Blyden's deck. His was kind of all over the place, mm. but it, I mean, it had a focused game plan. It's more just that it's playing a lot of cards that I've not seen played together before. Eric, am I? Ran are you Randy's cousin? Uh, I as un unless I assume you're talking about Randy Bueller and not WWE superstar Randy Orton. And it looks like uh, Joe has just conceded under the weight of 97 planeswalkers. Yeah. And and no, I'm no I'm, I'm nobody's cousin. I mean, I'm sure I have cousins, but they're not Randy Bueller or Randy Orton. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna go to a game three here. Yes. And Joe's going to be... Who do you like? So Joe's going to be on the play this time. Joe's going to be on the play. I think that... I think it's going to take a good draw from Joe to beat Elaine's deck. I think yes. Elaine is overall favored in this match. Um, so something like a strip mine on her only island. Might yes. Be good. Oh, yes. I think if Joe can get... If Joe can get an early mana advantage, because so Alex and I were talking about how if you're not just a linear combo deck, then the best thing to be doing is to be gaining a resource advantage in this yes. format, whether okay. it's mana or on board. Um, a card card advantage is good, but if you don't have something to do with card advantage, it's very hard to actually win the game. Yes. So I'm trying to up the size on this. No worries. Uh, that's a good question of how to do that. I don't think it's possible. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, zoom in. Yes, the new the War of the Spark Planeswalkers are just like, don't draw, give me some cards, let's hang out. Yeah, I managed to snag Ashiok, and he has done some work, but it's so hard to tell when you actually want to minus him and when not. Yeah, the, it. Y them. Yeah, um, this you know it's it's hard to it's hard to know with the Ashiok wh whether you want to just just whether you want to minus them and and get through. Yep. get through more cards in your opponent's deck, or whether you want to just leave them there and say, all right, well, right. this will soak up some damage. You don't get to do your thing. You know, it's 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 something for your opponent to attack, whether they, you know, a place for your opponent to make a mistake with their attacks. Indeed. Let's go check on the standings while this yeah. last match is about to go. I hear uh, Blyden is 2-0, and wow. it looks like that's the case. Yep, and Cody uh, lost to Blyden, it looks like. Yep. All right, so Brandon... Okay, Brandon must have played Jeff in the first round. Yes, Brandon lost to Jeff in the first round. Jeff Bomberman'd him game one and Vault Keyed him game two. That's strong. Um, so that was pretty good. <laughs> Not bad at all. So yeah, Joe, Joe and Elaine both looking for their first win here. Elaine playing her first match, whereas Joe having lost to uh, Cody's Reanimator deck in the previous round. Yes. So this would be, you know... I mean, obviously, everybody has to play everybody, and there's not, you know, no one round is any more important than any other, but Joe probably feels a little, little more pressure being 0-1 already here. 
It's really tough, yeah. I mean, the people that end up winning these events often will go 5-2. Yeah. Sometimes 6-1 if you're incredibly lucky. But it's very rare to actually end up sweeping the whole tournament. I think that's only happened a couple times. Yeah, our last winner... Um, Dan Zielinski went went five two. Is that if I remember correctly? He may have gone six one. Did he? Uh, no, no, you're right. Sorry, he went five two. Yeah, I I, I, I wasn't one hundred percent. He went six. He, did, he went, went six. Five, oh, you went five two. Okay, yeah. yes. And there were, then there was a, a glut. There were many of us at four three. Correct. Yeah. That's right. Elaine, me, Naveen. Um. Yeah, there was a there was a good group at four three, which you know, we we did have one person go oh seven, so that did sort of skew the records a little bit. True, and this time we decided that if there are uh, if, if there are ties for that top four seed for the people that make the prizes, they're going to be played. Out. I was going to say you're about to say playoff, and I'm Absolutely. really excited about that. For sure, it is amazing oh. to have more magic. Yes. But also to have those high stakes matches where there's literally a bottle of alcohol. On the I table. love that. Have we have we talked about what's in the in the pool so far? So I I've, have not even had time to see it other than my own buy-in. Mm. Uh, what did I, you bring? I, I brought a uh, a Buol. So it's a Madeira. Uh, that's the Boston Buol. Oh, from you the brought the Madeira. Company. Oh, yes. I'm a big fan of Madeira and of Madeira of ports and of all those kind of uh, fortified wines. This one is particularly great. It has a ton of raisin flavor right at the front of it. Mm. Um, it's not my favorite Buol, but at that price point of like the fifty to seventy dollar price point, it's incredibly good. So, are you a? Do you also enjoy uh, what's it called? Manzanilla. I don't know what that is. Okay, it's a similar kind of thing. I'm in for it. Okay. We'll try that again. I'll bring time. you some Manzanilla sometime. Yeah. Um, I th- Jeff, I think Jeff brought this, like, I, I don't even know. I think it's a bourbon, but it is in the fanciest. Oh, that bottle looked nice. Ones. I haven't even looked at it other than to say, ooh, cool bottle. Yeah, it looks like a candelabra. Um, it is truly beautiful. There's a 15-year Glenlivet. There's a couple other sweet bottles. Oh, I don't know how to spell candelabra. It's C A N D E L. None of these call- cards are of Thanos. Right. Yeah, it's c- candelabra. There we go. Is spelled weird. It, it's it's different from candle because it's candel. It's a weird card. I, weird yeah. weird word. You know, when I was like about forty picks into this mono blue deck, I definitely thought about grabbing high tide and candle, <laughs> but it just felt so inconsistent. So Joe has spirit guide preordain. Uh, oh, spirit guide. Okay. Oh, spirit guide preordain a red card I can't totally identify. Carnage tyrant. One of each of the basics. Yeah. What is that red card? Um. It's not Kiki. It's not twin. It wouldn't be by force. I know he has that coming out of the sideboard. No. Let's let's jump over to the list oh, a minute and see. I forgot about the Nika coffee grain. That's a fantastic it bottle is. of whiskey. Mm-hmm. I I am almost done with my bottle of that at home. Yes. That's a good sipping whiskey. Yeah, it's a great one. So I'm gonna jump over to the uh, to the draft list and let's see if we can figure out. Yeah, from what is his... that? What is that red card? That wouldn't be a pyroblast. I think I have the originals of all of those. I don't hmm. see any. Oh, is it Zealous Conscripts? It could be Conscripts. Okay. I'm trying to remember what's in the left side of that art. Well, Same. here's that preordained. It's running. Showing Kiki, Jiki, and uh, Tarmogoyf here. Yeah, Kyle, that's right. Byforce is kind of the new version of Meltdown. Yeah. He has both of them. Yeah, he has Byforce and Meltdown. He went top-bottom with his preordain. Joe, with the opening Elaine wishes she has, yes. True. That uh, preordain being what I I believe to be the premium cantrip in one mana blue cantrip in this Ooh. format. Um, I, mean, I think for fair decks, I agree with you. If you, if I'm going for a storm deck or something, I want ponder every time. Sure. Well, if you have if you have a linear combo deck or a lot of fetch lands, obviously the the higher amount of selection is is better. Correct. But if you're just a consistent fair deck, <laughs> he's trying to cast that tarmac with no yeah, forest. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> there we go. Who needs for Exiling us? the spirit guide. That that elf can, you know. Oh, Team Neem coming through with a picture of the prize pool. Well done. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Look that at that. That is gorgeous. Oh. We're trying to figure out what <laughs> what that bottle Jeff brought is. That Eldorado 15 years well. That's from Justin Throm. He wasn't able to make it. Strong. Oh, but, but Justin still brought his buy-in. He did. He was classy. That is classy. Yes, there are only seven bottles in that picture. We know that is uh, 
that is a uh, a bug and or feature. <laughs> <laughs> that is the nature of things today. Yeah. Today, uh, we had three people uh, that were not able to make it, so we had to sub in some players, and coming along with that is tough. Yeah, if we, if we sub somebody in, you know, the night of, it's hard to ask them to bring a bottle. You yes. Know? Especially in Missouri, which has strange laws about buying liquor before... Yeah. Am, I no, think. I... I was uh i was at the supermarket this morning just doing because i i left my house too early and i was like i guess i'll go do some errands Mm -hmm. and i was like ooh, maybe i'll pick up you know just like an extra bottle and bring it to augment the prize pool and that was not possible i think that's a divert or an opt and no it's a factor fiction it is factor fiction yes that is the the invasion factor fiction art yeah i don't uh I don't think anyone took Divert, but that is one of my favorite Divert, cards. we talked about Divert here in the booth. I don't remember if somebody took it. Oh, no, Elaine took not. Divert and she and then typed, hi, Eric, because nice. I got her with Divert last time. Which, and there's also one that's four spike and instant or sorcery and then draw a card. Uh, it's die something, but that was another one that I was hoping for, but just couldn't. My deck didn't even have enough things in it. What is that card called? Ah, oh, jeez, it's gone. Disrupt? I think it's Disrupt. Disrupt? Oh, dis- Disrupt, yes, that's the card. It's got the guy with the cage on his head. Yeah, it's just, like, really awkward. Yeah, there it is in the upper left. Uh, yeah. Well, let's see, yeah, there's there's an older art of it with the guy with the cage on his head. But It just doesn't make any sense. There, the weather light art. Yep, there it is. <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted to find space for it, but there weren't enough... Everyone ran creatures, and my deck was already f- over 25 cards. So Joe is trying to... Summoner's Pact for, uh, I assume, Carnage Tyrant, but Elaine has blown him out with Shadow of Doubt. That's so much better than a Counterspell. So he's still going to need to pay on his next turn. I guess he has the option not to. Yeah, well, okay, <laughs> all right, he doesn't have... Nobody has to do anything, yeah. right? There are, <laughs> you can choose to break laws. So, I my favorite story about those is that they are cards that are inspired by an uncut. Yes. The game just ended. The game is over. Joe decided that, well, he doesn't have double green. Wait. No way. He didn't have double green. I don't think he had it. Did she just kill him? Because he was going to get world spine. But that wouldn't help. What was, it? What, was her, what was the plan there? I don't know. Hold on, we need to get Joe in here for a quick interview. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me, I'll, I'll send him in here, and you can talk to him about what just happened. Okay. That is fascinating. I'm, I mean, I don't want to dagger him by making him interview, but also, I want to know. I need to know. Deeply in my soul. Joe, we have questions. It sounds like we might be finding out. Yes, the pack, plane was packed for World Spine and cheated in, but Elaine's also at 16. I don't think that does it. Do we know? We have the answer. Mark's got the answer. Yeah, so through the breach was involved. I see that. Yeah, so the, the game plan there was to get the World Spine worm through the breach it for the lethal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I assume there was something else that would have pumped it or something. Right, because Elaine's at 16, so that's... he'd be one off still. That was my understanding too. Good shot. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think it was good shot. It's possible it was a gut shot. <laughs> Secret gut shot. Forty sixth pick. <laughs> mutagenic growth. Right. Could be anything. Oh man. Oh, but mutagenic yeah. growth. You're bringing back <laughs> tough <laughs> memories from last BRD for me. Got killed by that rocket power turbo slug. Yeah, rocket power turbo slug is has really inspired a generation of of cards that that I really appreciate. Super. Yeah. <laughs> What an ability. So, yeah, I mean, that, that is literally, they yeah. made this card as a joke, and then they're like, that's a pretty good ability. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody should definitely clip that. I'm sure someone will clip that if they haven't already. Um, but, yeah, all, all of the packs are literally just Rocket Power Turbo Slug reprinted. Yep, and just in a, in a slightly different format. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm sure Kyle has somebody else ready to come in here. Yeah. Um, but I'll get out of your hair and let them come in instead. So. Well, thanks, Mark. It was Thank lovely chatting with you, as always. Of course. <laughs> and we'll see somebody in here again soon. Is Infect really better than Mono Red or White? Um, I, I Mark says yes, and I agree, because access to disruptive blue cards, I think, is huge. Is that pick history including the shotgun lotus drafts? Yes, we have eight shotgun lotus drafts, uh, a couple STL VRDs, a couple Portland VRDs, and then one other 
one other source for VRDs. Uh, there are 13 drafts in here. How does it compare to mono green? I haven't seen a lot of mono green. I know there was the the uh, the the Concordant Crossroads Elves deck that did uh, not great at one of the um, one of the Shotgun Lotus drafts. It, it was probably a little slow, but I, I I think Infect is a pretty good deck. It's faster, but doesn't use Ram and Ex Excavator traditionally. Yeah. Um, I think if I were drafting like a heavy green deck, I would want to either I would want to be either blue uh, for some tempo cards or white for some more hate bears. Right? Yeah. Vincent Brown played some green white hate bears last time, and there were some non. I mean, I think his deck had a tough run. It's gonna be Alex and next. All right. So we have we have Alec Deshaw and uh, Jeff Blyden coming in. Uh, Alec, of course, on that Hardened Scales counters deck, and then we have Jeff Blyden on that Mystic Forge eggs type artifact deck. Just draft Thalia and Containment Priest and Relic Warder and all that stuff. Yes, um, that is definitely an archetype. I know Elaine had a deck with blue that was blue white hate bears but i think green white hate bears has room to exist i think it's just also you gotta build it right for the environment that you're in and that means that you have to adapt to the other seven decks at the table and that can be very difficult we've got alex coming back in how's it going what's up so it's uh, Oh yes, I agree. So we're, we've uh, we've just been handed the bottle that uh, Jeff Blyden brought, and oh, it's it's Willet. Okay, why didn't I recognize this off the bat? This is a lovely Kentucky bourbon. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah. I'm now on unmuted. Uh. <laughs> so we've got we've got Alex here, and then I'm sure somebody else will be coming in to commentate shortly on the upcoming match between Jeff Blyden and Alec Deshaw. Jeff on Mystic Forge, egg type deck, and Alec on that Hardened Scales Affinity type deck. So I saw Jeff's deck, mm -hmm. and it's very good. Jeff's <laughs> deck is very good. I watched him Bomberman uh, Brandon to to death in one game and Vault Key him in another game. And uh, Steven Steven's gonna come join you in here, so I'm gonna step on out. Have a great time. Oh, Steven's joining. Me? Yeah. Sounds good. I'll get everything set up. I'm gonna. Take this bourbon with me. Yeah, not, not, try not drinking it. Not drink, you understand. But it's got to go back to this. Appearance. How bad can I butcher Steven's name before he notices? <laughs> put in Joe. You gotta put Joe in. Yeah, Joe hate. H-A-G-E-N? Mark, maybe I'm Mosa. H-A-G-A-N. A-N. That's what I thought. I'm updating right now. Don't worry. Guys. How'd you do? Nice, nice. Yeah. Misplays in this format? What? Yeah. So, uh, chat, that's actually what's kind of... Your headset's still muted, by the way. Yeah. Uh, chat, that's kind of what's cool about this is uh, there's so few of these that have ever really been done and televised or tracked sure. that we're sure. still figuring out what's good. All right. Uh, and Hagen... Am I good on? there? Okay. Yeah, you're good. You yeah. might be a little loud, but it's fine. I'll okay. we'll bring it in down. a second. Um... Yeah, there, yeah, exactly. There have not been 15 of these yet. Yeah. Uh, who's going to be playing? Gotcha. Gotcha, thank you. Yeah, I did a talk uh, right after the last one where we talked about my strategy because I had second picked Narset, and that was before she'd been picked in any of these, and then third picked Karn after first picking Lotus. Yeah. And, uh, you know, 
Kederberg was like, oh, I still think those are the wrong decisions. And I was glad to see that uh, I got second with those. I was glad to see Elaine second pick Narset and kind of back me up. Um, if one Narset's crazy. But uh, the thing I had talked about with Kederberg was that I think really this format, I, I don't like to think about it as vintage because you don't have like a full set of Moxes and a full set of the Powery stuff. So you can't gear out everything as fast as everyone else. Yeah. So I think of it as like, 40 card EDH or something like that, you know, where it's a little different. So you look for consistency, um, which is kind of why I went with this strategy. This time I was thinking, okay, well, I can have three or four different ways to tutor up combos or go infinite with the same three or four cards. For sure. And go that route. So. Yeah. Um, did I spell everyone's name correctly? Uh, it looks like, uh, I think it's D E on Deshaw. D E, not D I. Yeah, I think so. I thought he was Italian. Alex Deshaw. 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 Uh, cool. Uh, all right, so we're up to Jeff and Alex. I haven't seen Alex's deck yet. But These are both the artifact decks. Yeah, so they're they... both the artifact decks, but I think Jeff's deck is a little more lin uh, streamlined. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, Alex is 0-1. He just lost a really long, long match against uh, Brandon. Brandon. That, that, that game, I watched a little bit of it, and I was just like, wow, this is... Pretty wild game you two are playing. And I think Brandon's deck is absurd. Like right. it's, it's the weird. Ridiculous. It doesn't really do anything. Yeah. Uh, no second capital. All right. Ah, there we go. I'll just butcher his name every possible way. It is di too. We just, yeah. Thank you. Um. Yeah. I, Blyden's t dropped a game each time, so um, he's two and one for each of the two matches. But you know he's definitely doing the things he wants to do out there. So. Yeah, so we were talking earlier while I was listening in on, uh, man, you're right, I'm bad at spelling. No, uh, I'll leave that, he's building. Building. <laughs> he's building decks. He's uh, building an empire. He talked about running for president earlier, I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, so they were talking, there's been a lot of chat about deck types and archetypes and stuff like that. And Infect being better than Mono Red and Mono White. Yes, yeah. No one went the Infect route tonight, uh, but I think bears, the deck's phenomenal. Other things. Uh, how early was Carrick picked? Yeah, 19th. No, no one drafted Bolt. Bolt. Yeah. yeah, I have a lot of issues with that. Um, yeah, I still... I, I, I truly believe that there's like a medium red prison deck in this right. format. Like, I think so. Well, we did... And we're going to talk about it later. So I built it. A couple of weeks ago, we did a um, theory draft where I built kind of, uh, it's kind of like old all-in red with all the rituals, but it goes into lots of ball lightnings and then recurring the ball lightnings, like the ball lightning tribal deck. Yeah. And I printed it and brought it. So we're going to test it against some of these other lists. And it's literally time. just like every copy of ball lightning you could jam in. Yeah, or right? many of them. And then the Thunderkin Awakener from M20 that brings yeah, it back when it attacks. Yeah, that would never get drafted yeah. in this format. So yeah, we're going to test it out. We... we uh, we put it together, and we're going to try it out just to see. What? Why? Sheldock is good. Sheldock is good. It's good in 40 cards. Yeah, it's 40 card format. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Why was Carrick drafted that early? Um, you know what? It's He, he, he got a, he got tagged in at 1030 last night. Um, and sometimes with those new cards, you don't know, and you just want to make a statement. And uh, I saw him cast something stupid. He, like, won a, he cast a free Carrick on like turn three and then won a game with it by yeah. doing ridiculous stuff. I don't know. It, like, it has value. It might not be yeah. that good of a card in like where it got picked in the things, but I think it deserves. Yeah. I mean, he was excited. Yeah. He was, he was in like so far. It's won him a game. Like. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of where it's at. It's like it's a good card. Uh, it might not be top it was, seventeen rounds. Right. It was too early, card, but you know. Like, uh, hey, this is hard, man. Like, this, as I said, like, he had no prep. He anyone, got, yeah, anyone he literally got tagged this, in at yeah. ten thirty last night. So. Yeah, anyone who's doing this for the first time ever, especially with like no prep, like if you. Make a civic right, copy. First Lotus. <laughs> we uh, are... Hill Giant. Hill Giant? <laughs> Hill Giant. No, Hill. Wow, Alec. Come on, you play a Lotus and you don't even do anything with it. I know, Lotus Pass, I'm right. Yeah. Like, uh, See, I had the Lotus last time, so it was uh, it was good times. Second Forest. Yeah, I had the Lotus the first time, it was great. Mem Knight. Man, that just looks so sketch. I used, uh, with Goblin Welder, I used the Lotus four times in one game. Can we get player match scores up? Yeah, for sure. Uh, two. And Alex is one. Gotcha. Yeah. 2-0 and then... 
Uh, he's tinkering with that Memnite. He's going to get Blightsteel Colossus here. Yeah. And there is a uh, pick. Pick one and pick <laughs> the plating for butter. Just like, <laughs> all right, why not? Uh, no, I had a plan. My plan last time was completely going about going two card Monty. Uh, my plan from jump was Narset Puzzle Box um, and um, Karn Lattice and Windfall and all of that and build around there. So the Lotus just I happened to get pick one. And that's why I went there. My plan was completely based around Narset and Karn coming in. Yeah. It was uh, just basically play two play as many tutorable two card win conditions as I could. Something just happened. I don't really understand what, but uh, uh so we had the Tinker. Well, he's like tapping mana, but like, isn't this game over? Or is he just? I mean, mana? Jeff might not scoop it here. Yeah. Yeah. So it was Forest, Lotus, Forest, Memnite. Tinker, Cracking right. Lotus, Sacking Memnite for Blightsteel. Uh, that was turn two. Uh, Jeff had played an island. Yeah. Welcome to Magic. Fair and interactive gameplay. That Cranial played... Yeah, there is a Lightning Greaves in his deck. This game yeah. could have just been... Uh, the Greaves so was a good I don't know, honestly, what Jeff has in game. In I don't... First. I mean, I don't think he drafted anything like Vapor Snaggy or... Yeah, I don't you know, think he I don't honestly... Think it, main this. deck, I don't think he can beat this. Yeah, I, I think mean, like, just maybe he's stubborn. trying to, like, figure out yeah, how he he'd go he infinite, it but, like... Yeah. yeah. I was like, he's just being stubborn. Would have been the first time Greaves has been good in, in uh, Vintage. I don't know what you're talking about, dude. I've sacked a Clodotha Forge Master <laughs> that I had just played off of a Mishra. Uh... <laughs> It, no, Vin Greaves sucks in Vintage. Yes, you're correct. <laughs> um, all right, so that was a quick... That was a quick... Man, this is hilarious, because I've been like wanting to see Jeff's deck do stuff, but yeah. then he just got turned to Tinker Blightsteeled, uh, which is hilarious. I've, But uh, yeah, I was watching his deck, and it's just like, he bomberman the guy, he uh, time vaulted a yeah. guy. It's like he's got a lot of ability to do a lot of crazy stuff. Ah, uh, yeah, Alec got the Metamorph. Phyrexian Metamorph. Yeah. 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 So when I went against the Time Vault deck last time, it was on camera. Uh, it was Eric, and he dropped Vault, in, or he dropped uh, to, uh, uh, Tez got Vault. I dropped Karn to shut it off, and then he started rolling Karn to try to roll up to make, or uh, Tez up to make five fives, and then I just dropped Lattice, and the game ended. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. So, but of course, I and, and Alex should. I don't know. Alex should have Lattice in the board, not in the main deck. So it should be there to grab with Karn, not actually in the deck, because it's a really bad draw. Yeah. I mean, he's got Arcbound Ravager, so maybe he's going to try to get cute with it and like sack out lands and stuff. Sure. But it still seems like really, really bad main really board. Really bad. Yeah. Jeff, Jeff's like, of course on camera. Right. Yeah. So if you just have that happen, you're just like, all right. Well, next, I guess. Uh, I don't know. This is a... No, he doesn't have Darksteel Forge. I can pull no, up his... No, Forge didn't get drafted this time. I drafted it last time with Karn, and I never brought it in. It seemed... That's an interesting camera. I didn't know we had. That's our that's, new camera. That's, that's, new that's a great camera. Uh, where's my draft? Draft. Oh, yeah. No, Forge did not get picked. He has a Junk Diver for Recursion. Might be main decking that. Yeah. On Nexus. No, I don't know how much, honestly, Alec has a um, sideboard. His list seems a little all over the place. So, we'll see. I drafted it last time out of reaction to all the, like, uh, Vandal Blast and Hate people were picking, but it was just... Never get played. Yeah, I had a lot of cards that never got played last time, but my main deck was tight. So I wonder if Jeff is taking the draw here. Um, no. No. I doubt it. Alright, resolving Mulligans? Yeah. What you need to know, I can find out. Oh, you're good. Den, Opal, Active Opal, what's a turn? Is that what? There's a lot of super That's egg? What, is egg. That, what does that egg do? I can't even remember. Uh, it... Tap sack for a green mana? Yeah. Okay. Then repeal. Oh, he repealed back his opal to draw a card and replay this. Yes. Okay. No, um.
you can have a lot of really powerful sideboard cards. Yeah, I'm really happy with my sideboard this time. Workshop into Foundry Inspector. No, that's the blue white egg. You're okay. right. Yeah. Oof, Foundry. Black Lotus. Cracks Black Lotus. This might be a Tinker again. Uh, Ethereum Sculptor. He's got one mana floating because of Foundry Inspector. No. Um, yeah, because it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So plays Mirror Retriever. Right. Gets, <laughs> gets back Black Lotus. Oh my god. No, oh, no. Retriever has to die. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Junk Diver, that would have Right. Oh, that's hysterical. That would have been... Wow. Yeah, Junk Diver. If that was a Junk Diver, that would have been... Yeah, you wouldn't have been able to do it. It was Diver's Diver's... Yeah. What, four normally? Yeah, Diver's three. Three? Okay, it's still been in two, so he wouldn't have... Even with Inspector, it would have been you're two. You're right, you're right. It would have been one short, yep. Right. He, had, he had one mana floating. No. No. <laughs> I've never done that. Um... Like, I usually play black-white because I like making people not play magic. Uh, as in, like, modern, like, heavily discard pox-style decks. But I don't care about sideboard. Like, I play the sideboard cards that I think need to get yeah. played. I don't, actually think, like this, I don't think it's bad in this format. Yeah, in a format like this, your sideboard is so powerful that it has so many silver shots. But the thing is, you have to draw them and, like, get them. So I think, like, having a plan I picked third or having a deck that's just, like, 55% against everything is a better way to do it. I picked the third color being black for sideboard this time. Um, yeah, I mean... The uh, the only thing I regret that's was... A, that's a logic to have, by the way. Like, oh yeah, I want to play Pyroblast, so I'm going to play a deck that can support Pyroblast. That's a logic to have, I don't think it's insane, but to be like, oh, I'm playing Twin because of Pyroblast. Yeah, the only other thing I regret is I meant to pick Plague Engineer, and it didn't make it onto my note list somehow. And uh, it would have been really good against that true name nemesis. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think, like, playing a deck you're comfortable with, like, Blyden plays a lot of pretty degenerate combo. And I've never I mean, seen... I've actually never seen Blyden play mid-range magic. Yeah, he plays Jund a lot now. Oh, he does. Yeah, he does. Okay. I mean, Blyden plays a bit of everything. Yeah. Was, he, he'll play the best deck, or what he thinks is best yeah. deck. It's, it's, he's often wrong, but he'll play what he thinks is the best deck. Yeah, Plague Engineer is hot. It's like I I wanted it in my board and I kind of forgot about it. Yeah, it snipes a lot, especially true name. Excuse me. Um, yeah, it snipes a lot. All right, that's the Mystic Forge. Yeah, Bl so Blyden was going ape over this card when he drafted it. Like he was doing a dance and he was like, "I'm gonna win everything, Mystic Forge!" Ah. Revoker yeah. What? what is Revoker naming? Kyle, can you find out? Uh, the news? That was just an interesting idea because I was like, well, if they, if they manage to kill the main combo, I can just drop it. Um, I can just drop the news and pretty much combo off with all the pieces, right? Because it can be Devoted Druid. And originally, the only thing I lost on my list was Walking Ballista. The Crater Hoof became what a shot in for Walking Ballista. Because the issue was, is all my other high wins, like uh, Finale of Devastation, is not tutorable. Uh, okay, so that named Time Bolt. Cool. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, makes sense. Um, I can't tutor it with the creature tutors so to get uh, Finale of Devastation. So I wanted tr a win that I could tutor with the creature tutors to get up once I had the infinite mana. Because once he took the Ballista, before I could get it, I needed another kind of creature-based go win. So I have Shalai and I have Crater Hoof. Um, I've cited out the news once, uh, but yeah, it was just the idea of it can also, it can become Devoted Druid, and it can become uh, Dusk Watch, you know, when, like it is with Devoted Druid and Dusk Watch in the graveyard with Vizier there in play, it is actually just both those cards, and it can just combo off by itself. So we're seeing... So this is a match. Forge got drawn. Yeah, this is pretty close. Yeah. Uh, Revoker naming... Oh, on the life? That, yeah, that life needs adjustment there. Yeah, it does. Should be... I mean, I don't think... He, I don't know, he hit the... He hit him. There's a lot of Ethereum Sculptor. Is Ethereum Sculptor plus two? So, three, four, seven. Plus three because of Frexian Roker? Five. Three, five, 
So five. He's two, but then he got hit by a foundry inspector. Right. Just... Yeah, so I think he's a 10. That's I right. think it's a three. Yeah, I it's right. He I did. don't think he took right. his life loss the first turn. All right, alt. Oh, this would be just devastating if Wyden just double lands off the top or something yeah. ridiculous. Shockingly able to cast the next card. Surprise, surprise. I wanted to see, um, even though I don't think it was good enough. I love that Alex lands look like that. Yeah. What's what's his lands? That's the waterlogged, uh, the the blue green, um, uh, horizon canopy. Yeah. Why is it so mostly. Like that? I don't know. The printout last time came out like that, and we just oh, left it. Hilarious. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we were until we wasn't working for some reason. Yeah, yeah um, the new commander cards were not on there, and there was a couple of those drafted. Um, I think one, maybe two. Chainer uh, was. I'll take key next. Uh, this is tough because, like, I don't know how. I mean, he has Bomberman still, but like, right? Revoker naming Time Vault without really any. Uh, he ha he might have. Um, Helm of Awakening. Now you can draw his deck if he gets the right. Pieces. Yeah, Crooked Chainer. The other new commander card that I thought might have legs would have been uh, Dockside Extortionist, the red-white one for two that you get a treasure for each artifact or enchantment your opponent's control. Correct. Uh, Orange just got played. Yeah. So he has infinite mana, basically. Uh, I thought I really wanted to see um, Icar Wellspring in Jeff's deck. That would have been good. Yeah. I Yeah, no, I've, I love uh, Press. It, it's been great, but... Yeah, Dockside's pretty bonkers. I think the card's really good for EDH and cubes. And, like, obviously, you drop that against one of these decks, you're going to get a lot of mana really quick. Uh, it's DLCK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I split, er split. Ergonomic, whatever. <laughs> Or not. Uh, two floating mana. I assume. So we've got. Yeah, no, there's a lot of amazing EDH cards in there, obviously, I think. But I was just. Th I'm always thinking of cards like what transfers over to this format. Because uh, I like grabbing on the new cards before other people do. Yeah, for sure. It was like last time Levine and I were the only two that had really studied up the Modern Horizons card. and <laughs> Yeah, Eric Levine. Oh, Eric Levine. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah, I mean, this was kind of a weird, like, almost triple set of, like, Commander. M20. Horizons and M20. We, had, we had Modern Horizons legal last time. Yeah. It was the week before, but we allowed it. Biden's got a lot of stuff here. Oh, El should be infinite. Yeah. Yeah, that card's cool. Super Jin. He may have some of not very tapped out. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of tapped out. Yeah. Mana float and pass, okay. He's not in a great spot, honestly. No, I he's mean... a lot of pressure. He's at eight... Doesn't have a blocker. No, he's got one. He's got Ethereum Sculptor, which he really doesn't want to sacrifice, but he's got to if he wants to live. Now, he's not going to go in with the um, Revoker, obviously. Unless it's lethal. Right, unless it's lethal. I mean, Metamorph going to be an Ethereum Sculptor, probably. Just pump the whole team? Uh, no, probably uh, Master of Ethereum. Master, Master of Ethereum, yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. That's, I think that's just lethal, yeah. then, right? Like, that's going to be pretty hard to survive. Yeah, I mean, that's a double pump for the, all of the artifacts. Uh, you missed an eggs deck <laughs> uh, doing eggs things. Wow, man. Yeah. Uh, Alec kind of just put him down. Yeah. That was really impressive. I mean, I guess his deck is a little more it's aggro. aggro. Than I mean, he's, he's, got to, he's got hardened scales, and, you know. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. Uh, looks like Alec got the win. Gonna go up to 1-1. Wyden taking his first loss. 
Uh, but yeah, that was a eggs deck with a forge on top. Blot. That just kind of exploded for a little bit, but didn't really do anything with it, which is unfortunate. Blighton has a really cool commander battle box that I know Eric Levine is going to be writing up a thing on his uh, article on Channel Fireball about, where there's a pile of commanders you can draft. You can draft two commanders. You're not allowed more than three colors between them. But then there's a pile of each color of cards, or colored sleeves to match the colors, um, that have multicolor cards in them as well. And you can draw only draw out of the colors you have. Uh, so it's these kind of shared decks. And then you get one of each basic, one of each tri-land, and a command tower that you can play each turn. It's really fun, actually. Like once the, Look for Levine's article on it. It is, it is a blast. It's really silly. All right. So he brought in Revoker. Yeah, that clear. Uh, there's Bad Chalice. Something and something. I can't tell what the other two are. brought in Chalice. Yeah, it makes sense. That's yeah. With the one one, yeah, yeah. Sounds, sounds like battle, battle box, box, but commander edition. I kind of, yeah, it yeah, it's commander battle box. So yeah, for sure. Uh, All right, that was a pretty good game. That was really. No, I mean game one, obviously not. <laughs> yeah. Alex is staying there. We're gonna put Cody Owen on next. All right. So I mean, I dug it. I was like, hey, Blinker. Uh, I was like, yeah. Blink and Tink just the Tinker. Yeah, that. So Cody Owen's on Reanimator. Um, I beat him in three. Um, but they were uh, they were pretty good matches. Uh, the game, he uh, he saved a, uh, infinite life because he had drew uh, went down to three off of drawing off seven off Grizzle Brand, and he had to draw Force of Despair to stop me from ki in winning. And then he drew Force of Despair off of it and stopped me. But I had Ewit to get back Vicious Seer the next turn, and it was oh, just okay. like Ewit get back nice. Vicious Seer, go again, and you know infinite yes. life. So. All right, y'all. Well, I'm gonna roll off here and uh, see who else is coming here. Probably Eric coming back for a bit, and then maybe somebody else. So, y'all have a blast. Thanks for watching. All right, Eric's joining me in just a sec. That was a uh, wild one. Yeah, quick. So we're gonna have Alec Deshaw versus Cody Owen. You coming in? And Jeff Blyden will be joining Eric Levine, because uh, no one needs me here. That's not true. Uh, Cody is one and two. When I realized that I wasn't going to get to do commentary with you for the rest of the day, I was like, oh, that's too bad. That saves me. It saves both of us. Uh, all righty. Um, you're going to need to update oh, yeah. your guys' names and then the... the um, the text GDI. Yeah, you can tell me that. I was, but now I'm not. Now I can be heard by humans. Yeah, that was a quick game one for Alec. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Jeff remembers it better than any of us. I am quite salty. Right now. Oh, I bet. So I'm guessing you feel like that was uh, that matchup was yours to lose. Uh, well, he has blank steel. Are you? I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to beat that. You're not muted, right? Or are you? Uh, I, don't know. I can't hear anything. Okay. Is it flashing or not? It is flashing. All right, hit that button. Now you're not muted. Now, now I'm not hey. muted. All right, cool. No. no. Uh, yeah, that was so upsetting. upsetting. Yeah. I even brought in the sculpting steel so that I can sculpting steel my ancient den to get the white for the Oriok salvage. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was my entire plan. <laughs> and I hit the seal cleansing before I hit um, the Sensei's Divining Tap. And the Sensei's Divining Tap was the very next card. Oh, that's. Yeah, I saw you looking at the, the rest of your library and you flipped that top off the top. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, no. That's it. Yeah, yeah, they got me. Oh, well. So what do we have here? Alec versus uh, Cody. Yes, we have Alec and okay. Cody. So Alec on that uh, that artifact deck that we just saw versus mm -hmm. Cody on uh, Reanimator. Reanimator. Yep. So who do you think is favored here? Um, You've played against both of these guys at this correct. point. From what I've seen out of Alec's uh, deck, I think he's favored. Um... He goes really, really wide, and he can go really, really 
fast. Mm. Whereas Cody doesn't have um, very much in the way of speed. He gets, he's reanimated, so he has to do a fair bit of setup. Right. Whereas Alex deck is just set up to play guys and turn them sideways. Yeah, Alec very quickly and efficiently. Alec attacks fast, whereas Cody makes you know one big creature. Yeah. 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 Okay. That makes sense. That that sounds right to me. So we'll see. We'll see who's uh, who comes out ahead here. I think Cody's uh, real chance here is to open up on Pack Rat. Ooh, yes. And then make many, many dorks. Pack Rat is a really explosive card, and I yeah. think that's a that's a reasonable shot for Cody. Or if he has an early Villas, yes. then he can turn uh, Alex uh, aggression against him. Yeah. Iona is not very good here. That's no, true. No, not at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of uh, a lot of negative comments about Iona in this matchup, and I think yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. He's not opening on Black Lotus this game. <laughs> <laughs> Did that happen to you both uh, games? Both games. Oh. <laughs> game two was Lotus plus Workshop. Yeah, it turns out uh, Black Lotus will win games. Weird. Yeah, yeah, Who will. would have thought? Mm. <laughs> Cody opens. Oh, look, there, there we go. The turn one turn pack rat. Win. That's how he. That's, that's, oh, well, and there's there's the lotus. Turn one rat off the Simeon Spirit guy, but there is the lotus. There's the lotus. So. <laughs> Cody said he took Assassin's Trophy to deal with stuff, but can he cast it? Yes, he. he, uh, he can. He can cast it. He did. Uh, he did take that Twilight Mire, which can give him green mana, and he had a couple other ways to get green. I think. I don't totally. Remember. Yeah, I don't remember what all's in his deck. Turn one, is that Foundry Inspector Steel Over Steer? Yep. Oh, that's a tough one. That might be good enough to beat turn one pack rat, because yep. Cody is gonna need to generate three mana to uh to make another rat here. Correct. And he can't do that. This oh turn. he can't. He's passing the turn back. He does not have Dark Ritual, he does not have Cabal Ritual. Both of those I know in his draft, but those did not show up in his hand here. Yeah. And Alec is a master at this deck, too. This is what he was playing primarily during our Sunday Vintage League. Oh, my gosh. So, so this is this is a deck. So this is a deck I think that Alex and I did not give enough credence to mm -hmm. during the draft portion. But it seems like Alec knows what he's doing here. Oof. Oh, Affinity just doing Affinity things. Yeah. And by Affinity, I mean none <laughs> oh of these cards goodness. have the mechanic Affinity, but here's Alec doing a bunch of free nonsense. Oh my goodness. Putting counters in on there. his creatures. Getting in with a 4-3 Foundry Inspector. Dropping Owen to 16. I think this is over. Yeah, this does not look like something that Cody can can beat. If Al yeah, if Alex keeps drawing Black Lotus, he's going to be yeah, pretty yeah. unbeatable. Lotus? <laughs> I mean, how do you beat Black Lotus? You don't. If you figure, if you figure it out, you tell me so I can do it next PRD, all right? Step one, right. draft Lotus. Step two, draw it every game. <laughs> okay, so the way to beat Black Lotus is to have first pick and pick Black Lotus. But, yeah. Got it. Per perfect. Beautiful. Yeah, if you're Cody here, yeah, That's you it. just got to scoop it, it up. Hmm. So fast. So fast. Yeah, if he could, uh, if if there was a, a way to entomb and animate, there there was a, a game there, but mm -hmm. Cody just didn't have it. But even so, what could he reanimate in that situation? It's hard to know. Would get there. No, I don't think Vilas does it. I don't think, uh, like, I don't I don't think there's a card in Cody's deck that does it. Like maybe Grizzlebrand. Yeah. And just use it as a a big life linker. Yeah. Just just have it as a blocker, yeah, and survive. So he can he can survive at least a turn, and then maybe go off the next turn. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> the power of anime. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. If manga, if you're you got the heart of the cards, man. Yeah, you're gonna get there every time. Sometimes you just gotta have it. I I will say I am quite proud about being able to game that. Uh, Time, uh, time vault. That has been today. That has been our biggest topic of conversation. Oh, really? I think, in the book so far. <laughs> I earlier I was asked. I forget who, who I was talking to, but I was like, so Jeff told me this story about how he was talking down on time vault, and then he got it because is that true? And and the answer is yes. 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 You. I mean, I believed you, but you know, for coverage, I gotta I gotta start asking the hard questions. For sure. You know. For sure. And and I think it's hilarious. Lance Uppercut FX. Thank you for the Twitch Prime. We appreciate it. 
all these all these Twitch Prime subscriptions and bits and so on go to making the stream better. Mark will you know use that to invest in equipment and so on. So we really appreciate that kind of thing. Here as we go to game two between Alec and Cody, with Alec up 1-0 after a just a, a commanding Black Lotus yeah. into <laughs> curl my hand onto the table and do whatever I want. And that's, that's why it's so expensive. expensive. Yep. Such a powerful card. What an incredible card. And you, you know, you look at that card when you're just sort of starting out and you think, mm -hmm. well, okay, but it's just one time. I have to sacrifice it. Yeah. Who cares? Oh, I remember those days. <laughs> <laughs> my very first trade in Magic was my unlimited underground sea for his island and swamp. <laughs> that was my very first trade right. in Magic. Right, because you... You, you couldn't just go get basic lands from the box in the card store. Correct. That wasn't a thing. No, I, I needed to build a deck. I remember, I remember playing for Ante, and you know, I ante up my my fireball or something, and my yeah. opponent anties up there by you, and I'm like, this is garbage. You yeah, can't, you can't enter <laughs> ante a land. Out of there. And my opponent was like, no, 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 no. You didn't say that before we started. So I can ante this land. I was like, this sucks. And I play and I win. I'm like, great, I have this stupid land. I still, yeah. you know where that bayou is now? It's in a commander deck. <laughs> oh, well, hey, at least you still have it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I never sold anything. Okay. I kept everything. Yeah, it was the same way. Yeah. It's, it, it turned out to be the right move. I have this really awesome tropical island that I bought from a card shop in Syracuse, New York back in... I, 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 I want to say it was in 2000. I was in college at the time. Mm -hmm. And they were uh, cleaning out their case, and they lifted up the wooden case, and under there was a tropical <laughs> island that had been bent over twice. Oh, my gosh. And uh, he was like, I don't think I can get $3 for that. I was like, I'll give you 3 bucks for it. Yeah, right, I'll give you 5 whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, re I remember I have a, a vivid memory of buying a Tundra on eBay for mm -hmm. $40 in, you know, 2008 and thinking yeah. like, eh, that was okay. You know, yeah. I got an all right deal. <laughs> and now I'm just like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> How is this this way? The prices are just out of control. They're unreal. Man. It's tough. I feel bad for anybody trying to, you know, get into legacy. Yeah. Things like that. I mean, I don't have power. You know, I don't. Mm -hmm. That's not something I... I started in Revised, so I don't okay. have that. But, like, I have duels and just, like... I feel like, okay, sure. Yeah. Fine. No complaints here. <laughs> I don't think this is going to be very much of a no, I, I don't... Did you see the Tormod script in hand? There's a Crypt in Alex's hand? There's a Crypt oh, in no. hand. Crypt and Hangerback Walker, City of Traitors, Karn the Great Creator, Throne of Geth, I want to say. Um, yeah, I can't... What's, What's that, that card, card right before... Oh, it's a Vault Scourge. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, this may not be too much of a game. I don't think Cody has any way of interacting with the... Uh, yeah, just this this stream of artifacts yeah, is going to come out of Alex's sure. hand. It's going to be too much for him. Well, he might have turn one ritual and tomb reanimator mm. along those lines. Well, let's see. That'll get there. He could have it. Yeah. This we could be we could be talking crap, and he could just be he could just blow it out right now. That's true. We'll see. He's got that turn one badlands. He part of the cards. I see a jet. I see a reanimate. Ooh, there's a jet. Is there an entomb? Ritual? Oh, dark ritual? Is it Vilas? Oh. No, it's Chainer. Oh, Chainer. Okay. Well, oh, we... no, Chainer pass. Chainer pass. All right. Oh, so unfortunate. But Chainer, I think, let's, let's, let me pull up Chainer here so that we can see it. This new Chainer from Commander 2019, I think, is, it's a pretty powerful card. Yeah, he's a boss. Yeah. It's, it's. It gives, oh, there's the there's crypt. crypt. There's the crypt. That's going to be trouble for Cody. That's going to be trouble. 3-2 is pretty decent against his hand, though. Yeah. Hope, Hope of, of Gear Poor. Okay. All right. So Alec can shut Cody out for a turn. But... Cody under the crypt and the Hope of... And, and soon to be under the Hope of Gear Poor, potentially. Could have some difficulties in this matchup. Looks like he drew a swamp. Was that in his hand beforehand? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. 
Alec down to 17 off the chainer, and Cody passes. Oof. Uh, force is the draw. Now, do you think, do you think, uh, if you're Cody here, mm -hmm. are you wanting to discard something to try to bait out, bait out the uh, the Tormod's Crypt here? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. you got to get out, that off the board, right? Yeah. Because it's, it's, otherwise, you're, you're just not going to win this game. Yeah. And if, Cody has to assemble so many cards. Yeah. He's got he's to gotta throw a tasty enough target into the graveyard for Alec to care. Mm -hmm. And then, after getting his graveyard exiled, he's got to do it again. Yes. And he has to draw the second reanimation spell, too. Yep. Either that, or he has to assemble enough mana to recast that card and play it fairly off the Chainer ability, which is going to be tough. Yeah. He, he did, did hard cast a Grizzlebrand earlier today. Oh, it's possible. Yeah. I mean, if you... But, but Dark Ritual's already been cast. Cabal mm -hmm. Ritual right now only nets him one mana. But he has Kyrick. He does have Kyrick. And that's... Or, I, I mean, I don't know how to say it. Kyrick. Whatever it is. The son of Yagmon. <laughs> horror, horror minion. Whatever that card yeah. is. I wrote a whole bunch about that card last week. And I don't even know how to say it. But uh, <laughs> but Kyrick is... is Yeah. If, if he can get Kyrick down and then get Gristlebrand out... Because you know that'll that'll only cost him another eight life after yeah. the four mana, no big deal. Um, except against Alex's deck, that is a big deal because yeah. Alec is actually looking to beat down with creatures. Oh, this this, this might, might be it though. He, he might, might be able to get, get Liquid Metal Coating and did, yeah, he did pick up Liquid Metal. Yeah, he has Liquid Metal Coating. Yeah. I saw Karn in Alex's hand, mm -hmm. and here is Karn. Does, Does he, also he also have Null Rod? Rod? Uh, Mark has Null Rod, I think, but okay. Alec has um, Alec has Lattice in his board. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't think Lattice is the is the pick here. No. Oh, what's that? And what's that's Liliana's Triumph. Oh, Liliana's Triumph. Forcing Alec to sack a creature. So Alec is going to lose either Hope of Girapur or Steel Overseer here. I feel like Hope is way too valuable. Yeah, Hope locks. Cody out for a full turn, well, but it looks like Alec level. really values the activated ability of Steel Overseer yeah, here. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, it's tough, because you either take the thing that stalls your opponent out for one turn and throw it in the graveyard, or you take the thing that is going to win you the game eventually yeah. and you throw it in the graveyard. So it's a, it's a hard call. Well, it looks, it looks like whatever uh, he sacrificed, sacrificed, the other creature was going to bite the dust anyway. So yeah. I'm pretty sure that's in block mode. Yep. To keep the Karn alive. Oh, definitely. So we've got two, we've, we've got a classic VRD scenario where two decks are kind of off plan a little bit and we're trying to see who can get there first. Oh, he's grabbing the lattice. Mm. I think that's a mistake. Yeah. He can't cast it next turn. Well, you know, he might draw Lotus or Workshop. <laughs> Harder the cards. I mean, time. He, I, yeah, I don't think he has shop in hand. If he has shop in hand, this is a great play. Yes. But I don't I didn't see it. But we'll see. We'll find uh, out. I don't think it's gonna matter very much. You know, I'm fairly certain he's gonna find Liliana's Triumph or uh, Dismember. Oh no, Mark has Dismember. So Alex He's gonna find a removal spell of some sort here. Alex says he does have workshop in hand. Oh he does. Yeah. Wow. So Cody needs to kill the Steel Overseer and get in and, and attack Karn with Chainer or kill Karn a different way. Yeah. Because otherwise, he's going to be locked out of activating anything. Man, if he had the the uh, workshop in hand, he should have just gone up. Yeah. Just, just go upstairs and yeah, I think go so. down the next turn. Yeah, you got to protect it. Yeah. And in that scenario, I think you keep the hope and you attack and you lock you lock Cody out. Yes. I think that makes sense. Yep. Oh, Cody with Thought Seize is going to take that that Microsoft oh. Lattice away from Alec. Man, this is unraveling. So that's a hand of Lattice, Workshop, Hangerback Walker, and Vault Scourge. So Alec still has a decent creature base to work with, mm -hmm. but... Cody's deck being much more explosive, I think, can get get out ahead as long as that lattice is not a factor. Yeah. I don't think he has any way of recurring it. And there goes the yeah. lattice. But Cody needs to force Alec to blow up the Tarmod script, because yes. until he does, he's just stuck with a 3-2. And that's not going to do it. Ah. Uh, uh, no, he can't do that. Uh, Karn finds cards from outside the game, and your exile is considered in the game.
unless you're playing middle school, in which case right. it work the way that they used to. Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't believe Karn gets things from, from Exile. Let's, uh, does it? Read Karn. All right, let's read Karn. I'm in for reading Karn. Or Exile. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. I've never done what that. What a card. Wow, Karn. So Alec has, what a card. So Alec has a line of play that he may not even see, yeah. which is to crypt himself. And it looks like he hasn't seen that line of play. Because wow. here he is activating, using Mishra's workshop. It looks like he's going to be casting, yes, it's Hangerback Walker for yeah, X equals he, 2. Infinite, infinite blockers. blockers. Yep. X equals 1? One? 1. Oh, no, he cast... Um, oh, he's going to cast Vault Scourge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he yeah, cast the Foundry Inspector blockers. already. Everything yes. makes sense. Oh my gosh. Blow up that mox. Eat that mox. Eat the mox. Yep. Chomp. That mox couldn't be activated, of course, with. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> but, but still, even, you know, you got to hedge. If Karn dies, you want that mox in the graveyard rather than on the battlefield. So even though Alec could have gotten that Mycosynth Lattice back, Cody is still pretty choked out on resources. Yes, yes. Karn is very good. <laughs> <laughs> Karn's a hell of a card. As many times as I have minus two Karn, I've never once noticed the or in exile. Yes. Would hire, you would highly prioritize a relic if you have Karn or Scrabbling Claws? Yes. Yes. And I know Absolutely. Mark took Phyrexian Furnace, Furnace late in yes. the draft. Now, do you think Mark forgot about Scrabbling Claws or no? We, we actually, actually spoke, spoke about that. that. Okay. He specifically wanted Phyrexian Furnace because if the reanimator, if the reanimator player opens on Entomb mm. because of the uh, order of the graveyard, you're right. Then the, you get the creature. The creature goes under the Entomb. Yes. yes. That's yes. very good. So Furnace was a calculated choice by yes. Mark. That's so interesting. It was. Because Furnace, again, going back to middle school, is a card I think of in that format, yes. right? Because that was a, a graveyard hate card that, that my wife put in her in her sideboard, just because, you know, you got to have something. Oh, there's lots of echo in my mic. Oh, I have dear. no idea how to fix that. I don't know either. Maybe I'm talking too loud? Or maybe I'm talking too loud. Could be either. Yeah, he can just... Oh. We're both loud. That's probably yeah, it. Fair enough. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> Echo on both mics. Yeah. It seems to be worse for me. Okay. So it looks like... Just talking softer. Yeah. Well, welcome to our ASMR stream <laughs> for the Vintage Rotisserie Draft. Do you have any paper I can crumple up, Jeff? This is public <laughs> oh. I mean, this is this is the... If, if Magic were on public radio, oh it would be boy. VRD, right? Oh because yeah. this is the classy format. Absolutely. Oh, well. So here's liquid here's metal coating. coating. Do we sell so bath water? Ways. Yes, we do. For only $40. <laughs> uh, for, for just $40, you can get a, a bottle of our bath water in a, in, in a, a logo tote bag provided by St. Louis Vintage Rotisserie Draft. So Vault Scourge comes in. And uh, deals the damage. And in the upkeep, oh, Alec will uh, make that into an artist. Oh, wait, it doesn't wait die. hang on. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't die. die. It, it can't be activated. It doesn't, okay, we're, we're fixing it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Bathwater and feet picks, yes. Sideboard guides, no. That's no. on our Patreon. You gotta, you gotta that's work for that. Right. <laughs> we won't, that's not a one off sell. You gotta, yeah, you gotta be at the $15 level. Absolutely. <laughs> Premium patrons only. <laughs> Join our Discord. Uh, <laughs> look at this. Oh, man. I feel like this game is just done. Yeah, Alec has really got Cody in a stranglehold here. Even though Alec is really only a ta able to attack with the Vault Scourge every turn, Cody just can't take any actions here that are meaningful. Yeah. Under under the gun with the, the Tormod script, he's, he's just stuck. Gonna see Hangerback Walker jumping in here. Yep. Oh, there's something else. What's I think it's a. Oh, I think this is a block it. tap. Yeah. Make two. It dies. Make two thopters. That's it. Yep. I dare say that's game. Boys. Chainer dies, and I don't see a way out for Cody here. Neither do I. He's lost his discard outlet. He's lost his reanimation 
uh, activation. He's down to one land for the rest of the game, and that is that swamp. Yeah, that's it. That's it. He's he's stuck. But if I were him, mm -hmm. I would sit there <laughs> and take my lumps. Now, is this because you just played against Alec and had it, to had to deal with this BS? I I plead the fifth. Right? <laughs> okay, well I'll have, give you I'll give you amnesty on that one. Have, That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, this is not a fun situation to no. be in if you're Cody. This does not look like the place you want to be. And Alec is really outperforming my personal expectations. I, you know, I, I said some stuff about his draft that could uh, could have been construed as negative okay. theoretically. <laughs> <laughs> and here's Mem Knight, or or Meme Knight, as, Meme Knight. <laughs> yeah, as they call it. Oh. And Here's the here's his turn. Liquid metal coating plus Make Karn equals strip mine. Yep. Oh yeah. Make something happen. What do you got, Cody? This is it. This is the final frontier. Yeah. I don't see it. I don't think there's anything in his deck. Land. Use his dark ritual. Or oh, right. and oh, the torment script is still there. Yeah. But. Yeah, no, you just fire it off here. Yeah. You say no, thank you. It would have had to be something, yeah, something like land, cabal ritual. I don't even know. Yeah, I, I, I can't. There's nothing I can even think of. Yeah, given the f so how he has so few cards, I think that's it. No. Uh, there's the junk diver. Alec goes to his sideboard here, looks for an appropriate Karn target. Uh, I mean. I think I would just liquid metal coating and blow up the swamp, but yeah. Alec wants to end this game the traditional way. Goes for the cranial plating, attaches it to Vault Scourge, and just says, "Hey, life total, deal with it." I think that that's a mistake. Not it, it shouldn't come back to bite it's an him. yeah, it's an incredibly low value there mistake. And there's the handshake. And then Alec just leaves his hand out there. I'm not sure what he's looking for, but he already got the handshake. This match is over. That is 2-0 for Alec. He, he was just like, do you see this board? Yeah. This this board's day. No, but You're done. Like, look, look. Do you, don't you just want to shake my hand again because of how, how beautiful my board is? I understand. So that is a, a quick, well, not quick. That is a, a slightly excruciating 2-0 yeah. for Alec. But the first game was, was really, really rough. And that second game... Uh, was over for a bit. He was writing through a CD <laughs> anti -card. Anti -card. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, like, if, if you have a problem with your anti card, you can call Demonic Attorney at. Yeah. <laughs> He'll take care of it for you. We got Alec coming in. All right. All right. Fantastic. The man is coming in. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Jeff. Yeah, it was nice time. having you here. Thanks for having me in the booth. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Good luck in the rest of the draft. Nice. Go Mystic Forge some people out. Oh. Well, I want to see it again. I'm going to try. Good. Uh, Avi, we are going to tell you about his line. That's or your line. That's why we're bringing Alec in. Hey, Alec. Uh, nobody's mad at you. We just have a question. No, listen, listen, listen. So we just read Karn the Great Creator, and we found something interesting out, and we wanted to sort of run it by you. Did you know that Karn the Great Creator gets cards not just from your sideboard, but also from Exile? Did you know that you could have Tormod scripted yourself and gotten your Mycos and Vladis back? <laughs> we're here with the facts on this stream. We're here to we're here to bring the facts, even if the facts are, are, are hard news. I mean, you did win that match. You did win it pretty handily, but uh, through, through many misplays. Yeah, but I mean, I think I, I saw that one. What what else do you feel like you could have improved upon in that matchup? Uh, I didn't use my mana from City of Traders. Mm, yes. Um, to put more counters on my hanger back walker. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I was I was confused about I that. I should have when I blocked the chainer. I should have tapped my steel overseer to put a counter on it. Mm, yep. You could have gotten a, another uh, another thopter of value out of that. Yep. But at that point, I think Listen, the game like, was pretty much like over. Jeff said. 
I'm bad at magic. He's <laughs> really good at drawing. Well, but it sounds like this kind of deck is the kind of deck that you have a uh, some decent experience with. Jeff was saying you were playing something like this in a in a vintage league. Is that right? Uh, yeah, Moonbase was doing a a proxy tournament nice. for uh, vintage, and I had proxied up a hardened scales. Misha's Workshop kind of deck. Oh, okay. I had mashed the two together, and the reason I picked Rite of Passage is for the memes. <laughs> because I like the idea of going infinite with Walking Ballista. Okay, yup. That makes sense now. Walking Ballista, Hardened Scales, Rite of Passage. You go. You get infinite plus one, plus one counters. That'll do it. So that explains that. If they understand where I'm going, they'll have to waste a removal spell on it. If not, I get away with it. <laughs> Seems like a win-win to me. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, well, it sounds like we're going to... You haven't been in the booth yet, right? I have not. Well, we're going to keep you here, and I'm going to swap out with uh, with my good friend Alex. Let's do it. And we're going we're gonna to see our next match between Steven and Elaine. Welcome to the booth. I'm on Thanks. It. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. It's been a fun day. I'm going to reset the uh, overlay real quick, guys. We got Steven in a lane playing. Uh, Steven is on. Where's Steven on? Steven's on that Abzan list. Uh, kind of a Spazier combo. Yeah. And Elaine is on White Control. Old Faithful. Is my headset on now? Yes, it is. As I was saying, Elaine versus Steven, uh, Vizier versus Control. Uh, yeah, so that was a pretty good match you had there. That was some beats you were laying. Who did you lose to earlier? Uh, I lost to Brandon, who was playing... That ridiculous... Sultai... Uh, it basically just a Nick Fit kind of yeah, deal. Yeah, it's... Like, he's just jammed a bunch of stuff together. together. Bunch of good things that that good to go together. Um, I'm updating names right now. Yes. I had a, a misplay there against him. I don't think it cost me the game or, or the match because I, I think he would have had me anyway. But I've got Blightsteel on my deck, and his one of his win cons is milling. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> um, and I I think I scooped prematurely, but I think he would have had me. I think anyway. he would have gotten it somehow. Yeah, I just he had way too much stuff on board and. I was doing the math, uh, trying to attack him. I think I would have left him at one life, and he would have just had me any anyway, and I would have drawn the Blight Steel because it would have been the last card in my deck. Gotcha. All right, well, it looks like they've already started. Uh, I honestly think Elaine's probably... Well, it's going to be very similar to how Steve played Mark, which Mark ended up winning with like a Fairy Conclave beatdown plan. Uh, that's a survival of the fittest, though, Piers. Uh, it'll be a pretty close game. Um... Elaine has a lot of answers, a lot of ability to wipe. She also is one of the few people that is actually packing board wipes this game. Uh, it'll be interesting. I think, though, Elaine will probably take it. But that's just pre-predictions, so I commentator's curse, as always. So we're probably going to be uh, looking at Steven taking the win. Well, I don't know much about a lot of the cards that are in Steven's deck. However, I play the Vizier combo in Modern. I was going to say, I've the played against matchup, you. Uh, the control matchup is not good. Yeah, I was going to say, I've uh, played against you on Vizier combo before. Yes. I was playing Pox, small Pox. Yes. Uh, and it was great. You beat me off of a top decked collective company with zero cards in hand to uh, get your combo, and it felt very skillful. I think you very much deserved that game three victory. But no, yeah. Of course. Of yeah. Course. I, like I said, I'm bad at magic. Bad at magic. Really at love. Um... Better, be, better to be lucky than good. That's, that's the rule, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, better to be lucky than good. It was pretty cool. I really enjoyed it. Let me tell you. Uh, but yeah. All right, and we're back, and we're updated. So it looks like we already have resolved permanence. We have a council's judgment exiling off all the pieces. Uh, I was looking at Steven's deck, and 
he really doesn't have a lot of redundancy. He has the ability to tutor a lot, but the few pieces that he has, it's pretty important. Like he only has Malira and Vizier. He only has Murderous Redcap, Kitchen Finks. Uh, his only sack outlets are Vizier, Seer, and Altar of Dementia. And like all these cards are good, and any combination of these cards can win the game, but there's only a couple of each of them. Like, yeah, I, unlike the modern deck, which it, you're it much more familiar. Like, yeah, I've got a lot of redundancy in the deck, and it felt like he spread himself too thin. He, he, yeah. looked, he looked at several combos instead of trying to focus on one general combo. Appreciate you, chat, keeping me honest, because I can't spell. Uh, yeah, it it feels uh, yeah it feels like yeah as you were saying it's very thinly spread like it's very fragile, which is I think why Mark was able to beat him because Mark has almost zero win conditions but he was just able to keep the proper permanence off the board and there was really nothing much he could do. Uh, Steven doing an aggressive card flipping with that sacking of the Viserys here, really making it known that that gets to scry. Probably uh, I can't spell double fried. It's a fun fact. Is that true name, Nemesis? It is a true name. Oh, no, that's a thought of Adele. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, 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 I don't know if there's really, honestly, any great targets in uh No, I took Steven's his walking blister. He complained about that a lot. It doesn't seem very good. That seems like... So it's automatically kill a walking blister. Yeah. This thought of Adele hits, kills that, your walking blister. I'm just saying that's not what he has, because that was the only artifact that he would have wanted. Ooh, Halen, my name is not W-O-R-T-H, but everyone thought it was growing up. Um, Jace Rins Prodigy... I don't know, it's already looking a little rough. I'm seeing a lot of pretty important permanents for Steven in the graveyard, uh, either through exiling effects or just getting countered. I mean, Survival of the Fittest is a nice card, though. It will help him find every piece he needs, but it is a mana investment. And only is running cards like Mana Leak, so that could end up poorly. True name is in Mark's deck. Yes, it's a Thada Adele. But yeah. So this is your first time doing Vintage Rotisserie? Yes. Enjoying it? I am. It's pretty I, hard, I, right? Yeah, definitely. I've, and I've, I've been pretty excited. I know Eric had uh, let out a an article on Channel Fireball, and I had read that a bunch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was prepare. a good article. Yeah. I had watched some of the, the past videos, and since since I was invited, I, I was like, Mud's probably what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go straight into the artifact plan. There's just so many different ways that you can go with it, mm -hmm. um, as you see with me and... Um, Blyden having both yeah, yeah. having very Pretty artifact centric difference. decks yeah. does survival ever work out that well I've never had luck with it in cube it's tough, it's a build around, it's super powerful um, it finds everything like that's the thing, it finds every one shot it finds every win condition I, don't know, I think it's worth it, but like you are sacrificing a resource for it, you're using mana and another creature card even if it's not the right creature card in that regard did she tap Caracas? She did, to bounce her Vrin's Prodigy to oh. get around the Murderous Red Cap trigger. Beautiful. Yeah, it was a very nice play. Uh, I can po tell you my name is spelled W-E-R-T-H, Halen. At least I think it is. Thank you for asking. All right, so thought of Adele, block Murderous Red Cap trade. One to your face. Yeah, one to your face. That was a nice play with the Jace. I did like that. Here's the issue now. There's just so much stuff in his graveyard, and now that the red cap has a minus one minus one counter on it, due to the persist, there's some not aggressive much tapping from Steven. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, discarding Crater Hoof. Now it should be noted, Stephen has Finale of Devastation, which at, can grab cards out of the graveyard. Yes. So he has a rebuy on anything that hits his graveyard if it resolves, obviously. Yes. Uh, he also has uh, E-Witness to get back the finale devastation when it gets countered. Um, uh, however, yeah. Devoted Druid in exile. Devoted Druid is in exile. Uh, so he has a Malira. That's his only other piece of that part of the combo left. Elaine is 2-0 and Steven is 1-1. Thank you. I wonder how it was exiled. Was it Council's Judgment? Uh, the first one was... Uh, swords hit the Noble. Yeah, the second one was Council's Judgment. Then. Okay. I... I don't think he no understands the interaction, then. You can uh, activate Devoted Druid's ability to put minus one, minus one counters on it in response to their things, so yeah. it just goes to your graveyard. Uh, I've like, seen it happen. I do it a lot. It's pretty fun. Lots of Path to Exiles get negated that way. And they say, well, you don't get your land, and I'm like, but I get to keep my thing. Yeah. 
what I like doing is flashing in. I don't know. I just you're playing. You play one of my least favorite decks in modern. I'll be honest, but uh, it's a really good deck. That's why I probably don't like it. I lose to it all the time. Uh, it's very strong. It just plays uh, my boogeyman card. What up, Coco? I love that card. That's so yeah, sure. Funny enough, I'm only running two of them in my main board right now. All right, Merge Red Cap, Rin back, looting, doing Jace things. Uh, I mean, that's a win condition at the end of the day. There was a really amazing game that Mark Caterberg had versus Steve Hagen on camera where he recurred a Blue Sun Zenith. Uh, he basically drew every card out of his library and then started recurring a Blue Sun Zenith on zero uh, to keep shuffling it back into his library That's as beautiful. he laid the beat down with the Fairy Conclave. That is beautiful. Yeah. It was very extra. Main board? What is main board? Does survival ever work? Hesh, I a little confused on the question. Sure, sorry, in my seventy five. Oh yeah, you're seventy five. Oh yeah, collector company, yeah, yeah. Sorry. That's in more so. Seventy five. Yeah. Oh man. Well it's great to see uh, even top tier vintage rotisserie drafts. Sometimes just don't read the card. AKA I was watching that and I was listening to Blyden and uh, Eric on my headphones ch chatting. They're like, he doesn't see the line. <laughs> like, and it was so funny. Because chat was like, oh, he could do this. And he's like, can he? He can. Oh, God. And I was just watching. I was like, you're going to be very mad when yeah. I talk to you about this in a few minutes. All right, looks like Jace has flipped. That's uh, going to be problematic. It's really hard to kill a flip to Jace when you only have one creature on board. And uh, it is a win condition at the end of the day. I had to tell them to read Karn. Yes, he did. You're right. We Hey, I wasn't there, but they did tell you that, Chad. Or, oh, uh, Popo had. Okay. Um, so, looks like that was a flashback swords to plowshares with the Jace. And that's going to make it really hard for Steven to establish any amount of game control. Now, what did it exile? Uh, uh, swords to plowshares, exiling... Did he... Was it the Malira? It should or? be the red cap, I believe. But I don't see the red cap. It might just be underneath. It's in his graveyard. It's in the graveyard? Huh. I see the swords is in exile. It's either the Malira or the it's red cap, because those are the only two cards that I think it really could have been. I just don't know which one. But one of those should be in exile, yes. I'll stop play if uh, it gets interacted with. I wonder what he has in his hand. He went and got the Eternal Witness with the survival. Mm -hmm. But he left three. Uh, is Unless that's four mana, because I know he has Coco in his list. Yeah, he does have Coco. Unless that's four mana. I, that's I, a Vizier of Remedies. Uh... Yes. He's got, he's got Eternal Witness in his hand. Yeah. And he's got three mana open, but he didn't cast anything. He just passed the turn. Interesting. I mean, he does have uh, Survival of the Fittest, so he might be activating that and then going for something later. He doesn't really have any protection. I was really surprised with this draft uh, how little, compared to the draft I participated in, the first vintage STL, uh, how little interaction was honestly drafted. Like, there was a lot of streamlined combo. There were two control decks, I will say that. But, like, as far as, like the quote-unquote mid-range decks or the decks that are like trying to not str like win instantaneously off of a two-card combo almost zero interaction like built in it was like people just focusing on their own thing everyone just went sh straight for their thing and nobody argued it was uh, source target and necrotic thank you which was sacked in response appreciate that i was very tempted to pick we a were not looking when that happened so we were very confused as to the board state Say that again, sir. I was I was very tempted to take one of the Tron lands to see if people would snipe one of them from me, just to try to get some interaction going. Just to see. Um, yeah, that might not have been the greatest idea, but V click and scoop. All right. I'm here for the memes. You're uh, memeing it up. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that looks like we have Elaine taking the first one. Uh, I saw, but it's crazy because like Lightning Bolt didn't get drafted. You know, like very no red basically got drafted this format right um i thought it was very interesting 
And I kind of wish I was drafting this one because, man, I would have loved it if no one was drafting interaction except for me. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I'll pop I'll... out removal all day. Yeah. That clique Narset lock. Yeah, that's pretty rude having a Narset out and cliquing somebody. Like, oh, yes, yeah. you can draw a card. Oh. Sorry, bud. Yeah, draw step. Yeah. Um, looks like we're seeing Acid Rain for Melane Chow coming in. Uh, that's four mana. Destroy all forests. And then we're seeing Choke in a Prowling Seraphod. Veil of Summer. I didn't catch the other one, though. Uh, it's basically the same package. It's just uncounterable or protection. That he put in against Mark. Faithless Looting was drafted. Yes, it was drafted. But come on, that's not really red. But uh, alright, I'm going to say this is going to be a tougher matchup for Elaine in the next one. She does have a lot of spot interaction though to deal with the Prowling Cephrophod, and uh, but if he resolves a choke, the game's over as far as I'm concerned. She does not have any number of non-basic blue sources. Nope. Um, she did get... Did she get both Nature's Chant and Disenchant? She just got Nature's Chant. Just Nature's Chant. And she didn't put it in. She didn't see anything for it. Well, she saw the Survival of the Fittest, but there's no artifacts, and she doesn't know about anything else. Even though it is open deck list, you're not really given a bunch of time to look at. Cat Snake. Mm. That's what it is. The Cat Snake. Oh, yeah. The Cat Snake. It's the best. Purple Hat. I remember when that was released and everyone was like, oh, it's a long cat. And I was like, the memes around that card were just like, long cat coming in hard. Ruin your blue player's day. And I was like, what's happening? Like, internet, stop. One long boy. You see? I mean, it's a 4-3. It's a 4-3. It's for the beats. For the beats. All about the beats plan. God. And only like the worst limited format of all time. Oh, yeah. It's like, hey, there's this mechanic called Exert. You're going to hate it. <laughs> this Extra Windwalker or whatever it was, the 2-2, two, two, that when you exerted it, became a 3-3 three, three and flew. Yes. For two mana. He's like, did you know this is your pack it, one, pick on. one? It was a 4-4. Four, four. Oh, it was a 4-4 four, four when I did it, yeah. It was a 1-3 yeah. and it got plus 3, plus 1. Oh, no, that was the trample one. That was the, no, that was the rare. Wait, was that the rare? There was a bunch of white Exert cards that would just end your life. <laughs> Hated that. Hey, you got GP top 16 in that format. Hey, man, I got, like, GP top 16 in um, the Shadows over Innistrad. I actually had to play control that format. I did it with a uh, Soul Tide list. My best creature, 6-6 six, six Trampler. Had one of them. Recurred it four times in the finals. <laughs> Dude, my opponent was done with me. He was like, please stop. I was like, what, you can't, you can't beat a, you can't beat a zombie? Pig. It was like that stupid zombie pig. <laughs> when it had um, delirium, it got trample. It was like a yes. common. That was my top end. Beautiful. Are those two White Walkers playing? I don't understand the reference. Uh... Oh, people asked me about times I've been ranched, like completely destroyed. Uh, and I used to play 8-rack. No, unironically, like I had modern, I had every card you could play in black, white, and blue, basically, for any like variant of Esper or Orzhov or Azorius, anything that controlled mid range aggro. And I would go and still play 8 rack. That's how much I loved 8 rack. Um, and there You're came a point guy. where in my meta, yeah, I'm that guy. Uh, there came, it's a burn deck. What you got a problem with burn? Uh, there came a point where I showed up and I cast a Raven's Crime on turn one against my opponent and he discarded a Loxodon Smiter. And I looked at him and was like, hey man, did you pre-sideboard this? He's like, no, 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 no. I'm on Abzan, uh, Wiltleaf, Wiltleaf Abzan. <laughs> and then I played my next guy and he was also on Wiltleaf Abzan. Uh, of the 10 people that showed up, four of them were playing Wiltleaf Abzan because they were tired of playing against 8 rack. So that was a time I got ranched. That was a time, um, where I warped the meta ever so slightly around me. And and the time I topped that Coco. Huh? Yeah, you topped that Coco, that's fine. That's <laughs> Somehow that hasn't warped the meta enough. That's a V click on three on draw step. Beautiful. Beautiful. Four mana. Using three of it. And we are gonna play crafter that. Is that a play crafter? Yes. It looks like a play crafter. 
Yeah, honestly, the two decks I was scared of uh, were Steven's deck and Jeff's deck. Steven's deck because he can, he's got the combo so he can race me, but he also, if he just plays a bunch of creatures, yeah, it's a little hard for me to get through that. Yeah, it's just like, oh god. Oh, you'll eventually do it. Uh, yes, Hour of Devastation was way better than Amonkhet. It's not hard to be better than Amonkhet, as it is the the opposite of the bee's knees. But it gave us Vizier of Remedies. The opposite of the bee's knees. <laughs> uh, just as a heads up, um, oh wait, never mind. That's up to date. I have not fallen behind. All right, we have a devoted... No, what is that? Oh, was that a bribery on Devoted Druid? Yes, it was. Or tre treachery, maybe? Yeah, it was treachery, because Mark is playing bribery. That's powerful magic, Bob. You don't see that every day. And that's a... Oh, move, Cotton. Choke getting... Appears to be miscalced. Unfortunate. You hate As you can see, Steven, do Arthur meme fist. Squeezing it tight. The aggressive flipping of the cards. Was it miscalculation then? Yeah, it had to be something else. It was the other one that. Uh, this yes. Whiff. Did she whiff? Did she whiff? I mean, I saw cards, but I didn't see her take. He has them. e witness. He could do this again, but it probably goes. Yeah, I think he's gonna play it again. You are correct. It's because they're not permanents. They're just spells. Uh, Alright, did not get choke with that E-Witness. A little surprised. Narset taken down. I saw a Monastery Mentor. I can't take that, though, with the Narset. It's a Jace the Mind Sculptor. That closes up the game. She took Mana Leak on Narset on the first one. Thank you. Appreciate that. Plays Jace. Brainstorm. Yeah, never mind. I don't see Steven coming back from this, I'll be honest. I mean, the Narset doesn't do much. Like, he doesn't really have extra card draw. But just a Jace that's pretty much going to stick around for a couple of turns will run away with this game. Two walkers and stealing your creature is... It's a lot kinda, of, a yeah, lot of value. Lot. Ponder... Another land. Flooding out a little bit. Three forests. Probably not playing a Leovold troop. No, uh, Serpapard. Serpapard. Damn. Uh, Plague Crafter. Gets in at Jace, down to one. That was a good play. It didn't block with the devoted tree. I guess he, it's more dangerous in his graveyard, honestly. Yeah, I'd rather keep it. Yeah. I cannot see that because of the glare. But it got countered. Necroticus. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mana leaked. There's another reason not to keep it in the graveyard. Yeah. Because it just instantly combos. little talking about mana. More conversations about how you tapped what. little rewind. They realized that there wasn't enough black on his board, so they're backing up to a point. He already knew there was a mana leak, so there's not any problems there. But Necrotic Goose and the other black. Board, he can't cast it. There was, he had three black instead. He had two black instead of three. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Just, uh, yes, uh, Stephen Hagen drafted 
Plague Engineer with his final pick. 45th pick, pa uh, person 8. Uh, that was a little rewind because that was actually just not possible. There was not enough black uh, mana able to be generated to do that line of play, so they just rewound it. All the information was known due to the mana leak being revealed by uh, the Narset earlier. Right. So everything's good. That's part of the uh, don't be a dick REL we're playing at right now. Right. And now we're seeing a bit of You're right. He did get uh, Crafter. Uh, no one got Plague Engineer. Sorry. But he said he uh, missed on that as well, I think. Gravestorm. A little bit of ordeal. Do you remember... Yeah. Thank you. So have you ever played against Bitter Ordeal outside of a uh, cube? No. Uh, it's a great card. Love it. It's not a good card. Uh, Honestly, I couldn't even tell you what it does. Uh, Bitter Ordeal. It is got one of the coolest mechanics of all time. Gravestorm. For every permanent that enters the graveyard uh, this turn, it's going... Do you know Sadistic Sacrament? Yes. That's the one with Kicker, right? Yeah, that like, yeah. can take like 15 cards out of your library or whatever. So search target player's library for a card, remove that card from the game, that player shuffles his or her library. It does deck damage. That's a good way to put it. Gravestorm. So, uh, I've been seeing it get used against these control decks to actually pretty amazing effect because they run so few win conditions. That's like, oh, Gravestorm of three, take out your V-click, your man land, and your Planeswalker that actually has a win condition stable to it. Go ahead. And there's like, uh, well, I still have card draw, I guess. <laughs> like, yeah. Good job on card draw. You're going to deck yourself first. Have fun. Mark's got that covered, though. Yeah, you would almost certainly have to draft... If you wanted to do mill in this format, uh, like an extra pate or surgical extraction effect just to get around the Eldrazi. 20 persistent petitioners. Come on. No one's going to tell you no next time. Apparently not. Yeah. I didn't get told no today at all. All right, well, that's a mentor, and it's going to go unchecked here, it looks like. So this game's about to end very quickly. That would have been one of the first cards I grabbed. Yes, um, there is a Helm Rest in Peace combo at the table as well. But those are just like two card combos, like S A, B. Steven has Leyline and Helm. Yeah, and then uh, Brandon has Servant Grindstone, which are just A, B combos. Yep. Fate Ceiling, that was a That's finale, finale of Devastation. Devastation yep. Yeah, this game's basically over next turn. She doesn't care about that card. Leave it there. Uh, I was as well. Uh, people don't give white or red enough respect in this format. I'm very excited to play Avon Mind Sensor against all these wishes and uh, tutor effects going back around. Back to back, everyone just started grabbing wishes. I thought it was hilarious. I was so ridiculous, so early too. I was like, what's happening here? These cards aren't good. Well, since since Mark was a last minute addition, he was like, I don't, you know what, I don't even know what I'm gonna do. I think I'm just gonna grab every counter spell I can until I run out of things to grab. That's fine. I accept. I mean, he literally won a game with a fairy conclave. Like, his opponent was at 18 life. He's like, I'm gonna do it. Well, you know it's bad when you're running out of tokens for your uh, mentor. Probably not going well for your opponent. Definitely not. Yeah. Uh, Lays beats. Uh, down to 12 life. I don't think there's any way out of this. 
Uh, not in his deck. He doesn't have a board wipe. Cord gets countered. Yep, and game. That is Elaine with the Vic. All right. Well, guys, that was a pretty quick one. I was trying to pull up a meme card, but I couldn't spell it correctly. I was going to put Lost and Drown in Sorrow. Drown in Sorrow. There we go. Well, Stephen Hagen has Drowned in Sorrow, and uh, Elaine moves on to 3-0. and Stephen down to 1-2. and uh, Kind of a beatdown, honestly. Just Stephen just never really got his footing set, and Elaine had a lot of good answers to a lot of what he was trying to do, especially right. with the exile effects. And he just doesn't have enough redundancy. Yeah, that's the thing. His combo is so thin, um, which honestly would work against most players here because they don't have any removal or interaction. Right. But Elaine and Mark are two of the only players at the table who uh, actually have the ability to like take a single permanent and say, no, that's not going to work, right. which uh, just worked out for him. I was really surprised when Steven had drafted uh, Malira. I mean, it's a combo piece, so at it, least. If you have Devoted Druid and Malira, you, that, that doesn't work. It's a Nambo. It it's doesn't work. Oh, man. He slapped a Nambo in his deck. Yeah. Do what you got to do. All right, guys. Well, uh, next match is going to be Brandon uh, and Mark and Cody Owens and uh, Eric Levine are going to be taking over commentary. You know, actually, I will be staying for this one because this is my awesome. Eric, cool. Uh, all right, Cody Owens will be joining us in commentary in just a second, and I'll get uh, Brandon and Mark set up as well. Thanks, Alec. All right, guys. Let's see if I can spell their names right today. Hey, Mike should be muted. Do you know records? Gotcha. this work? Barely. God, I hate this. Alright guys, we're going to have Mark on Mono Blue Control versus Brandon on Sultai Nickfit. Uh, would that be a good one? Have you played th that deck yet? Yeah, um, I don't know what you'd describe it. It's kind of a pile. It's a fun looking pile, but a pile nonetheless. Alright. Brandon is 1 and 2, and Caterberg is also 1 and 2. Good to see. And they're shuffling up right now, resolving mulligans. So, have you played against either of these guys today? I would imagine. Uh, you got it to resolve as well. Can you hear me now? Got okay. it to resolve. Okay. Cool. Well, congrats on that. Yep. Um, I mean, Mark is a pretty bad magic player, let's be honest. I mean, I wouldn't say he's bad. Pretty uh pretty well known scrub. He's calling it Nick Fit now. Okay, so Brandon is officially on Nick Fit, no longer on Eric Levine's anime club. <laughs> Your mic is muted. Well, we fixed it, I think. Okay, yeah. Yep. And we're beginning. Yep. Island Pass. We're gonna see a lot of that today. Yes, especially from the mono blue player, yes. Uh, looks like 
looks like Swamp, Swamp Pass, Pass into Island Pass. Wow, very exciting. Exciting magic here, folks. Uh, so I think this is going to be a tough one for Brandon. He's got a lot of like kind of key pivot cards to revolve around. He's got a lot of A plus B combos. Right. Uh, he's got Crucible. I don't. Game see count him. is updated. Okay. Uh, yeah, but it's just like a lot of very important A B cards that uh, Mark will have a lot of ability to interact with on the stack. Right. Like, he's not going to counter this. He's going to counter whatever he has he next. Yes. Because, yeah. But uh, it's going to be tough for him. But uh, I don't know. Brandon drafted a really ridiculous deck, and he, he honestly it's... was going for a bitter ordeal. Was that one of and, his win comps? And Steven, and Steven ac it. accidentally sniped it? Like, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, it happened. It did happen. And he was not happy about it when we were drafting, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, <laughs> I heard from the other side. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting. So, this is probably a pretty tough Demonic Tutor, because he has so many things he could possibly get. Right. He could get Corsair Kerfix, he could get Fastbond, he could get Oracle of Moldiah if he has Ramp for it. He could literally go in any direction. He also has to know, though, like, there's a... 60% right. chance it's probably it not going to resolve. resolve. Yeah, right. like, knowing what he's doing on the setup, it's just like, eh, this probably won't work. Right. He could get, like, a Dark Depths, and then, like, maybe... That can't be answered, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It could be a possibility. Because, like, you're looking at him as he like, goes through these cards, and, like, this goes all over the place. It's like, oh, yeah, here's a Fast Bond next to my right. Emrakul, next to my Dark Depths, <laughs> next to my right. Mox Diamond. Right, it's just... It's basically... Demog Tutor did go pretty late, yes, um... Yeah, uh, Tutor's... T well, Demonic Tutor went, if I'm going to remember correctly, third round. third round, which yes. is about right. Like, early, late second round, early third round, as I believe, where that card, I think, has been going in traditional. Mm -hmm. uh, once people get their mana fixing and, like, their, like, insane win cons, it's usually after the, right. like, the was... irreplaceable con win cons. True. I was actually kind of sad I didn't get it, but he, pay he picked it right before I was... Yeah, I was going to say, you were right next to him on it. Yeah. I don't know. I think the uh, Vampiric and Imperial Seal I got are fine. So. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's good for what you're doing, especially because like just instant speed them. They're basically the same. Right. <laughs> Taking a while to resolve this. Yeah, computer. for sure. Looks like he's going for Mind Twist. Mind Twist. Okay. Which against the control deck is honestly pretty, a good call. Pretty good. Yeah. If he can generate some extra mana here on the next turn. Mm -hmm. That would be really good. I don't see any ramp in his hand. It looks like a Titleist Tracker. I guess he or Mind Policy. Twists for two this turn and then tries Titleist Tracking next turn and then make a land drop. Yeah. Probably not like the worst. He also has Leovold that might be castable, which... Mm -hmm. So, there's a lot of different ways he could go. Yeah. It's a uh, Fairy Conclave from Kater Mark? Yeah, it was a Fairy Conclave, okay. yes. I can't really see with the glare. Yeah, the glare can get a little tough on this side of the camera. Alright, gemstone mine. mine. Pretty good land, I'm told. Pretty good. So I think he's going to mine twist here. Um, no, two mana. He's not mine twisting then. Oh. Three, okay. He's going tra tracker. tracker. I guess he knows that... Oh, it's getting countered. I, I can't tell exactly spell. what it is. I think it's counter spell. Er, it's not counter spell. I can't tell what that is. It's miscalculation. That one is. Yeah. Okay. Um, he Mind knows spell. that Tyler's Tracker is pretty hard for a control pretty, deck. To be. Pretty hard for him to deal with, yes. Yeah. But, I mean, he also has Leovold floating around as well in his hand. Both of those spells are going to get countered, like, no matter what. But pretty, Yeah, I'm pretty sure. At this point, if I'm, Mar if I'm uh, Brandon, I kind of just say go. I might play Mind Twist because I know it's going to eat a counter spell. Cause right. Because it has to. Eat a counter spell, yes. But. Yeah. Nope, that is. That's channel. Channel, okay. So he's going to Mind Twist him for his hand first to clear him out, and then he's going to play something else. Yeah. 
So that's Painter Servant. Mm -hmm. So this is pretty brutal, because if Painter Servant resolves, Mark is in danger of losing the game at any second. With, right, um, if Grindstone resolves. If Grindstone resolves. He lets it happen, okay. Okay. Read the bait. Basically, he was going to mind twist him for his hand if he would have countered that. Right. And he's still... Let's see, he's paying three more life. He still might... Crucible, okay. He's really trying to bait it, because he knows that Mark doesn't have, like, the world's fastest clock in the world. Yeah, also, if Crucible resolves now, he has another source of colored mana that he can really do whatever he wants with, because the gemstone mine really has no cost being tapped. Right, right, right. Um, but it also still leaves a counter spell up for that mine twist. Yeah, so he's played around it. Good for him. Mm -hmm. But still, Crucible... I don't know, it's, it's tough to see someone resolve a Crucible against you. It's like, oh, God. It is. Um, I don't believe Brandon got Strip Mine, though. So he did not. So that's always good. There's a counter spell. Yeah, uh, I mean, Mark did a good job of like playing patient. Right. Ooh, Archmage's Charm. Archmage's Charm, draw a card? Draw two. Yeah. Because okay. he had double counter as well there. It would have been tough to resolve it still. It would. Uh, looks like a mystical tutor in Mark's hand as well. Mm hmm. Okay. See what he goes and gets. This is a very Caterberg style deck. <laughs> it really is. He likes blue for sure. Mm hmm. He's going to go get Time Walk. Okay. Generate some mana advantage. Seems pretty good. Yep. I mean, that gemstone mine now is very free to abuse. It is. Um. That was upkeep draws. Up upkeep, okay. I wasn't sure if that was upkeep or his turn. But nope. Makes... Gonna explore. Technically, okay. Swing with the fairy conclave. Yeah, I mean... That oh, channel, yeah, that's that right. channel did a lot of damage. He's right. at nine I now. I forgot I had flying. Yep, that's land for turn. Looks like spell pierce and. It's gonna be really tough to resolve a spell from here. It is, yes. Mark's got seven open mana, mm -hmm. which you never want to see against a blue player, or like playing against a blue player. Yes, Mark's time locks have been pretty boring, I would say, in this format. <laughs> Did two damage, played a land. Yeah, usually when you see time walk, the person usually wins. <laughs> and close to. Or has the potential to. There's that Leofold. Mystic Con. So this was a slight misplay on his part. Is Mystic Confluence a mana leak or a... Uh, no, it's just counter target spell. For two mana or three mana? Five. Uh, you choose three. Yes, yeah, but like, what's the mode? Uh, it, might be, it might be a mana leak, actually. Yeah, it is a leak. Yeah. Yeah, mana leak. Yeah, it's three. Okay, cool. I was saying like he didn't play his land drop yet. All right, that's a Library of Alexander... Alexandria, it's going to be... Count unless you take three. Yep, yep, you're right, guys. Uh, as an Alter of the Brood, which I don't really know how that combos in his deck, but he drafted it, and he's playing it, so I assume it's doing something scary. I mean, 40 cards... I agree with you. I think Library is a really hard card to use in this format. Um, I think Strip Mine and Wasteland are just better. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Blast Zone's probably better. <laughs> like no, it's just, no one took Blast Zone. No one took Blast Zone. Yeah, it's Library is one of those cards that, yeah, it has to be in your opener. You have to be playing another control deck that doesn't have the ability to just kill you out of nowhere. I don't know. It's a hard card to use. I see why people use it. I I know, guys. I I know it's a hot take. <laughs> Hot taking it up. I mean, yeah, it's for sure worse than Channel and Tinker and DT.
Out of cards. Ready to roll. I mean, this is a situation where, like, Mark's getting very close to just being, like, in the driver's seat with it. I mean, he's already in the driver's seat, but, like, he is. anytime... Yes, uh, Elaine picked Vista like a fetch land. That's how she treated it. Well, it looks like Delver got milled with that Alter the Brew. Well, that's a win con, but I mean, there's a Fairy yeah. Conclave beating down right also, now. So, Cunning Wish for Blue Sun, maybe? Yeah, probably. That's what it's been almost every time. Yep, and then Blue Sun. Yep. Yes. Seems good. Yeah, Snapcaster's stock really skyrockets when you have Ancestral or Time Walk. Right. Oh, yeah, she did get Ancestral. Yeah, I would have probably taken the Snapcaster. On three, instead of... She took Prismatic Vista, and Mark took Snapcaster at three. They yeah. were right next to each other. Yeah, I probably would have taken... The Snap. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Nobody values Prismatic Vista very high, so... Yeah, she was the only one who did. I mean, the fetch lands were going high, but it's like, you don't really need, especially when you're basically mono. Right. Yep, no one drafted Water Grave. I think that was a simple... Well, first off, not very many people were playing black. Uh, me and Brandon, I think? Yep. Uh, Steven also has black, but he is Abzan. Yeah. So. Not very many people were playing blue-black, and also... Uh... Yeah, I think that just straight up got forgotten about. Mm. I agree with you. I think black that's, is really strong in this cube. That's pretty good. I also think... Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, okay, okay, that's a true name true nemesis. Name. Okay. This is going to get very quickly over. Be over real quick. He's going to hit him down to five? Or if he swings with... Isochron Scepter putting... He has the mana to activate it as well. He does. Memory lapse. Yep, that's gonna be tough. That's gonna be tough to fight through. Ah, you missed the M. This keyboard. Yeah, that's gonna be a tough one to beat. Yep, he scooped yep, it up. Scooped. Okay. Yep, unsurprising. That was just a classic control yep. resource management game. Yeah, Brandon couldn't kept drawing lands there too, so it's kind of rough. All right, we're gonna go on to game two. There, I don't know what Brandon possibly has in a sideboard, but it's gonna be really tough. I think he, I mean, Mark did a really good job of not committing. Jeez. Uh, to the counterspell war right. with that channel, right? Yeah. Like painter servant crucible. I guess. I mean, pain, he can always counter the grindstone after the painter servant resolves. So yeah, for sure. It was the right play not to counter the crucible. Cause he also, when he cast crucible, he had no lands in his graveyard. Yeah, that's true. Like there was no value to be had. Uh, looks like winter orb, abrupt decay, and compulsive research from Brandon is coming in. Cool. I like winter orb a lot. I. I like Winter Orb as well. Let's see what's coming out. Uh, yeah, sorry, I just need to answer a text real quick. Uh, I assume it's going to be like, yeah, those seven Karn I can't imagine getting played. Yeah, I mean, I guess he can get an early Karn, but the chance of it actually resolving is low, so might see Karn come out. Yeah, um, having seen how his deck is playing, I don't think Mark needs to really... Sideboard too much? Yeah. Well, I just think he's, he can just hold off, you know? He can right. just wait. Let's say he took out Oracle, Moldiah, and Green Sun. Uh, I like Oracle. It might be slightly too slow. We're losing Ashiok, Merchant, and... Disrupting Shoal. Disrupting Shoal on that one. Bringing in Videlkin Shackles, Flash Freeze, and I couldn't tell the last one. I assume just some form of card draw mid range. Or counterspell. 
She took Jace on three and Vista on four. Thank you. I was off around on that. Chat's keeping me honest today. It is, yeah. I noticed that. Yeah, I make a mistake and they're like, <laughs> Alex, you're this obviously happens. wrong. Yeah. You've been streaming for almost <laughs> eight hours. It's been eight hours, Jesus. Okay. Yeah, you've been, you know, commentating and checking in on everyone's <laughs> deck list and looking at matches and gameplay. Yeah. How dare you not remember <laughs> exactly. when, when one of the eight players yeah. drafted one of these cards over a 45-round draft? Yeah, so there was... Five hours ago. <laughs> yeah, five hours ago. My bad, guys. You're right. I'll do better. Keeping me honest, chat. <laughs> <laughs> seven and a half. Actually, it's only been like seven and a half. Thank you, Double yeah, Fried. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Double Fried, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on the Twitch, and I'm going to spend a couple bits to that. One sec. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> They're definitely keeping me honest. They're sure. keeping me honest. Uh, where's the salt? <laughs> yeah, we'll just... Uh... All salt. I ain't salty at all, double fried. <laughs> <laughs> Like I assume Brandon's going to go first because if he can drop a Sylvan Library or a channel yeah. or any of those big hitters on two. Uh, yeah, because he, he got, it, I think, a Mox, so he could do a Sylvan on one, which is really good. It doesn't look like he has it, though. He does have a Mox Diamond, yes. Um, I think he has to mull that. Yeah, what, two lands? One of them's a Thespian stage, though. Yeah. Seems kind of rough. It's going to be tough, but we'll see. He's keeping it. Okay. Oh, I didn't see the swamp. Okay. Alter the brood. Alter the brood. Uh, sure, I guess. I might just be completely missing on a uh, combo with yeah, Alter of the Brood in his deck, but I don't be, see it, yeah. I'll be honest, chat. And guys, like, just... Mm. Thespian Stage, Millicard. Mox. Superior Servant, servant. Millicard. Mill another card. Uh, Millicard. Millicard. There it is. <laughs> oh, Mr. Confluence. Like, please, mill a card. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to stop you. Uh, I can't. It doesn't really matter. It's yeah, true. not like it's an illegal gameplay action. And I think... So just every, both the people would just forget the trigger, yeah, I guess. Ooh, the fetch lane's going to move too. I mean, to his credit, yeah, like, wheeling and fast bond and just Romnop excavatoring a fetch land or something like that will do the job. But, uh... This would be like slam a Leoville. I can't with the mana. Um, <laughs> anything. Cannot. Crucible Worlds would be killer right now. Ooh, yeah. Just recur that fetch land a few more times. Uh, get off. it looks like he shocked off of that. Yeah, he's got a three drop. So he should be at 17 instead of 18. Because he fetch yes, shocked. Yes, fetch shocked. There's a force level for Mark. Okay. Pitching. I. That was a windfall. Oh. I mean, also, seven. just those insane pressure he's laying with that painter servant, and I'd be scared. Yeah. And he Six caught himself, yeah. Okay. Yep. It's always nice when the players catch themselves. Yeah. Alter of the Brood. What a weird... <laughs> I love this card. Uh, yeah. I used to play it in yeah. Shroom the Hegemon. I, I love Shroom. Yep. Uh, Artifact infinite strategy is pretty good. Well, it's like Cloudstone so Curio. Uh, dark Depths. So he can oh. Dark Depths as yep. stage? Yep, he should. That seems real good. Um, I don't see how Mark wins this now. Doesn't Dark Depths come in tap, though? It does not. It does not? Okay. No, it's an untapped land. It doesn't tap for mana, though. Right, I knew it didn't tap for mana, but I wasn't. I thought it came in tapped. Okay. Not that it would matter, since the Thespian it stage would just make a matter. copy of it. Yeah, yeah. 
And then the legendary rule didn't uh, act. Does this mean stages two to activate? Two to activate, yes. Okay. Yeah, Mark has no way out of this. Uh, he might have a chain can, of vapor. He can bounce it, yeah. He didn't draft Hexmage or Urborg. Nope. Nope. Brandon was having a weird draft. He, he, <laughs> we were questioning some of his picks, that's for sure. Uh, looks like he's going to Dark Depths. Yep. Uh, it's not exactly how it works, but uh, Isn't dark tips also. Really yes, very, very but okay. it's fine. Oh, and Mark has to one for the merit ledge. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that card is gone. There, it looks like they're figuring that out. Because yep. it creates a copy, and the copy yeah, has but... ten, and then you choose legendary rule, which one you're going to sacrifice. You choose to sacrifice the one with ten ice counters on it. Right. So, uh, you're left with the Thespius Vange copy. And then the trigger copy. on the dark, new dark depths happens. Yes. Looks like Mark level two Brandon. judge extraordinaire Mark Kaderberg is explaining that interaction with Brandon <laughs> as well. Extraordinaire. I like it. Well, I think I screwed up the OBS. It should be 1-1, one, one, but uh, shockingly, I messed up. <laughs> I just assume Mark is going to lose this one. Cause yep. oh, of the... Yeah, because you put it on Brandon. Yep. Yep. Interesting. Yep. Let me just fix that real quick. Oh. Just gonna, I'm just going to make an assume. Yeah, because, I mean, he could... He did a good Chain of Vapor. Um, and a Mystic Confluence was put in the graveyard, so he can't bounce it with that, but he could have other stuff to bounce it. Block of the Fairy, fairy Conclave. Conclave. Okay. Okay. Yes, uh, with the way he did that, it did look like he had the chosen spell. the one. Oh, draw with library. Okay. That Archmage's charm. Oh god, you're right. <laughs> Archmage's charm would be pretty sick right now. It would be. Floats two. He's going to gush for it. Gush, yeah. Probably. Mark does have Snapcaster. He does. It's in the graveyard, though. It is. Oh, okay. John two. That, you know, strategic alter the brood milling strategy. <laughs> Got that. I mean, it's 40 card decks. Yeah. I mean, one card a turn. All right, so here we go. I like, this is how Mark, by the way, indicates when he's going off and playing Doomsday. He has these ridiculously heavy steel dice that have the Phyrexian symbol on as the one. And whenever he goes to Storm, he, like, just drops them on the table, and they just dent the table they're on. <laughs> and he's like, okay, I'm going to be creating a storm pile of mana. And I'm just like, please don't do this. <laughs> like, it is still currently 01. I was a little making early. Yeah. I'm making an assumption. We'll see what happens with it. Watch Mark find a way to deal with this Merit Lodge token. Yeah. Knowing my luck, because I've changed it. Right. Ten to one. It just a bit of beat down. <laughs> he needs distant melody. Unfortunately, he does not have distant melody. Yeah, point seven five to one, cunning wish, entrancing melody. Yeah, yeah. Has he only just bloody done it? I mean, he sacrificed the whole farm for this. Is he... it Chain of Vapor, though? Yeah. yeah. Looks like it is. Okay. It is Chain of Vapor. Nice. Okay, so we actually had a pretty long discussion about this, uh, the Snowlands. We've decided that, yeah, you have to draft them. Uh, and for every one you want to use, that's a slot. It was same thing with Relentless Rats, Persistent Petitioners, right. I mean, Shadowborn Apostles, yeah. uh, Wastes. Uh, if you want them, you got to draft them. They're going to cost you slots. Which feels kind of bad sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yes, we also allowed that, but not for the creatures. And that's the only, like, little sub rule. It's because there are a history of Snow Matters and Waste Matters cards. Right. If you want them, you can get them. They're available. 
but it's pretty expensive to your ability to do things. Looks like Mark is discarding the hand size. Yeah, he gushed. Yeah, he drew a bunch of cards. Well, he drew a library and then gushed. Yeah, it's a lot of extra cards. I can't. I still can't see Mark winning this. Um, he sacrificed everything there. Sure, he has an active library and one land, but right. At the end of the day, he had to get the chain of vapor. <laughs> like at the end of the day, it's just like play permanence, win the game here. Right. Yeah, and that painter servant's just chipping away. Mm -hmm. And he's getting milled, which does not help. Yeah. What? I can't spell tell. snare and spell pierce. No, I can't tell what. Uh, that was a Zurin orb. Zurin orb, okay. Yeah, the altar of the brood is actually doing work. a lot of work, which we were making fun of. But I guess on turn one's pretty good. Mind twist. Oof. Ooh. That turns off the. Uh, Library. That was for one, two, three. One to sixing it. Well, he has seven cards in hand, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, I guess. I think it's just pick. It's not random. Oh, okay. Well, it's just like it's unseen, so that's random enough. Right. Uh, Sh I don't know. Loam's a pretty hard card to run Shackle. if you're not like doing an aggro loam or like some ridiculous abusive thing for loam like just playing loam for no reason i guess it gives you redundancy yeah. on the merit lodge token uh right it's pretty expensive yeah it's not expensive it's just when he's got altar and zurin orb it would be okay for him to pick that uh, yeah there's a true name okay and of course it's gonna name brandon <laughs> there's that's that crucible. crucible with a zurin orb that's gonna i will definitely race well. And mill. And mill. <laughs> Don't forget to mill, dude. Right. Oh, and he gets back Dark Depths, and he can re-get the Merit Lodge token next turn with Desbian Stage. Yes. Mark might be running short on answers. Yeah. Um, Mark Mage's Charm? I haven't seen it yet. It's milled. Oh, it's milled? It mm. is milled. It's tough. He got a fetch land? No, what did he get? I didn't see it. Oh, he just got a basic swamp? Yeah, he, he sacked the basic swamp to desert. I mean, yeah, that's the thing, too. It's like, now it's really hard to race. Yeah, uh, and it looks like Mark's library is running out. So. Yeah. I do not think so. Uh, yeah, yes. it's pretty taxing on his... Mission briefing is gone. Yeah. As well. He's just running out of options. Yeah. It's funny because Mark so far has laid the most brutal, I'd say, way of beating someone so far with zero cards in deck and a very <laughs> conclave. Right. Um, so it's kind of fun watching him take it on the other side. Right. Exactly. Yeah, dude. Get that fetch land. Come yeah, on. Speed it up. Mill two. Looks like, yeah, Mark's cards running out. He's just going to... Dark depths, that's oh, it doesn't matter. Point. Like I think he could do whatever he wants. At this point, yeah, probably. Gets back to Thespian stage. There goes Treasure Cruise. Can you tell that Mark used to play uh, Legacy Dredge? Uh, could not tell that, no. No? Okay. Definitely not. Yeah. It's a tough way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Getting beat down with a Painter Servant. More milled. More like, yeah. More than milled. And then he just grindstones right here. It's just hilarious. That is a grindstone. That is a grindstone. Okay. Uh, memory, memory lapse. lapse. Alright, cool. That's fine. I'll do it again. It goes to the top of the library. Yes. Then he just draws a card and plays it again. Okay. He concedes. Yep. Yeah, there was really no way out. Uh, that milling was... Well, I made fun of it, but... uh, <laughs> You did. That's a tough way to go down. That's just like... That's what happens when you run super few win conditions is... That's Mark. Yeah. You can just lose them all. You can. Unless you're playing Reanimator, re and then you can just get them back. Cuteness overload. <laughs> 
What happened? Uh, hmm? uh, something was very cute, I guess. I I missed it then. Oh, a baby showed up. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Mark's baby is probably awake. Gotcha. There's a few babies around. There was a small human on stream. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it. I'm sorry, guys. I'll do better next time. <laughs> Man, what an aggressive mill strategy. Alter the brood. Alter MVP. the brood. It's real good. It's uh, one of the reasons why I put uh, Nexus of Fate in my commander deck. So I don't get milled with it. Sure. <laughs> I've lost two I, uh, I don't agree with this rule. But I kind of agree with this rule. And I play like competitive commander. Um, just as a heads up. like I play like degenerate mean I will helm of obedience you on turn one like uh, have a nice don't, day don't do that huh? it's great I love it uh, 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 like toxic deluge is coming in yeah it's for the uh, Nick, Nick Fit deck yeah the Nick Fit deck is playing toxic deluge for the um, oh true name true right. name yes yep. but man I really dislike the stress you put on the social contract in commander when you take seven turns in a row and then don't win the game that's rough when i don't like the stress you put on the social contract when you take three turns in a row and you don't win the game to the point yeah, where i've played with people rough. who are like okay i have attempted to win the game i've taken four turns in a row i have not i concede, I concede. <laughs> like i am so sorry that i have done this to you right. and this is like i'm, I'm sorry that we, i had to play through my four turns yeah it's like that's what happens when you play non-deterministic de uh, combo uh, as someone who literally used to, I know, played um, the Four Horsemen combo in Commander right. uh, with Carador. Uh, yeah. And it was just like, that's cool, dude, but like you haven't actually won yet. Like, I'm just going to do this, and hopefully I don't whiff. Yeah, I've definitely, like, I'm like, all right, cool. And then, like, continued playing the game. <laughs> like, yeah, a, a buddy of mine played a, a Gitrog deck that was basically <laughs> Four Horsemen shenanigans. Yeah. And uh, sometimes he just like sacks all his lands and doesn't get there, and it's kind of rough. Yeah, it's rough for everyone involved, though, man. It's like any combo that you can't honestly execute on like MTGO, I don't want to see played in paper. Yeah. Sure. Like if there's a deterministic loop to it, that's a different story. Yeah, but if it because you can just like. It takes you uh, ten minutes to do a turn, and you still don't win. It's just kind of yeah. Like, but if it's like a non-deterministic loop and it doesn't end in the game immediately being over, I'm like, I don't want to see this. Th yeah, no, 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 I agree with that. Like, if yes. you can demonstrate loops in paper, and that works, it's like, hey, I do this. Yep. But yeah, like Elaine against Steven, where she showed the loop of Caracas, uh, Narset, and uh, Vendillion click. He's like. She's like, can I just shortcut this that I win? And he's like, no. And he's like, um, and then he drew nothing. And was like, yeah, sure, you win. <laughs> yeah. Uh, looks like zero lands for, or like one lander. But yeah, I'm saying though that the amount of you can't with like the four horseman combo. And if anyone doesn't know what the four horseman combo is, it's like a narc amoeba based combo that requires you to hit like all of your narc amoebas before you hit an emrakul or something that shuffles your library back in and then you dread yep. return something and there's a lot of shenanigans with it and i won't get into too many details with it but basically the way it works is it resets itself it's a got it has its own release valve built in so you can do it forever but technically there's a non like world yeah, because you have to hit certain things. Before. Yeah, there is a chance that it could never happen. Like, right. it's not likely. If you always but hit recall before stuff. I like can that. tell you for sure that if I repeat the, if I recur a pyrite spell bomb seventy-five times, mm -hmm. you've taken seventy-five damage. You I for sure damage. can tell you yes. that. Uh, but I cannot tell you when I'm actually going to be able to like correctly recur my dread return like like right. uh, you can be like all right i do that 75 times okay what happens i don't know yet like, <laughs> i don't know <laughs> uh, looks like a thank you yeah. yeah exactly and like yes you saying okay i'm gonna take six turns in a row and be like okay then what happens 
I don't know. Like, so you don't have like a for sure way of winning the game? No. Okay. Like, go take your six turns in a row. And it's like an aristocrat's deck, and it takes like mm -hmm. 25 minutes per turn. And an hour and a half is later, and no one else has played anything, and everyone else is checked out, and they're just like, "Oh yeah, what what were you doing?" <laughs> That's not fun. Like, right. like I love beating people. I love winning. I love playing competitive commander. Mm -hmm. I do not like winning by watching like the life suck out of my friends. And then we, <laughs> all right, let's play another game, and everyone's like, "Absolutely not. Actually, you're kicked out of this house." Absolutely not. Exactly. <laughs> like you screwed oh. up. That was a. Uh, Sylvan got Archmage's charm. Yeah. That seems real good. Get probe. Okay. Just don't play a commander. You know what? You're right. I usually... I play, like, hyper-degenerate combo decks that attempt to win the game on turn two. You're so correct. I don't play commander. <laughs> I play solitaire. It happens to be a 100-card singleton deck with a command zone. A little get probe action. Let's see some lands. Followed by true name. Followed by true name. Uh, Seems like a great start for Mark. Toxic Deluge off the top? Nope. Mox Diamond. Mox Diamond. Uh, he should play the Mox Diamond into Tireless Tracker into land. Ooh, that's a good play. That'd be a very good play. Uh, did Mark get the Force of Will, though? I didn't see that. I, well, I meant, like, in the draft. I believe. Oh, yes, he does have so. it. He still has to do it. Um, yeah, he should Mox out the Thespian stage. Don't do it, dude. Do you play cash with... Sorry, what was that? Do you play CDH with Anthony? No. Ooh. Mox Damien's getting countered, it looks like. Uh... Annulled. Anthony who? Wait. Or no, still Sabotage. I don't know Anthony. Is there an Anthony here? I do not believe so. No. No. Uh, no, I don't play a CD8, CEDH with Anthony. I don't play much CEDH anymore. Ooh. But, uh... You got mine twisted. Got... <coughs> for everything? Yep. Nice. Yeah, the, uh... Mox Diamond got it, uh, still sabotaged. Mm -hmm. And then... Mind Twisted was the answer after that. It's pretty good. Uh, still has a... Still has to deal with... He's, I think he literally has one card that can handle... A, uh, train. Yep. <coughs> Got a clue. Trains. Just blow out your, everyone's mic. <laughs> yeah, How quickly can you race a true name? Uh, I mean, Tyler's it's actually a little bit closer than big. you think it is. Yeah, disenchant for spike. No, sorry, isochron sector for spike underneath. Right. So land, and then he could crack two clues, swing in for five. That actually races. That like, actually races pretty well. Yeah. yeah, and then like it gets bigger on another land, swinging for six. Yeah, I I'd think, do it. I think the Tyler Tracker will. I do it, and if the Tyler, and if the thing ha has to stay back on defense, that's great. Like it's even better. Yep. Yeah, I think you have to do it. Anthony Eason. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I don't play CDH with Anthony Eason. I don't play much, as I said earlier. With my current schedule, I play a lot of Arena, and every once in a while, I'll play Popper. I haven't played Popper in a while. It's a great format. One of my favorites. Yeah, taking five. It's going to be a tough race. For both players, fairy conclave, anything like that, swings it really hard in one favor. But right, also Mark has the potential to bounce it too. So mm -hmm. uh, looks like a treasure cruise. No delving his whole graveyard. Do what you gotta do. Yeah. Popper is silly. popper is really not fun right now. <laughs> as that... someone who loves the format, like as someone who's been playing it for since the day it existed. Popper's rough. Uh, but no comment <laughs> is my official stance on Popper. <laughs> Brought to K, good magic card. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess the nice part, too, is like he's churning through his deck. He's going to be able to find 
uh, so Toxic that, Deluge. And then Tyler Shacker will live? Yeah, Toxic through it. Well, I mean, yeah. you, ta you Deluge for one. Oh. Is that a Delver uh, of Secrets? That's a Delver, yeah. yeah. I mean, you still swing. Right. I mean, like, if it doesn't flip, you can still Deluge for one. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I want my fairies back. Dude, same. Oh, well, maybe not Cloud of Fairies, but I want everything else back. No, wait. Are you talking, like, foil and gush? No, you don't. No. Disagree. As the guy who used to play Mono Blue Delver all day, it was bad. Like, it was bad for the format. <laughs> it was exactly the reason why we can't have nice things. It was. Deck was degenerate. I mean, I loved it. Abrupt Decay. That's good. Delver. Okay. I mean, that still gets in. I think Mark has to be like, oh god, I'm going to die. If he makes a land drop next turn, I am dead. Right? Because right, it's a 6 5, right? You played Flicker Familiar? Oh my god. I don't know who in chat has had the displeasure of playing against that deck. Because I used to play it as well. <laughs> it was a stupid deck. Yeah, I'm not Little Esper Familiars. Um, yeah, but if he makes a land drop and cracks the... Uh, the clue. The clue, it'll be 7 damage. Be seven, yep. Yeah, so which will be lethal. Uh, so he can't attack without having an answer to it. Yeah, it was Esper Familiar, and you Cloud of Fairies untapping two lands, and like you just did some shenanigans that basically generated. It was dumb. Uh, it was the def. It was like one of the first truly broken popper decks, because like they just banned Skull Clamp. They were like, yeah, no, you don't play the Storm. They just banned the Storm pieces. They're like, no, you don't get to play with the Storm pieces. Um, but that was one that like the community was like, oh, this is cool, and then they were like, oh. This is bad. This is like really a problematic. Real bad. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It looks like that true name stand back on defense. Yeah. Can't attack. Yeah. Clue to Delta. Get another clue. Might as well crack. It's not going to change your clock at all. Mm, yeah, because he's got seven mana. Yeah. Might as well crack it. Looks like he's trying to figure out what colors he wants to keep up. No, like, OS Dan, I 100% agree. It was phenomenal. Demonic Tutor. Okay. You have no idea how cool it was for Toxic Deluge. Mm. I would assume for Toxic Deluge. If not, I would then um, for Dark Depths. But he already played a land, so be bad. Uh, yeah. Keep infinite life, yourself. infinite draw cards, infinite mana, infinite damage. It was cool. <laughs> You can still make infinite life. You can still do infinite damage. You can make infinite creatures. With a little bit of jiggering, you can basically do infinite card draw. You can do all this still. You definitely can do infinite mana, I think, with five color Tron sometimes. You can do all of it still. It's just not very many decks do you get to do all of it in one deck. That was the problem. <laughs> it was it got to do everything. But Temporal Fissure, no. No, OS Dan. <laughs> well, looks like he went for the Dark Depths. I mean, it's the... less interactable for his opponent. Right, because he can always counter the Toxic Deluge. Yeah. But Temporal Fissure, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm unsure why he played the land first. Uh, I don't know. It was a misplay. Yeah. Bought his opponent in time. I guess it was kind of liberated in hand. This is not okay. You don't just get to do 40 copies of this on everybody. That sounds awful. It was great. Super fair. Loved it. Yeah, that's, that's rough. I guess if we do popper rotisserie draft and there's no ban list, I might play like Demir Tinfins. Or like Orzhov Aristocrat. There's a lot of things you can do in Popper Rotisserie. There's a lot of things. The fact that only one Ponder exists is really good for that. <laughs> That's true. Inside that, Inside Out is not a deck anymore, really. Inside Out combo? You were yes. excited that it's not a deck? Or, no, I'm sad that it's not Was a deck. Was that your deck? I, 
I, I mean, wanted to build it, and it always it struggled good. against uh, the Blue Delver decks because they played right. Vapor Snag and had Counterspell. So what they would do is they would just wait because you'd swing in with like a one four or whatever it was and be like, yep. okay. And then whenever you'd go for it, they'd be like Vapor Snag, and they'd be like, yeah. oh, I have Counter Magic. And he's like, I have like seventeen counters in my hand, dude. Like you're like, this is all counters. Yeah, like this is literally all counters. You have like <laughs> circular logic. But against everything else, I just steamrolled it. Yeah. I mean, Is It Blitz was like the fair version of that deck, mm -hmm. which also was felt cooler. Did he just draw the Toxic Ogre? It did. With that clue? Sick. That was pretty good. Good draw. top deck. Well, might as well go for it. Well, he's going to make Mark use every counter spell he's got. Force Spike. Force Oof. Spike. Yep. Uh, so he, it's an additional cost of okay, okay. casting. I wasn't yeah. sure if it was like Skeep Shift, where after it resolves, you pay the life. Is it Blitz is super sweet. Uh, one of my best friends, Juan Barzalo, uh, was a ma massive Is it Blitz player. Like all he played it was Is it Blitz, and it was sick. Because it doesn't have a favorite matchup against everybody, but he would just play it so much. He was just like he he was always in it, and it was like one of those decks where it's like, oh yeah, I'm at 24, I should be good, and still die. You're dead. <laughs> like yep. you are super dead. Yeah, fist of flame with it is ridiculous and cool too. What is my first pick in popper rotisserie? Mm -hmm. Um, if there's no ban list, ponders are pretty good one. Ponders are really good one. Firmerate, Moldrifter. I, Moldrifter's pretty good. Uh, Bolt is honestly really good. Bolt is good. Yep. Um, I just show up with Mono Black Control. Yeah, whenever I get the chance to play. Yeah, Mono Black Control's sick. Oubliette, dope card. Uh, super fun to play. Preordain is better than Ponder. Eh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I think with Ash Barons. Oh, Peregrine Drake. There's too many cards around Peregrine Drake to make that deck work, I think. The card's super strong, but there's like it's really strong. hard to build a Peregrine Drake deck, I think, in Singleton, I would assume, with having zero experience having done it before. Oh, Mark oh, Scoop. Here Mark Scoops. The beats were laid. Yeah, that Tyler's tracker. <laughs> He's like, ah. <laughs> hate this card. <laughs> what is this, 2020 with the control? <laughs> Unfair. Well, it would have been able to attack next turn, and it would have just... All right, so Mark Doesn't Caterberg matter. loses to Sultai Shenanigans. Two to one. Two to one. Lands, basically. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to get Eric Levine back in ch chat, and we're going to have uh, someone else in commentary. I'm actually going to be leaving for the night. I've been here for a while. Uh, I believe in everyone, though. You guys were great. Thank you for having me. Super fun. Uh, yeah, and I had a killer time. But, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for playing. Thanks for playing. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, sounds good. Selective Snare would be a sick card. That is actually pretty legit. Uh, first card taken in... I mean, the fact that, like, I'm going to try getting Ash Barons. Actually, no, my first pick is Ash Barons. Hot take. First pick in Popper Rotisserie Draft, Ash Barons. I was saying ponder for a little bit. Someone was like preordains better. I was like, I don't know how I agree with that. Without fetches, there's fetches in popper. We have Terramorphic Expanse. Yep. We have Evolving Wilds. We have Ash Barons. You, got panoramas if you're really feeling it. you have panoramas if you're really feeling it. Yeah. Uh. Okay, but only three people get them. That's why you want it. <laughs> like, that's why you want them. <laughs> you want to be the person with Ash Barons, Evolving Wilds, and Terramorphic Expense. If you're, if you're not in the first three picks with those three cards, then, then you, your deck is much more limited in terms of scope. Yeah, because it's a 40-card deck, Singleton. Yeah. You're playing, it's Popper, so you're probably only playing 15 lands in your 40-card deck. Uh, yeah, you 100% want, th yeah. those, are, those are easily in one, two, three. And then, like, Ponder Preordain Lightning Bolt. And then, like, something else. Uh, and then uh, Angler, Delver, yeah. Uh, 
Guys, I'm I'm writing the meta for the rotisserie popper draft. All right, I'm gonna go on mute, and we're gonna have Brandon Curry and Eric Levine on. And guys, thank you again. First pick, pestilence. That's incorrect, but I like it. Uh, I gotta leave. I'm sorry. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, now the lights not flashing. Now Can you guys hear me now? You should be able to hear us now. We're hopeful anyway. Uh, no, I mean, I like, I should have lost that match. Like, my deck should be really bad against a bunch of counter spells. I got a very, very fortunate sequences of sequence of draws. Um, like, I mean. The deck doesn't really work on card advantage, and mm -hmm. Blyden telling me to take Tireless Tracker with the 45th pick was <laughs> the only reason I won that match. So that was a really that is a really good 45th pick though. That that Tireless Tracker seems amazing in your deck. Yeah, um, like against Mark, I think. Once again, I am in a delirious haze. I did That's okay. Not, uh, I did not sleep last night. You know, I, was I get so it. excited in my head. I was I was playing nine dimensional chess. I had figured out the format. Right. I I got it. Like I I had it down, and then like I still have it, but I'm so delirious. But it's like, somewhere. I couldn't, I couldn't enact it. You know. It's deeply. Ooh yes. Anything. Anything. All of it. Man, appreciate it. Um. Yeah, no, I mean, like, I, uh, I kind of started looking at a little here and there on Friday, and then uh, yesterday I was like, all right, I'm going to go to the Festival of Nations, get some cool food, and then I sat down right after I got home, and for, like, 16 straight hours, I was completely just... Oh, my gosh. ...with, like, trying to figure out the format. Like, I came up with this, like, flowchart spreadsheet of, like, everything to pick, and then, like... So it was supposed to be that all of like the top tier cards and each of the colors and each of the archetypes and everything like that, I would tick them off as they got picked, and I would right. have, have like an understanding of like where the vacuum was. Mm. But I was too tired to keep. Well, also it was going really, really yeah, fast. Yeah, it goes fast. It goes a lot faster than you expect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I understand that. So that that's the the dichotomy of me at the start of my fantasy baseball draft and me. You know, 10 picks yeah. into my fantasy baseball draft where I'm like, this my is spreadsheet baseball. is not yeah. in any way part of reality. It, yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, I just, it was going way too fast, and I didn't have the mental capacity to, like, locate words on the page, so. How many times uh, did people try to pick cards already picked? Only a couple. I did it probably, I, I think I did it twice. I, yeah. I did it with Bitter Ordeal mm. and something else. Like, that was... That was a bummer. Like, it, it wouldn't have... I don't, I mean, it would have made the deck I'm playing because yeah. that's what I wanted to do. But no, I remember talking to you about that, and you were, like, asking me about Bitter Ordeal and some questions about that, and I was just like... I was really hyped for that deck, and yeah, uh, to not get to see that was... Yeah, uh, hurt so... Me. I was originally going to go five color. Mm -hmm. um, and... I was going to pick up uh, Monastery Mentor. That's oh, I, that's yeah. I was so frustrated um, because I knew at a certain point that Skull Clamp was just not going to get picked. No. And, uh, yeah, so I was going to do some real janky stuff with uh, Monastery Mentor and drawing all of my cards. Oh, Monastery Mentor, and, Skull Clamp. Oh, my gosh. And uh, then just bitter or dealing so that they the only thing they had left in their library was lands. Yeah. So, and just saying, hey, yeah. good luck with what you got on the board, because there's nothing else coming. Exactly. I love it. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, didn't uh, didn't get there. But that's all right. I mean, like, I it was a it was a very silly yeah thing I was trying to play, anyways. 
Um, I mean, you got to try to commit to something. You got to try to commit to to something that's fun in a format like this, or otherwise, what are you doing? Exactly. Um, yeah, Ooh. I, Speaking of fun, turn one Imperial Seal for Cody. Mm-mm. So he's setting up for so, some reanimator nonsense here. Have I did I play against Cody yet? I don't think I did. Um, yeah, if you haven't but, played against Reanimator, then you've not played against Cody. Okay, so this is not the Splinter Twin list. Mm, that's no, Joe. that's Joe Wisdom. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, I've I this is fun because I get a peep with all. I mean, you have a split yeah. sheet. Right. Yeah. Visu- I mean, you know, visually, right now for me is way able, better. Oh yeah, to be able to see what's <laughs> happening is so much better. Yeah. Just because, like, looking at a spreadsheet, it's very sterile. But seeing the cards in play, like, you, you're a magic player. You, you see the cards, and you know, you know what's happening. Yeah. Um, this being a player <laughs> and having to deal with the scrutiny that I was putting everybody else under <laughs> last time is interesting. That's right, because you were on commentary last time. Yeah, man, yeah. I was talking so much shit, <laughs> and I, uh, Mark, you know, asked me if I you know, wanted to do this again. And I was like, do I get a do commentary? Right. He's like, no, you're going to play. I'm like, ah, I yeah, guess. Right. I'm absolved from criticism. <laughs> if I just do the commentary, I don't think that's how it works. Uh, As someone who's made the journey from player to commentary, that's not how it works. Yeah, my dude, well, that's not know. it. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I thought I was going to be protected by my, no, my, there's uh, no protection. But, but, uh, no, I mean, uh, I think that the, the core concept of the deck, is, I mean, it's pretty standard. Yeah, kind no, of thing, this. But you know, got a bunch of different combos in there. Yeah, it's a solid concept. I like. I just did not fill it out well. Mm. And I uh, like. I overcommitted to picking a bunch of lands in the middle of the draft, uh, trying to like bait others into like into following, and then like letting me do the thing that I eventually just I could do anyways. But I missed out on all the cards that I wanted. You know, doing the things like letting, you know, Painter's Servant yeah. and Grindstone um, make it onto the board. and um, Like, I just, I wasn't smart about the fact that, like, I just didn't utilize the fact that I got Channel with the second pick in any meaningful way. Yeah, there's um, not a lot in your deck that you can really do with Channel other than, like, a big mind twist. You have the Emrakul, right? Yeah, so, Ooh. also, like, this to is... Teferi. Sorry, I got it. So, <laughs> Elaine, Elaine plays Teferi after, so Cody took a gambit here and and ritualed out a pack rat and it got exiled with sword supplier shares and so now he's playing from behind under the teferi so that's a lot oof Ooh, liliana is a good answer to teferi though uh yeah i would i would say so um no second land is rough but being able to pull off the cabal ritual with the simian spirit guide is a lot that keeps him in the game here absolutely um yeah, man. Elaine at 4-0. Her deck is very strong against this field, it's, I think. I mean, it's just it's just all the good, best stuff. Yeah. Like, it just, it, it's just a blue-white control. Her list. average card quality, I think, is the highest in the field. That, I think that's undeniable. Like, <laughs> I, I think that... That's blue-white control, right? That's think, the deal. Yeah, I mean, I think that... I mean, it's a combo deck. I think that Steven's average quality card quality is the lowest but mm-hmm. like it like i don't i actually don't even know how he's doing but right now he's doing okay i, I but he's not he's not 4-0 i can tell you that exactly yeah. <laughs> i mean and that's like that's the thing that's really easy to forget is that this is not a format of just like you win on turn one no i mean i've i got hosed by jeff and round mm-hmm. one uh, against that. But, yeah, because uh, you, you you got you got your mana deleted, right? Um, or was no, that no 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 against no, against Jeff? Because, yes. Because I'm just generally bad, and I <laughs> played a Corsair of Cruffix instead of just holding up a Hercules Recall. Mm. Uh, yeah. This, yep. This, yeah. You know. That's but, how it goes uh, sometimes. Yeah, I mean, okay. To be fair, he had two lands out, and then just like double tutored for a, a time vault and a, a, a and, and key yep whatever it was. Oof. 
So I mean, like I like I still deserve to to lose that game. Ooh, speaking of deserving to lose, Elaine is up two planeswalkers to one against Cody here, brainstorming off of the Jace, and that's a council's judgment. I think Cody is really on track to lose his Liliana here, and if he loses his Liliana, that's going to be the game. I the thing about Liliana's minus is that it doesn't make them sacrifice planeswalkers. Yeah, it's you just know, creatures. Did you, did you know that? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. And Elaine's Elaine's deck is just planeswalker, 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 planeswalker. Yeah, and here's the thing about uh, reanimating. Yeah. Uh, stuff is that if it gets bounced, um, you don't have the reanimation. You don't. Anymore. You don't have it anymore. Yeah. And we saw. We saw. Uh, I think it was an off-camera match where Mark tried to attack the uh, the reanimator deck with curfew, but he got hosed by Iona. He just had curfew chilling in his hand, and that did not work out for him. No. Iona is getting Gorio's Vengeance, it looks like. Yep. So Iona swings at Jace the Mind Sculptor, taking him out. Much more threatening than that Fairy Time Raveler. I, I mean, this this isn't enough to tip the scales in Cody's favor. No. <laughs> you know, he, he answered something that he had to answer, so... He's slowed down the 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 inevitable Ooh. progression of this game by one turn, but That's a council's judgment. we all forgot about that council's judgment for just a second, right? Elaine makes her vote for Liliana. Cody, if he's in his right mind, will also be voting for Liliana of the Veil. Vale. That uh, council's judgment is one of those few ways to get around uh, true name nemesis. Because mm -hmm. voting doesn't count yep, as because you're choosing... Yeah. Outside of the old school rules for Chaos Orb and Edict effects and things like that, there's not a lot of ways to get rid of that true name nemesis. I was fortunate enough to, in my match to have a, a Toxic Deluge and a Regrowth. Yes, yep, that'll do <laughs> so, it. Uh, yeah, fortunately I didn't have to, didn't have to get there because um, true name nemesis does not have flying. Nope. Despite you know, doing everything else. It does everything else, but it does not have flying. But it looks like Elaine, you know, she's got seven lands. She's got this Time Raveler. Uh, Cody has three lands and just nothing to speak of. She takes down her Teferi to bounce nothing. Plays Narset. Okay. Yes. This is going to be over pretty quickly. She digs up something. It's Complicate. All right. That's going to counter pretty much anything she wants against Cody's three land. Why she has to go and make things so complicated? You know? <laughs> well, acting she's like acting like she's somebody else gets me frustrated. She's seen the way you act is the is the issue, yeah. and you know, <laughs> it gets me frustrated. That's fair. Oh, Narset again, and there's an ancestral recall. Man, we're just. I say we. Like, <laughs> like just doing super friends is a better strategy than almost everything. <laughs> like it's like all this like rinky dink combo stuff like it doesn't work unless you've got like you got to be able to push it through do, like yeah that's like black lotus and something that wins you the game like, oh okay so that, like you know? alex deck right yeah so basically. where do you where does the responsibility lie for letting elaine draft all these planeswalkers is it with, is it with you is it with mark i i, I do not have a single planeswalker mm, you know okay why? because i'm <laughs> bad at this <laughs> And I didn't sleep. You committed. And I was like, I was like, you know what? I don't have any. It's too late. I, there's so many things to read on these. Right. These, I was, I they was have all these abilities. At, right. Yeah. I was close at the end to <laughs> picking a splashy Oak, which oh. honestly would have been very good for what I was splashy doing. Splashy I like that. Um, now, now, when you say the splashy Oak, do you mean you mean the the, from the original Ashy Oak? Yeah. Return to Ravnica. Yeah. Um, and like honestly, I just absolutely should have got that. I also probably should have got a Baleful Strix and several other things. Yeah, I noticed that Baleful... We never saw my favorite robot owl. That never showed up in the draft, and I was disappointed by that. But I, Yeah, I just... Like, I got the cards I needed to get to, like, get wins, but I didn't... <laughs> I didn't put the cards that I needed to put in between them. Right, you have to have the, the yeah. sort of the, the glue that goes in between those win condition cards. You know, yeah. you have your grindstone, you have your painter's servant, but you have to have, have the cards that get you from A to B. And, you know, we're just sort of glossing over a lane, drawing a thousand cards and, and doing a bunch of things. And here's Gideon Ally of Zendikar and an Ally Knight. And, uh, you know, she's, she's slowly locking this game up here, but slowly being the operative I'm, word. Yeah, like what... 
what does Cody even put out there yeah. to like get a get a win? Like I don't know if he has Elishnorn. He has like... Gristlebrand. He has. Did I say Gristlebrand already? Gristlebrand. Gristlebrand. Uh, then. Gristlebrand. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. I think that's it. And she's got the force of negation. She's just hanging out. Gristlebrand sucks into Narset. That's true. Gristlebrand is a, uh, ooh, Cabal Therapy gets complicated, not even cycled, hard cast. Or did she cycle it? Well, Cody dropped it for one, and I don't know what he named. Probably just did something blind. Okay. Uh, doesn't look like. Well, she's got the complicate and the grit. She might have, he might have named complicate and she might have just said, you know. I mean, I guess, I don't know, she she gets the ability yeah, I mean, to counter it. Yeah, that seems reasonable. I'm not totally yeah, yeah, sure, but he knows he's I mean, dead. Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's he just wanted to see the hand, I think. Remind himself of what's in there, and so that's that's a... Uh, visual visual learners here. Yeah. It's a visual game. Cody has Vilas, yep, and Karik. That's true. Not that those are big hits here. So that's game one to Elaine and her many Planeswalkers. So if you could go back, if you could go back yes. in time yes. and say, all right, I know that yeah, Elaine's going to have these you're, Planeswalkers. You're, you're assuming that I can't. Okay, all right, it's fair. Yeah. I, 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 uh, even if I could, it seems like a lot of it. <laughs> so when you go back in time, if yeah. you decide to, uh, what card is it that you want to take? What, what's, what one card are you going to take that's going to change the course of history here? Um, Knowing everything you know now. I so I think it was probably about like pick fourteen ish mm -hmm. when I started just I was just like dirtling, and I should have uh, I should have put pressure on and uh, just gone in for um, for skull clamp skull clamp okay and um, I. Even if getting into white is, is too tough, that's, mm -hmm. that's fine. Then I'm just I'm, I pick up Ophiomancer. Yes, um, Ophiomancer. And, and then I go with uh, uh, the in, the enchantment that recurs from the graveyard. And I've already mm -hmm. got the channel, and so I go with uh, Worm Coil Engine. Um, and I just like poodle around with that nonsense while I'm set, like you know, trying to get. Either okay. the Dark Depths or the Thespian Stage or so, the Painter Servant yeah. combo. Like, just something to... Uh, something that I can get in under the radar, because Skull, you know, skull Clamp costing one. Right, you can sneak that in there. Yeah. And so you're going to generate some intermediary threats for your opponent to deal with so that you can have time, while they spend their time dealing with those intermediary threats, you have time to draw your two-card combos, be it, you know, Painter Stone, be it uh, the other one that you that you mentioned. The I mean, the one I really should have gone for, like if I was going to commit to doing five colors instead of just three, I should have just picked up uh, uh, Duretti mm. Part Two. And I was the black gonna, red there, Duretti. There were so many times where I was like very very close to doing it, and then I just con eventually just convinced myself that I'm not going to run red. Right. Whereas if you had had those one one defenders and you had had Skull Clamp, you would have had a stronger draw engine. And then you know then I probably would have picked Bitter Ordeal earlier. Too. Mm, yes. Um, not that that I mean that was just a, a pipe dream, but yeah, I think <laughs> I, like just generally like going into a planeswalker like style of deck. Yeah. Uh, would have been what I should have done. Generating an incremental resource yeah. advantage. Sure. And turn turn one. A skull clamp turn to I you know a demonic tutor or whatever any number of things maybe some kind of fast mana to get me to a right Kiki or a Liliana perhaps um, that's like that's legitimately where I should have gone and instead I was just picking a bunch of dumb right lands. something to push your agenda on the board a little earlier like, people in chat are talking about the elder spell people are, are talking about the immortal sun elder spell was a card we were talking about out in the play area a minute ago and uh, immortal sun. Alex and I were talking about during the draft portion, we expected Alex to pick that up to tinker into to just sort of has a, have as a trump card against Elaine. We're surprised that didn't show up. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, he didn't... He didn't really 
prep for the draft all right the bunch, sure you know? and um you know it's you, hard you, if you're not like, prepped yeah you, you i mean you see tinker come around on what was it you know basically pick or you know first pick of round three last pick of round two and uh i think tinker is one of those cards that's like it pulls you de- right in yeah it's deceptive in you, you you think that tinker is better than it really is um like I'm, tinker is a very very good card it puts a win con on the board but um the things you have to sacrifice to get there yes to me like it doesn't constitute a second round pick or even a third round pick Mm -hmm. um like yeah to me there's only like uh, i would i would say like 14 Mm. to 16 like you if you're not picking this first round then you're you're doing it wrong sure um and it's you know it's basically the power nine minus time twister. Uh, I'm not that big of a fan of Soul Ring in the first round either. Hmm. Uh, but you think that's more of a second round pick? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, but by the way, it looks like Cody has thought seized a Gressel brand out of his own hand, and you might have seen Elaine reviewing Cody's hand. That was just Elaine saying, "Okay, well this hand is revealed. I'm going to take advantage of this information." And she has pondered off that glacial fortress. But you think Soul Ring is more of a, a second round type pick? Yeah. Ooh, enemy dead on Gristle Brand. So there's a six seven life linker here. Yikes. <laughs> One of the things I was kind of planning on doing uh, with uh, you know my whole draft mm-hmm. and that I just eventually realized I'm like this is dumb. This is like completely unnecessary. Was uh like taking an animate dead away from whoever was playing the reanimator shell and mm-hmm. then drafting a world gorger dragon much later because <laughs> I was already planning on drafting altar of the brood right and just doing world gorger combo yeah that yeah. seems sweet yeah so Elaine has locked up the gristle brand temporarily with dove in hand of control preventing that damage and so Elaine, unless that Dovin gets uh, gets destroyed some other way Elaine's gonna have five turns to figure out how to deal with this gristle brand. Uh, of course, Owen gets to draw a lot of cards. Yeah, um, I'm not sure what uh, you know. This is where those things like uh, uh, the black red thing that kills a planeswalker. Dreadbore. Yeah, yeah Dreadbore went entirely undrafted here. Yeah, and like probably should have. Also, nobody really, other than the Splinter Twin, nobody, mm-hmm. nobody played red. Yeah, red was um, was was criminally underdrafted. We were calling for Mark to switch into blue-red halfway yeah. through the draft once it was clear that Elaine had muscled him out of the Planeswalkers. Yeah. And that was, that was our big thought there. Yeah. Cody I, didn't draft Exhum. Yeah, I was surprised by that too. But here's Chainer. Yeah, we were also calling for blue-green. Uh, you drafted Mana Crypt into Tinker once. It was bonkers when undefeated. I mean, yes. Turn one, Mana Crypt Island Tinker up Blightsteel is insane. Absolutely. But it's the, you know... This format, I think, having played a, a, a VRD and watched a bunch of VRDs, is not one on those edge cases of turn one combo you out. It's one in games like this, where things don't go exactly to plan and you have to figure out how to salvage things and cody you know cody thought he was going exactly to plan reanimating the turn to crystal per hand but elaine playing the the dovin has really really slowed him down oh yeah i was i just remembered i was planning on drafting Sahili <laughs> at some point but like once again like yes yeah. These things go out the window. Um, oh, humility. Oh, my gosh. So we have a 0-1 a, a Gristlebrandt and a 1-1 one, one Chainer. And so Chainer is going to get locked up by Dovin, it looks like here. That is a big deal. And Gristlebrand loses its draw 7 ability. This humility is huge for Elaine. Yeah, I mean, it's the best deck here. Yeah. I, I mean, I think I think if you asked anybody in the room right now who has the best deck, it's Elaine, and it's not you know. I mean, the record reflects that. It's also, absolutely. It's also just, it's really good. I still have to play her. Oh, I'm not looking for. I I mean, to be fair, I for sure thought I was gonna lose to Mark. Mm-hmm. I should have lost, but 
But but here we have a, a well-built control deck, not just a well-built control deck, but a, a well-built deck against the field played by a consummate control player. Yeah. That's that's terrifying. Mm -hmm. I mean, th like, that just goes to sh like reinforce the idea that the Super Friends is just a better construct. Yep. Because you can have an opening hand with like three counter spells and they could be the best counter spells you can have but like once you've countered three things they're gone yeah then and what? the planeswalkers are still there and they they're doing they're making a sorcery speed whatever a 2-2 two -two, uh nerf your dude especially with the war of the spark planeswalkers which is yeah really like completely changed everything these walkers with these static abilities yeah, right it's like like, Making Cody it, it, pay two for 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 Vampire Tutor here, for example. Yeah, I mean, like, okay, so we're all, everybody except Elaine is just completely living in the past when it comes to this draft. Like, yep. If you're not drafting like at least, I don't know, five to seven Planeswalkers, then like you're just your your deck isn't as good as it should be. I mean, at least if you're not accounting for a world where other decks are drafting five to seven Planeswalkers, if you're not playing Dreadbor, the Elder Spell, um, you know, uh, Price of, what's that, the card that removes five counters from something? Yeah. Um, never to Return, Heroes, Downfall, Bedevil. If you're not packing answers for Planeswalkers or just generally permanents, Spark Harvest. Yeah. Even, like, Vindicate. That, you know, anguished on making utter end. I mean, not all of these cards are necessarily playable in this format, but they're the kind of cards you should be thinking about when you're drafting a deck. Hex, Parasite, uh, Vampire, Hex, Mage, other cards of that ilk. Oh, crap. I forgot that that, I mean, that would have been good in my deck. Hex, Mage? Yeah, probably. Yeah, you probably should have gotten Hex, Mage with your Dark Depths, huh? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I felt like I didn't, I felt like it was kind of unnecessary. Mm. Uh, just because, like, a big part of what the strategy was supposed to be was like, pitching my hands and getting new ones with, yep. with Windfall. Right, the draw Wheel sevens. Fortune and stuff like that. Um, and then being able to use Crucible of Worlds to get that back. And, like, Vampire, Vampire Hex Mage doesn't play into that as well, but I no. completely forgot that you can d use it on things other <laughs> yeah. than... <laughs> than yeah. It's not just a combo piece, yeah, right? Uh, yeah. Speaking of things that you can remove counters from, Jace the Mind Sculptor is here on the battlefield, and Elaine continues to advance her plan and lock Cody out of the game without ever playing a single counter spell. She's played a Ponder and three permanents this game. It just so happens that two of those permanents are Dove in Hand of Control and Humility. Yup. It's, she's 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 got a stranglehold on this game. I don't see a way out of this for Cody. Like by the time Dovin runs out of counters, Elaine's just just gonna have the game locked down. Yeah. Uh, Liliana does put a little bit of a damper on that because it's gonna deplete uh, Elaine's resources a bit. But I'm just not sure that that Cody's got what he needs. And Elaine has no problem just just hurling that information out, throwing her Jace Verne's Prodigy into the graveyard versus Owen's, uh, C Cody's Kareek. Dovin doesn't look like to be minusing. A Dovin, Dovin's not minusing. It doesn't look like. I'm not sure. Dovin's just hanging out, making Cody's spells more expensive, causing him frustration. Oh, and Chainer's been stolen. Elaine attacks with her 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Brainstorms her Jace. There he goes. Yeah, this is... This is rough. Humility! I don't even think we drafted Humility last time. No. No. Yeah, wait a minute. Why is the Oh no no no, it's not haste. She she just stole the tapped chainer. That's what it is. She didn't attack with it. Okay. She stole the tapped chainer. That makes more sense. And here's Narset. What are we even doing here? What's the point? Just watching the lane one. Just up oh, in lane with the devout decree exiling the Liliana and scrying one. That's a new hate card from M20. Yeah, the untapped tap confused me a little bit too, but we figured it out. Gosh. Devout Decree. These M28 cards are really showing up. Devout Decree. I, I, have, I have not even looked at this yet. So <laughs> I'm like that. Did you see Veil of Summer? No. 
Okay. Well, let, let me show you Devout Decree because it did just get played. I'll, I'll show you a relevant card. Okay. Do you remember Celestial Purge? Yeah. It's kind of like that. Yes, and that land she had is has is Myriad Landscape. Oh, it, or Planeswalker. Yes, Wait or... Oh, but Celestial Purge was uh, just a just black or red permanent. Yes, right? but you don't get to scry. But it's also instant. It is instant, so there's a different... There's a different flavor to these two cards. I do think Celestial Purge is a little better, but Devout Decree is an interesting sort of backup option if you don't get that. Yeah. Does the job. Yep. Cody throwing down a Pack Rat, which would look a lot better if it wasn't just a 1 1. And Collective Brutality pitching Gorio's Vengeance for some modes. Hard to say which. I assume the Duress mode. And. I'm not sure which of the other modes really matter. Looks like the Drain Life mode. Yeah. Why not? Dovin's Veto, Complicate, and Cryptic Command in Elaine's hand. And mm, Looks like we're pointing to Cryptic here. Dovin's Veto? Uh, Cody's still deciding. I mean, it seems like a pretty clear Cryptic. I mean, it seems like a pretty clear pick up your cards and, and just, you know, walk outside and light your deck on fire at this point. I mean, they are proxies. <laughs> <laughs> they will. Yeah, that's true. And the, the, you know, magic cards don't burn very well, I've discovered. That, that is true. The, the waxy the waxy surface on them, and they're, they're, they're very dense. Yeah, like they're that. dense. The, the waxy surface creates this bad acrid smoke that you do not want to breathe in. I don't recommend burning cards. <laughs> no, it's, just, it's just kind of a waste of time. There's just uh, like more fun stuff to burn. There's the a lot more fun things to burn out in the regular world. Yeah. Not that we're endorsing. <laughs> I suppose it's not on sporting conduct if you do it outside. Yes, exactly. Right. You know, if if it you depends want, on how loud you are. Yeah, exactly. If you can be heard from inside. Then you might have a problem. But if you just go outside and quietly tear your deck into pieces, nobody cares. No, it's fine. You well, do what you want. I mean, there, listen, I mean, I care. I, there were some foil lands in that box. Mm, that's yeah. true. Yeah. And and Mark's deck is for, full of like German islands and German foreign black border islands. Weird nonsense. Islander? Is Islet or whatever, yeah. I don't speak German. <laughs> yeah. Uh can in Deutsch uh in Bisson Deutsch sprechen, but Ah. it's just not so good, yeah. Ah, eins, zwei, drei, vier. That's uh where I hop off. I can count to four. Uh, six, seven, insult. Five, six, Thank you, QVDV. It is insult. And meanwhile, Elaine has swords to plowshare to the 1-1 one, one no ability pack rat because control is cruel and control takes no prisoner. <laughs> That's just... You know what? That is unsportsmanlike. That's just... It makes me... happening on my head? It makes me think of the old... Uh, Old decks from like back in the bad playtest days when, when you'd read about like the time twister decks with swords to plowshares where they, they would so slowly swords to plowshares all your creatures until you had nothing left. This is what that reminds me of. Those bad like Scaphalias Mons Johnson stories. Uh, like you, there's no getting out of this. No, it's, it's, it, like, there's nothing. Is I mean, I've got upheaval in my deck. Yeah. I, I mean... Oh, man, I should definitely bring that in. Oh, shit. <laughs> I should wait for her to tap out and then... Oh, oh I want to see that. So, so do I, Eric. So do I. We're going to put you on camera. It's going to be oh, great. Man, as soon as this match is finished, I'm going to go right there. Yes. Um, yes. We'll get it popping. That's so, what I want right, to see. So here's what has to happen. Mm -hmm. I, okay. Because I mean, okay. this so game's over. Let's see. talk about the future. Yeah, okay. So she doesn't have... Right, Mark's got so, all like, the instant speed I, interaction. I mean, honestly, I think that my matchup against Mark was probably worse than, yeah. than my matchup against Lane. Despite the fact that Lane's deck is still, still considerably better. Yes. But, like, I can... <laughs> like my, I think my match win percentage against her is probably slightly higher than it, mine is against Mark. Not to say that she's not... Are you... Is your, is your mic muted or anything? I don't know. Are you, I mean, I fidget with it. Let's see. Say some stuff. Are we good? I think we're good now. Sorry about that. Um, Thanks, Miryava. It was nice having you in chat today. Yeah, I mean, so... I mean, for me, 
to win against a lane, I, you know, uh, just a channel in my opening hand. Ooh, yes. It, it, like, that's just pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. So how hard are you going to mulligan for that channel? Like, like once? You're going you're gonna to go from seven to six on that? Um, no, probably, it depends on what I have in my hand. Okay. Um, but I think that if I don't have some, because there's like, I think four combos in my deck. Right. Um, Painter Stone, Stage, Depths, uh, Channel Emmer, Cool. Fast Bond, Crucible, Zurin Orb. Yep. Um, yeah. And so, um, I'll, I mean, also just, uh, you know, Channel Karn. Mm, yeah, Channel Karn is very good. Just get rid of that land. Yeah, Channel Karn, steal your land. Or even Channel Karn Plus, if you're going first, is still fine. Right, uh, yeah, I mean, it's... Just get on the board. Yeah. <laughs> it's just this enormously unkillable Planeswalker by normal means. Yeah. I, I think that is one thing that, you know, I mean, if I'm on the play, then it's going to take her a lot of effort to get, like, a Council's Judgment to get rid of that before it... Before yeah. I, before I ult it. And, like, that that's exactly what I would do. Mm -hmm. It's just plus, plus ult. Yep. And just restart the game yeah. with, with Cause, Karn. Cause it, well, because I haven't won by turn three anyways, and, like, right. every turn after that, my chances of winning are just going down, 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 down. Yep. To fairies here. Oh boy. So what is yes? Someone working a bellows in the background. No, that's just my. That's probably just my breathing. Uh, okay. Wait. So is Elaine's victory condition just like the treachery and then like the Gideon? Just like the like we're going to shut everything down and then like attack in for 30 40 or whatever. I mean there's G GTM assault, there's just there's Thada Adele attacking for two every turn. There's just like existential despair, I think is one of her win conditions. Okay. Um but yeah, no treachery, uh Gideon knights, stuff okay. like that. I mean J-salt. Yeah, honestly cuz she's she's got bolts of fairies, right? She has does she have both the fairies? Uh, maybe Does she have Hero just, of Dominaria? Maybe it's just the uh, baby Teferi? I don't know. What, what's the preferred nomenclature? Yeah, the, 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 the Time Dominaria. Raveler. Big Teferi was not drafted. Okay. Okay. So, um, I think that I've I've kind of got a decent shot at winning mm -hmm. if I just, if I get out an Altar of the Brood early. Ooh, yes. If you can mill some key cards or just... Just have that going. Yeah. And and up oh, Cody's conceding. Bless you, Cody. We appreciate you. We know we know that you fought to the bitter end, but also it was it was it was a tough road, but you were done. That's how it goes. You're out. Alright, All right. well that's well, that puts Elaine at five oh. Yeah, well, I'm gonna have to knock that down to five and one. We'll see if you can do it. It's well good luck, man. Thank you, appreciate it. I believe it. in you. All right, you'll see me on camera here in just a second. <laughs> Go ahead and send somebody in here, and we'll, uh, I'll correct my posture, because it is terrible. We'll get somebody else in here. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. We're going to see who's up next. I don't know who we're going to get now, but we're going to get somebody, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're, we're closing in here on the end of this draft. Let's check out the standings while we're here. Oh, I should refresh these because these are old. And these, it looks like, do not reflect Elaine's recent win over Cody. But that puts Elaine far in the lead with Jeff Blyden at 3-2, and two, Joe Wisdom at 3-3, three and three, and then some players a little further down the list. It looks like Elaine is making a big play for first place. We're working on getting that next match set up. Oh, no worries, Kyle. I didn't expect you to have everything instantly ready. You are but one man with... with uh, with one, oh, that's the wrong, 
There we go. You're but one man with the powers of one man. I don't expect you to be able to do everything at once. Hey, Joe, how's it going? So we're going to get Joe Wisdom in here. And I'm not sure if your mic is muted or not. Is it blinking or not? All right, then you are not muted. Oh, I didn't, apparently I didn't type, I tried to type a bunch of stuff and I just didn't. Good job, me. Joe, how's your, how's your VRD going so far? Um, I lost to Time Vault deck and then I beat the other three decks, so that's fine. Nice. So you're three and one? I'm three, three. Three, three. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have Caterberg left to play. Okay, and Caterberg's record is uh, not amazing, so you might, <laughs> you probably have a shot there. Uh, as long as I draw natural twin, that'd be good. <laughs> has that been the plan when you've won to draw natural twin? Uh, I've done it about four times so far, so it's been good. I'm just, oop, I'm really good at hitting the function keys. Ah. It is wow. Amazing. Go keyboard, go. I believe in you. Okay. You want me to type on the keyboard? No, I, I can do it. I promise. What? Oh, it's there's a mouse. I keep clicking the mouse ah. is what it is. Do you want me to do the mouse over here? No, I got it. Splinter Twin. Too much moto, yes. Well, my my moto hotkeys are on on the thumb, the thumb part of my mouse. I have like F2, F6, because I have one of those MMO mice. Okay. So I go like crazy. The yeah, I have the exactly. I have the the I have the the razor the razor naga. I go crazy with those hotkeys. I have everything under there. So I just I just play uh, I just I play moto with one hand. I drink a beer with the other hand. It's great. That's fair. That's fair. Standing should be updated now. Ooh, let's take a look at standings. We have Elaine at five zero, uh, Jeff Blyden at three two, Joe who's sitting here with me at three three. Brandon at two and two, Alec as in two and three, along with Steven. Uh, Cody in two four after that last match, and Mark uh, having only played four matches at one and three. Oh, not draft, gameplay. So who do we have here? Let's see. Let's see if we can figure out who do we have. Is it is it Brandon and Elaine? Is that who we have? Yes. All right. So we have Brandon Curry who is, I just said, I swear I just said his, his standings. He is two and two against the 5-0. Oh, the 5-0, the unbeaten Elaine Cow. Mm -hmm. So you've, you've played against Elaine at this point. Yes. How realistic do you think it is that Elaine goes 7-0? Um, I think it would be pretty realistic. Yeah. Um, she still has a good amount of counter spells. The planeswalkers are just bonkers, and then she can get beats of treachery. Maybe take something big. Yeah. What do you so if if Elaine's gonna get beaten, mm -hmm. if Elaine's gonna lose a match, do you think it's gonna be to Brandon? Or have you played? I don't even know if you've played against Brandon. I played against Brandon. I beat Brandon. Okay. With a Gilded Drake taking his Leovold and then drawing a bunch of cards. Ooh, that's spicy. Yeah, and then I beat him down with a Carnage Tyrant. That was fun. Yeah. Um, I think he can. He has grindstone combo. Yes. I know that's one of them. Um, otherwise, I think I mean, he has uh, some other combos in there too. He's label to course. That's really going to shut down her drawing. Yep. Um, I think he has a fair chance. So if Brandon gets the hand he needs mm -hmm. off the opener, you know, a channel mind twist, something like that. You know, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. some 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 kind of mind twist hand, some kind of fast bond hand, a combo hand. Brandon's Brandon's in. But if this game takes, you know, if we get to turn three, four, five, and Elaine's still in it, mm -hmm. I think she's heavily favored. Uh, very definitely. Um, Brandon will, I think, peter out mm -hmm. later turns. Um, he has lots of, he can replay his lands, he has Crucible, he has Ramming Up, he has Fast Spawn, of course. Yep. Um, he has all that, but he really needs a way to provide, I guess, solid beats and get through her basically her um, defense lines. So. Yeah. Well, if Elaine wins this match, as far as I can tell, if Elaine wins here, she's going to be the winner. Yeah. I don't think anyone else can reach six wins. If 
you know, other other than her. Because yes. everyone else has at least two losses. Mm -hmm. So this is huge for her. Right. Starting off a little slow, just the planes. Brandon's hand, he wants us to see it. Let's see what he does with it. Turn one fast bond, and he has his orb. Ooh. So this could be something. Here's the orb. And a pass, okay. Interesting. He does not have a third land. Lane tapping out for the Fran Jace Friends Prodigy. And a channel from Brandon. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Paying some life. And then what's he, what's he going to do though? Oh, uh, he's going to he's going to gain infinite life. Oh, uh, yep, yep. Oh my gosh. Brandon gaining infinite life right off the bat here. I mean, you know, infinite whatever number he he decides. Why did the crucible I don't know why the crucible's in the graveyard. Um, that's Emrakul on top. Yep, that's Emrakul on top of the library, and we have Channel going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, crucible's in play. We have Channel going, but he can't play Emrakul off the top of the library here. <laughs> Brandon wants us to know that he has infinite life and infinite mana. <laughs> it's fine. We get it. <laughs> now, that doesn't make this game unwinnable for a lane, though. Elaine can still force Brandon to draw his deck. And with Channel gone, Emrakul is a lot harder to... Oh, but he does have infinite mana with the Zurin Orb mm -hmm. and the Fast Bond. And she can't answer the Emrakul, so that's game one for Brandon right off the bat. That's pretty quick. Wow. <laughs> well, we said he had to have a, a, a sweet opener, and he had it. That's incredible. Need a draw step click, yep. Oh, Brandon showing us the upheaval in the Mind Slaver here. He did say a minute ago that he was planning to board in upheaval against her. You think he'll pick one of them? We'll see. Okay. Abrupt Decay for a Planeswalker. Sure. You think Winter Orb is good here? Um, I mean, if she, if she starts tapping out to counter his bigger threats, mm. it can really slow her down. Um, yes, if he if if he baits a counter spell and then he slams Winter Orb, that's really going to slow her down. That's true. But it just kind of depends on his game plan. So. Yeah. Well, we'll see what that is for game two. But he he really stuck the landing in game one. That was very impressive. Definitely. He played that out real well, and obviously, you know, he had the cards that he needed. <laughs> so. Okay. Out. Yeah, interesting. I don't think we can cut that Zurn orb. I'll be shocked if he cuts his altar. Yep, I think that's too good against her. Yes, yeah, just just given the okay, Oracle's out. Oracle, that makes sense. Green Sun? Interesting. Green Sun could be the cut here. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a little Sorry. slow. Twister, yep. These cards are all a little slow, or in the case of Twister, they benefit they may benefit Elaine more than they benefit him, especially with the Narset in her deck. Twister is pretty poorly positioned. And even though he does have a Leovold, I mean, he has to kind of resolve it first. Right. And Leovold is a lot harder for him to cast than Narset is for Elaine. Oh, definitely. So I think these are good sideboarding choices. Elaine, of course, remaining a little more mysterious here, not showing us what she's doing, which, you know, I mean, it's working for her. She's 5-0. She is down a game here, though, on the edge. Mm -hmm. But she's a consummate blue-white control player. She knows what she's doing here. That's true, and even though she is down a game, she she can bring it back. Yeah, Elaine, Elaine is somebody who's played this kind of deck from all the positions up a game, down a game. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter where she is in the match. She knows how to play it. It's very true. And you can tell she feels confident. The you can <laughs> you can barely see her, her hands moving at this blinding speed, and that's usually the her 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 only speed is top speed. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. She's always shuffling her cards, just getting 
just thinking through different strategies. Yeah, there's always there's always something going on, some line that she's considering that you haven't. So I'm interested to see what she brings. I don't know why I, I don't remember why I put Splinter Twin up. I think we were talking oh, about we it. Were talking about oh yeah, let's yeah. let's put upheaval. Let's put upheaval up just to see it. Uh, I forgot there were three cards with upheaval in their name, and most of them aren't upheaval. Okay. Yeah. Elaine has two speeds. Go and stop. That's true. Upheaval with fast bond is very strong. So we'll see if Brandon can hit that, because that could give him his third match win. Mm -hmm. And uh, bring Elaine back into the mortal realm. If she loses, if she drops down to 5-1, and one, then there is a shot for some other folks to win. Um, Elaine, of course, at 5-0, but Jeff Blyde at 3-2, and two, and uh, Brandon at 2-2. Two, two. Anyone with two losses, theoretically, if Brandon wins, could catch up and go 5-2 and tie Elaine if she loses this match and the next one, which is a tall order. Very tall. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Thespian Stage and Dark Depths in the opener for Brandon along with a Windfall, which does not seem great. Prismatic Vista opener for Elaine. So we just kind of have to hope, or I guess Brandon has to hope she doesn't have a, uh, what is it, uh, source to plowshares or any sort of removal. Yeah. Brandon, of course, drawing Mind Twist here. Yeah, <laughs> Brandon is, is spewing information a little bit, of course, showing the camera those two cards. I'm sure Elaine picked up on that. But Brandon, you know, he doesn't care. He's either going to have it or not, and that's how it's going to go. It's not as though uh, it's, it's harder for Elaine to interact with that. And he's just shown off the thespian stage. Nope. Plays Alter of the Brood first. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that is the kind of card you have to, to read. Let's let's pull Alter of the Brood up here for the, for the stream. Yeah, it's not something you see every day anymore. No, it's not. There we go. So anytime another permanent enters the battlefield under Brandon's control, he can mill a lane, plays the Thespian stage. I was gonna say with fast bond, that's definitely like a game over. Oh, it's huge with fast bond. Yes. Uh, I mean, fast bond, uh, Crucible, Zorb, and uh, and Alter of the Brood is a four card combo. But you are winning those games anyway. Infinite life, infinite mana. That's it's just another way to win the game. Lane fetching out that second island. The Prismatic Vista. You know, who is that life die for, really? Let's turn it all these different ways. Perfect. That's fair. <laughs> Are you a tattoo guy? Because I just see, I see Brandon's tattoos, and I think, oh, those are cool. I am not. Okay. At least not yet in my life. So. That's exactly where I'm at. I'm not, I, I'm not yet, but I'm, I'm open to it. I'm open to the idea. I've been spending more money on buying more and more cards. <laughs> that is the thing, right? Yeah. The more money you spend on cards, the less money you have for tattoos. And There's here's a monastery mentor. Ooh, yes, monastery mentor for Elaine. Yep. So if she's got, you know. She may have force negation, but uh, Dark Depths coming in. Brandon should get a an alter trigger here, and he does remember it. Mills Elaine's Teferi Time Raveler. Ooh, that's Ooh. Very good. <laughs> you just dropped nine fifty on computer parts and haven't bought the GPU. Yeah, no cards for you. That's true. <laughs> Brandon sitting on his ability to activate Thespian Stage with his Lotus Petal. Monastery Mentor attacks. Brandon sacks the pedal. Uh, so he's getting out. Marilot. You're only going to lose one of those. Because uh, that's not how the legend rule works. <laughs> ah. Right, yes, you lose the other one to no counters. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a long time since I actually used Dark Depths in a tournament, so I forget. 
Thank you, friends. Ooh, Winter days. Orb, yep. but f it gets forced pitching Mana Leak. That is a oh, big man. deal. He did get baited into making Merit Lage by Elaine's attack. Mm -hmm. And I think that was her plan. She knew. She And she can lock down that Merit Lage for quite a long time with Dovin. Mm -hmm. And here's Gideon, ally of Zendikar. Oof, this isn't looking good. No, it's not. That Merit Lage is going to be locked up for quite a long time. And if Elaine can find an answer to it, and she has quite a few, that's going to be tough. The Teferi Time Raveler was milled, so that answer is not available. But I know she has Path of Exile and a couple other I think answers. She still has uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Jace the Mind Sculptor, Council's Judgment. There's quite a few answers in her deck. Courser of Crufix. Yes, no Teferi got milled. Did Caracas get milled as well? Oof. That's bad for Elaine. <laughs> That's, that's incredible. <laughs> that's a big dodge. Yes. Because Caracas is a great answer to Merit Lage. It's right under the Narset. It's a little hard to see the cards up there, as you can probably tell. Oh, something's happening. Cleansing Nova. <laughs> Destroying all enchantments and artifacts, sending Corsair of Kruvix and Altar of the Brood to the graveyard. Oh, my gosh. That's a big game, so no more random milling pointed at Elaine. Altar of Brood is gone. Corsair of Crufix stopping Brandon from doing quite so many shenanigans if he draws Fast Bond, although he could still draw Zurin Orb. Interesting. Cleansing Nova, a card that was sort of, you know, we weren't so sure about in the draft. Coming up big for Elaine here. I mean, I think she just likes the bigger board. Of course, since she is a controlled deck, so it makes sense. Yep. Yeah, having having a flexible board wipe, I think, is a big deal. Obviously, a card like Merciless Eviction might be a little too expensive, but Cleansing Nova coming in at five mana, it's hard to say. It, it worked here, results wise. It's done its job. Is that Myriad Landscape again? Yeah, it is. Myriad Landscape. Myriad landscape getting sacrificed for oh. some uh, some islands here. I totally missed that she had that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a weird one, a, a commander card that's showing up here. Mm -hmm. um, not quite as slow as thawing glaciers, but the kind, it's kind of the same idea. Okay. Elaine building up her, her force of knights. Getting in there for some damage. <laughs> Merit Lage blocks. Wow. I think she's just going to keep Zero Wing, build up a bigger field, and just keep going to base. Isn't it a colorless worst version of the one that gets Plains and Forest? Yes, it, it is different from uh, Crosan Verge, is the card you're talking about. Um, the Night Allies should have Vigilance, I think. Um, no, the core, they're should core they? allies. Are they? Are, they're just 2 2 core allies. They don't? Okay. I don't believe they have Vigilance. I don't remember what they say. Get the end. Most of the new knights do, I believe. But none of the... No, yeah, no vigilance. 2-2 two, two white knight ally creature token onto the battlefield. Yep, mm -hmm. just just regular 2-2s, two no big deal. I mean, you know, Gideon's fine. He's good enough. <laughs> yeah, and then she'll just anthem a couple of times and just yeah. close it out. She's just got to make sure she doesn't die to Merit Lage first. Yeah. But she has, looks like, two turns. I think there's one counter left on Dovin, so the clock is actually ticking for her. She needs to find, you know, Ancestral, draw some cards. She needs to find an answer for this Merit Lager. She's going to be in trouble. She's going to be taking 20 in the air real soon. Treachery would be big here, actually. And I know she, she keeps... Oh, that's always been in the, board, or in the, the main deck. So. Yeah. Elaine pointing to the Nurturing Peatland. Not sure... Something about the Courser. Maybe Brandon missed a life loss. I'm trying to figure out what the deal is here. Brandon agreeing that he missed a lost life off of the peatland here. I think we all missed that. Elaine trying to do the the mathematical oh, yeah. proof here for casting of the... Oh, the Winter Orb. Yes. Okay, so he has to have taken at least one off of the Nurturing Peatland. Yep. Okay. 
if that makes sense. Interesting. Let's see what he's going to run out next. Yeah, he's, he's got a few cards in his hand, but none of them seem to be cards he's excited about playing. This game might be getting away from him, and by might be, I mean really appears to be. Unless, unless Elaine bricks on killing the Merit Lage, I think this game is out of Brandon's reach, most likely. Mm -hmm. Tapping two. Yep. This time we remember the Peatland Demonic nice. Tutor. Okay. Oh my gosh! You got to pay one more for that. And Brandon says, all right, I will. Commits. No, it's DT. Yep. Is Twist still hanging out in his hand? Um, or was that game one? I think it's, I know it's in there somewhere. I know he has Bind Twist. Elaine has one card in hand. I can't see his card. I don't remember if he had my existence. I think this game really comes down to this Merit Lage and, and the question of does Elaine have it? Because mm -hmm. he can get Crucible here and I don't think that's super huge. Like he can activate the Pete Land, draw a card and get the Pete Land back, sure. But without the ability to play multiple lands in a turn, if that Merit Lage is, is, is dealt with by Elaine... Yep. So he's betting on I don't know what. Yep, their swords to plowshares. <laughs> right on time. Brandon's gonna gain a, a couple life. <laughs> <laughs> a little struggle to figure out how to represent that. That's fair. Gaining that twenty. And swinging for six. <laughs> Twenty nine goes goes Brandon. Yep, that that looks about right from thirty five. Brandon has the crucible, but how is he going to win this game at this point under this Gideon? Um, I think he has to hope for another fast pawn kill or fast. Pawn yeah, kill. he's got a combo out. You're right. But Aline wisely leaving up this Dovin. She has one card in hand. Could be a cryptic. Mm -hmm. be... And if Brandon were to try to cast a uh, Crucible here, it would cost him four because of the Dovin. Would tap him out. Cost him a life. And could theoretically just get countered. But if it does resolve, he can play Elaine from his grave. Mm -hmm. um, cast Fast Pawn. If he's got Fast Pawn. Is that Fast Pawn in his hand? Is that that second card? Looks like it. I see that weird wizard. It looks like it. That costs four. That costs four. Dovin. Yep, there we go. We figured it out. Good. I think Elaine would definitely remind him. Cool. She was reaching for some other stuff before. That's true. That's true. I just wanted to make sure. Place Thespian Stage out of the yard. So he's going to need... He, he can try to get Merit Lage back mm -hmm. by replaying Depths. So Elaine's going to need to find an answer for that, or she's going to need to kill Brandon. Yeah, I think it is a fast point in hand. Second yeah. The left. That's a little spooky. Elaine amassing an army of tutus, but is it enough? With with Brandon at twenty eight still, Gideon plussing entering the red zone. Hitting him for thirteen. <laughs> wow! So Elaine realizes she is she's under pressure from this possible merit lage and says. 
I gotta get in there. Dropping Brandon to 15 life. And I think even if he does activate Marilage, I think she has the, the kill. Yeah? She should have lethal. Um, if he blocks Gideon, takes eight. Mm -hmm. There's a seven. She can dove in one time, mm -hmm. and that would be enough. Would be. Yeah. Wow. A really well-played game by Elaine here. Just just living right on the edge this whole oh, time. <laughs> it's unbelievable. But that's what the good control players do. That's true. Let's see if it's going to follow that same course. He, ooh, he can make it on the end step. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she doesn't have quite enough damage to take him out in one swing here. Yeah, you could get the crap. She doesn't have lethal on board. If he makes it in the end step instead of blocking, then uh, then he's gonna, he's gonna, she's going to be in trouble. As long as Brandon plays this correctly. Yeah, still going. Yep. Oh boy, we've got a lot of magic. And this time, I know in the past we've done, we've used tiebreakers, but this time around, if there are ties, we're playing it out. According to Mark, Mark says, no ties decided by tiebreakers. We're going to play games of magic. And I'm into that. Mox Diamond discarding Island. What's the plan here? He's got the uh, Dark Depths in play. Why do some of these cards look tilted or off-center? Well, that's because these are uh, not... It turns out we don't just have one of every magic card just lying around in Mark's home. Yep. So we did print these out. These are these are some, some lovely playtest cards that we're using today. Um, but obviously, if, if you want to donate one of every card to us, we'd be more than happy to receive them. <laughs> Five X and ones in the standard win a box. Yowza, how was that resolved? Off tie breaks? That does not sound fun. That does not sound good. <laughs> it's not sound like what you want. So she's swinging. He's Is he popping. blocking? Oh no, Brandon. Oh no, he made an end step. Very good. Just have an updated life. And he comes in and Elaine says, I got nothing. So Elaine <laughs> dropping her first match, putting Brandon to three and two. Elaine down to five and one. And if Elaine does lose her next match, she might not win this. She'd be into she could go into a playoff. Yeah, I think currently Blyden is the only other person that I think is close. Blyden just uh, went to three and three. Okay. So Brandon winning this match, going to three and two, if Elaine loses and Brandon wins his next two, then they would be in a playoff for first place. But all that has to happen is Brandon to lose one of his next two or Elaine to win her next match and she locks up victory. Incredible. All right. So, <laughs> Brandon saying, he yeah, still had all these in my deck, right? As one does. So, who have you not played so far? Caterberg. Caterberg, okay. All right. Well, we'll see who they put up on the uh, on camera next. But, uh, yeah, this was fun. Thanks for coming in and doing commentary. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. It was oh, good. Wait, I think it's 1-1. One, one. Oh, is it 1-1? One, one? No, Brandon won both. Brandon took that first game, remember? Oh, that's true, that's true. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> it was a long match. Well, thanks, Joe. We appreciate it. Nice having you here. And uh, good luck in your last match against Mark. Yeah. Uh, I'll... <laughs> All righty. So I'm not sure who we're going to have up next. But we are going to have somebody. I do promise. I promise it's going to be somebody. Someone go do commentary has been called. So we're going to have someone. 
Uh. Yeah, see? We have Couch here. Put Blyden on. Oh, I loved doing commentary with Blyden. All right, Cody, how's it going? Good, how are you? Doing all right. We've got Cody Owen here. It was the couch a second ago. It was the couch. You're much more entertaining. You have a lot more to say, and I appreciate uh, that. Maybe not. So it's going to be... I hear some, some chatter. I'm not sure who we're going to get I next. I believe it's Brandon versus Steven. Brandon versus Steven. So Brandon Curry at 3-2, and two, playing for his chance in the finals as long as Elaine loses. As long as Elaine loses, then let's just go back to the standings here. And Steven is at two and three. Mm -hmm. um, Unless that's wrong. Is that I, wrong? I think it might be wrong. He, I think the only person he had left to play was Brandon, so he should at least be one. I think he's three and three. Okay. Because he beat Alec. He beat so Alec, just okay, now, yeah, just now. All right. So I'll put that in here. I'll choose to believe you. I, I don't know what the uh, match was, though, so. I'm gonna I'm gonna choose to believe that. <laughs> it sounds right. It sounds right. Sir, are you ha are you having fun today, Cody? You enjoying yourself? Yeah, it's it's been interesting for sure. Mm. Especially getting called at uh, like 10:30 last night <laughs> to fill in. It's been uh, interesting. So you were one of the folks that filled in for us on short notice here. Yes. But you're enjoying it. Yeah. I'm really glad. It's a, it's a quite an experience. It's a sure. heck of a thing. <laughs> and so you came in. With, with less a little less time to prepare than the rest a of the field. A little less, yeah. <laughs> but you settled down on Reanimator pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, it's a deck that I, I've i played before a little bit, mm -hmm. so I know at least some of the cards that are supposed to go in it. Yes. So I figured it would be something I could fill in pretty easily. Right, that makes sense. So it's something that you're, you're familiar with, something that you're... I'm looking for my water bottle, I'm sorry. <laughs> it is orange, and it is... Not in this room. Very good. I do not see it. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll just have to make do. <laughs> I'll just have to keep drinking beer. How terrible. <laughs> How terrible. Just terrible for me. All right. So, Steven starting off hot with the turn one uh, Marsh Flats into Bayou into Noble Hierarch. Jesus. That's that's a good start. Now, if you're Steven, obviously you want to win. Mm -hmm. But... You maybe feel a little bad if you do win because you're your your dream crushing Brandon out of first, uh, potentially. Because yes. I mean, if Elaine loses, which again is a tall order, yeah, then Brandon that deck is yeah pretty good. Fast bond Zurin Orb is here. All he needs is a Crucible or a Ramanap Excavator, and we're going. These are forty card decks, yes, indeed. So you've played six of your seven matches, is that have, right? Yeah, the only one I have left to play is Brandon. Okay. And you're three and three? Two and four. Two and four, okay. Yeah, that uh, humility against Elaine was... Oh, uh, that's right, the humility. Pretty, oh, pretty. that was rough. Yeah. We were, we were very I, impressed. I, I stumbled on that second that land, or I would have yeah. had a turn two Gristlebrand, and mm. just, I would have at least got a little more damage in at least. Ooh, Brandon going off with the Tireless Tracker and Fast Mond. Oh. Just hurls his hand <laughs> onto the battlefield. It's all lands, folks. That, that's a pretty good start. Wow. Sacks a clue, draws a card, puts a counter on Tracker, and up oh, the dream. The dream is over for now. I mean, but only going to be a big Tracker next turn. I think he drew Demonic Tutor. Uh, this sort of looked like and what is that that Steven has up there? Uh, he just attacked with it, I think? Well, he ta attacked with Kitchen Finks, it looks like. Okay. And played something. And now that's um, Duskwatch Recruiter. Mm -hmm. But I can't tell what's up top. Oh, my gosh. Is the, the glare is... The glare is real. The glare is real. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that for next time. It is... Oops. I, I Malira? Think. It's oh, it is Malira. Ooh, okay. Nice call. Yep, I can see that that shape 
80% of the way across. And here's Demonic Tutor, which means Crucible's not far behind. And with Crucible, Zorb, and Fast Bond, Brandon can do whatever he wants. Tireless and, Tracker? Yeah. yeah, and Tireless Tracker. Ramanap Excavator, Brandon can draw his deck. Brandon can gain as much life as we, he wants. Make Tireless Tracker as big as he can. Brandon can yeah, he can make an, an arbitrarily large Tireless Tracker, almost. Well, limited by the size of his deck, of course. And, uh, yeah. I think Steven's in trouble. Yeah, I mean, Steven still has some blockers, so yep. the big Tyler Tracker can't get through immediately. Sure. So. And Steven oh, is a play-it-out kind of guy, but Steven says, okay, I know you have Emrakul, I'm just going to scoop it up, because uh, I'm a rational human person. Right. <laughs> so a quick 1-0 for Brandon. Yep, that was pretty quick. Brandon acquitting himself well in these later matches. Yeah, we were all questioning some of his picks early on, and it seemed to work out pretty well for him. So what were you, when you say you were questioning some of his picks early on, I'm curious. Just, Tell me more. Because we like, were, too, he, here in the he booth. Was, he was all over the place. Like, yeah. We had no idea what he was doing. Yup. But then the deck sort of, you know, coalesced a little more later yeah. in the draft. Yeah, filled a little in. And I don't think he got exactly what he wanted. I know that he, he, he got that alt, that uh, mm, uh, bitter ordeal, bitter ordeal, snaked yeah. out from him by yeah, Stephen by Steven. himself. Yeah. Stephen, who took the bitter ordeal from me personally <laughs> after I foolishly took extract late that's, in the draft that's last what time. I heard, yeah. <laughs> I remember I could hear Stephen talking about it from here, <laughs> and I was like, okay, yes, I remember too. It's fine. <laughs> But you won't forget bitter or deal again. I will. You know what? You know the thing that really stings. It was on my. It was on my notes. I was looking at my notes, and all I instead of like looking at my notes and evaluating what card should I take, I took the card on top of my notes that hadn't been taken. I just took the top one. Fair enough. Just didn't engage my brain. That's the thing. I. I. You know, it's. It'd be one thing if I forgot about bitter or deal, but I knew about it. And I still didn't pick it. Yeah. That's on me. Uh, collector of Helm of Obedience, maybe Leyline is coming in. I saw, looked like Stony Silence. Oh, oh no, Leyline of Sanctity? I'm not sure. Does he have Stony Silence? He yeah. does. He also has, uh, it's right third from the bottom. Oh, yeah. I think it was Stony Silence. And he also has uh, Leyline Helm of Obedience. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah, he has the Leyline Helm combo. A no notes allowed draft. Oh boy, this format's already hard enough. I, I mean, I had nothing prepared, so <laughs> I uh, no. When I when I got the call from Stephen last night, I basically stood up, yeah, stayed up for about two hours and watched the last draft. Yup. Just the drafting portion. I was like, okay, try to get an idea of what I'm doing. Right. What are we doing? What are some? Yeah, and and you can see some of these people. Right, like, I, I suppose in a no-notes draft, if you say, oh, you know, uh, the Jace that does this. Right. That uh, looks like Toxic Daily did at least Abrupt Decay coming in. I saw Abrupt Decay. I saw Relic of Progenitus and something. Uh, the other one was Toxic Daily. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, because uh, Stephen has the Devoted Druid combo as yep. well. Yep, trying to make sure that uh, you that keep those creatures off the board. I don't even know if notes are like that helpful, right? Like, like notes are good. You want to have notes. You want to be prepared. But I don't think notes are the end all, be all, because you know, it's all about reacting to the other drafters. I think yeah. being able to 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 craft your deck in the environment that the draft creates, mm -hmm. and if you're just sticking to your notes the whole time and ignoring the draft, you are losing a lot of equity. Right. Yeah, that was that was my trade. Like, I was pick seven, so I basically took the one mox that was basically still available. Right, you took the available remaining mox. Yeah, the black mox. And then I could have switched uh, early on because no one was in red, but I just, I didn't think about it. I wasn't evaluating enough, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sideboard guides at tournaments. Uh, sideboard guides at tournaments are like a good start. Mm -hmm. um, they are a good place to, to begin, but if you are reliant on your sideboard guide at a tournament as a, just as a, like, I follow this and I never deviate, mm -hmm. I think you're probably, you're, 
you're losing some equity because there are different versions of decks that you need to sideboard against differently. But having a baseline, exactly, exactly. Having a baseline is really important. Mm -hmm. Whether And whether you memorize that or use notes for that, I think that's really, really crucial. Right. Steven looks like he's starting with, is that ley line? It might be. It's certainly one of his ley lines. one of the ley lines. Is it void or sanctity, though? It's I hard to know. I'm sure. Oh, uh, boy. And that's Deathrite Shaman coming down turn one. Oh, okay, Deathrite. Yeah, the, the glare, glare is... The glare is real bad. <laughs> yeah, Only on Steven's side of the table. Really. Yeah. And just up there. Oh, it's it's Void. It's Void. Oh, okay. thank you, Steven. We appreciate it. <laughs> we do. So Brandon now, with faced with this ley line of the Void, has a lot of thinking to do. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of his Crucible nonsense is a lot worse now. Right, and it looks like he's got Windfall, which the yeah. ley line is even worse. Grindstone, ooh. Uh, Mox Diamond. I think that's Toxic Deluge? It is Deluge. Okay. <laughs> no, I appreciate you. I just couldn't see couldn't see these cards. Right. It's hard. Here comes Relic. So everybody's here to hate graveyards. Nobody likes graveyards anymore. Yep. And that, that swamp is, of course, exiled. Channel Emrakul is still a thing. Painter Stone still a thing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then Steven just drops Helm of Obedience next turn and just... <laughs> Yeah, F Graveyard, Stage Depths, there's a lot of combos. Brandon, for being a non-blue deck, has a lot of two-card combos available to him. He, he does, actually, yeah. Um, and he wasn't on the end, so or one of the end drafters. Right. So it's, it's interesting that he got all of these two-card combos. Yeah, being the wheel really enables these two-card combos, whether you're first or eighth. Right. And so, ooh, okay. Oh, okay. We're just resetting life totals here. Stage. Just being stage. Oh, this glare. <laughs> it, it seems like it's gotten worse, too. I don't know, which is weird, because the sun is not really present here in St. Louis today it is at not. this moment in time. It's a very rainy day. Painter is here, and I we know he has stone in his hand. He has grindstone in his hand. The end times are coming for Steven. <laughs> the beers are present. Yes, okay, that's true. I've had, you know, maybe six beers today, but it's been, how, I've been here since nine in the morning, and yeah, it's seven. It's been, it's been a long day. I've had way, you know, I've had plenty, oh, Jesus. Brandon yeah. slams the grindstone down There's, and gets the handshake. That's, that's a quick win. There Incredible. Brandon I mean, moves to four and two. Steven also had, oh, he had a helm in his hand. He, <laughs> oh, he didn't no. have the second land. He was a turn off. Wow. Oh, no, he didn't have Helm. Helm's on the bottom. I don't know what oh, okay. that is. Glare. That was incredible. That was that was something. Brandon with a quick 2-0 here over Steven, putting him to 4-2. and two. Steven losing his final match, going to 3-4. and four. Brandon's still in contention for first place. He is? Yep. Incredible. Yeah, that deck is... It sure shaped out pretty well. It's better than it looks. It is. Uh, All right. Well, I don't know what we're going to see next up. I am unsure. My guess is we'll see either Brandon or Elaine. Mm -hmm. Cody and Hagen are switching spaces. Oh, oh you're you're swapping yay. out. Well, okay. Cody, thank you. Yep, thank Good you. having you on coverage here. Yep. Great being here. Yeah. Good luck against Brandon. Yeah. It's going to be a quick day. <laughs> Well, we'll see. It looks like we're going to get Steven in here. I'm going to update Brandon to 4 and 2 while I have this space to use my mouse. Two, four. Uh, if you see an, an orange water bottle, one that's very orange, and you bring it to me, you will be renowned throughout the realm. Hopefully Steven will bring me my water because Budweiser's not cutting it at this point in the day. I do need to drink water to survive as a human person. I know that's surprising to many of you. Especially if you see me stream bad video games on Wednesday nights. You might think I only drink beer. But that's not true. 
That's not true. Budweiser is just water mixed with rice. If you've ever been to the Budweiser factory, you know it is. you can smell all of their rice that they use. The biggest value of being on the edges isn't from combo pieces, but from taking the two best versions of an effect. Okay, that's fine. I'll find it. Maybe it is in here. I don't know. It's hard to say. Well, Steven, you're the first person for whom I've had their name ready before they've sat down. How does that feel? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, is the light blinking? Then you're, then it's off. That's bad. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. We're back. Ah, uh, yes. Let's take a quick look at standings. So we still have Elaine at five and one, Brandon at four and two. Yeah. I don't know. If that's been updated for. Yeah, no, yeah, it's been updated. Standings for time. are up to date. Yeah. That's incredible. So Brandon still has a shot. Yeah. yeah no. I mean, with, if Elaine went undefeated, I actually thought if I beat Brandon, I had a shot to backdoor into the third, uh, the third place spot mm -hmm. at four and three. Yep. Um, because it's going to be pretty diverse after that. Uh, but Brandon obviously just face rolled me. Yeah. Um, Brandon has really picked things up in the back half of yeah, the draft. Yeah, that, dude, I, I had actually never even occurred to me fast bond Zern orb, uh, <laughs> you know, and then he had, um, uh, uh, Tyros tracker to just draw all the cards after the infinite man. Yep. And then, and then he can just draw into Emrakul and Emrakul kill you. And then, yeah, take the extra turn and then everything. So. Brandon showing us his hand. Zorb, Emrakul, Karn, and some lands, looked like. Yeah, and then I kept a real greedy hand game, too, against the Moodoof with the Ley Line and Collector Oof. And, yeah, uh, it just didn't work out. Yeah. What if Emrakul was the bottom card? Yeah, no, that's why you got to make him show you. you got to make him play it out. Brandon choosing to take a mulligan here. There's a lot of something happened out there. I don't know why. Uh, Lane and Britt Blyden are playing. So oh, okay. Blyden so hysterics are... Um, yep, in full swing. Anyone on stream knows Jeff Blyden, <laughs> you know uh, the Blyden hysterics are often. And I mean, if you saw him in the booth here, I think right. you understand at this point. He's a he's a, he's a joy. Someone went somebody they were like, oh, I don't want to play Blyden. He always gets feature matches. Like, oh, Blyden gets feature matches because his decks are pretty. Right. And it's just like they call him on because it's always something weird and shiny. His decks are pretty, and he's very entertaining. Yeah, and he's funny, so... Biden's good, but not great. The locals all think he's great. Oh, yeah. He's, he's a great guy. guy. He's a great dude. <laughs> right. Tracker has been seriously overperforming for a 45th pick. Yeah. Dude, Tracker's, that card's bonkers. And that deck especially. I mean, it's just sick. Wasn't Brandon convinced by someone else Blyden. to take Tracker this Tracker? Yep. Yeah. He actually thanked him after he killed me with it. Because <laughs> they were playing right next to I couldn't other. remember if it was you yeah, or Blyden who had Blyden. said, hey, you should take this card because it's insane in your deck. Yeah. Brandon looking at this hand, regrowth, fast bond. Dark Depths, I mean, I think and keep, not uh, Thespian Stage, but I think you have to what keep... Is that, is that a forest on the end? We have Forest, yeah. Taiga... Taiga, you are the girl that nurturing. I've had. <laughs> nurturing I mean, I think because of Peatland, you keep that. Yeah, I think you, you got to keep that. You're going to six anyway. You throw back the forest. Yep. You throw back the basic, yeah. and you just... No, you kept the basic. throw back. The Taiga. Interesting. Maybe is he afraid of what is he afraid of from Cody in terms of non basic destruction? I don't, I don't think that's a thing. Yeah. Tiger, Tiger, burning bright. Very nice. Brandon doing his scry, looking at his windfall. What's he scrying off of? Uh, I don't know. Wait, no, he's not scrying. He's uh, drawing he's his draw. cards. He's just very slowly drawing. He's drawing He's his drawing card. it in a way that looks like a scry. Ah, uh, yes. He's miracling his windfall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's Fast Bond. Oh, I gotta update the game score. It's not one zero. No, no. Zero, zero. Come on. No. Yeah. So Cody's done fine for no prep. You know, he he came in at ten thirty last night, and I told him he I told him he probably wasn't gonna be playing in this thing for like another year because the waiting list was so long. And yeah. then It was just like, oh hey, yeah, boom, now you're coming in tomorrow. No, it's it's tough to get in here, but you know sometimes we just need people. On somebody short notice, somebody you know. cancels and and you're in. Yeah. You know, we had Justin cancel yesterday, and then we had somebody cancel. You know, very early this morning. Unfortunately. So what's interesting is like both Brandon and Joe, they both started really poor, and then Joe cut the, all the. Um, Started cutting all the like um, sneak attack stuff out mm -hmm, of the deck and mm -hmm. kind of turned it around. Yep. And 
Yeah, no, it's been. So it's been I took down Blyden. I took down both artifact decks out there off camera. Yes. <laughs> because uh, my amount, my hate was oh, insurmountable. Yeah. I so. think it's hard for you to lose to an artifact deck yeah. in this. In, in, when in I had Force of Vigor, Collector Oof, and uh, um, Stony Silence, plus other stuff. Brandon just hurling his, his pile of lands onto the battlefield. How do you do it? You say good things about yourself and what you want to achieve at the event and yes. why they should stack. What you offer to the organizer, that's what matters. And, ref and I, I, like, if you have references, they should be good ones. Yeah. Not just Joe Bob. My, my references were always Dan Stevens and uh, James Elliott. Like, people, those were... people who everybody's going to know, right. no matter who you are. El Elliott hasn't judged in three years. I still use James Elliott. Right, because, <laughs> because the people who are organizing events, they know who James yeah. is, right? Yeah, everyone knows James. Cody therapies himself, tosses something. Villas? I think it's Villas. I think it's Villas. By the reanimates order. Villas. It, yeah, I see the historic border. But yeah, so if he reanimates Villas, he's going to draw eight immediately right here. Mm, yep. Because you lose the eight life when Villas is in play. Villas is already on the battlefield yeah. because we do the, the things in yeah. order. So Cody drawing eight cards here. Wow. Yeah, that, that combo is amazing. It's amazing. And we haven't seen that on camera yet. But Brandon just wants to know. <laughs> oh, that's, that's hardcore. Brandon just wants us to know that yeah. he's going to tear Cody's hand in half. I mean, he's pitching him, so Cody may not mind. I right. mean, if he draws into more, you know, more reanimate spells and pitches good creatures. But uh, but that's going to put Brandon up, you know, five more cards. Yeah, no, absolutely. Which is the real value here. Right, right. Which is more lands for him to vomit with fast bond. But, oh. Cody with the jet saying, yeah. I don't know. Me? So, yeah. What's funny is Cody can, like, if he goes land jet, uh, he can turn one and tomb, reanimate Villas, draw eight. And yep. just sculpt the perfect hand. And just, just get exactly what he wants right. out of his deck, which is huge in a format like this. Yeah. Brand <laughs> Brandon's like, what are you doing? Brandon he's just wants to cast like, his I, windfall so like, badly. I don't know what I'm doing. Leave me alone. <laughs> Cody's got all these cards in his hand. He's like, these are a lot of cards. I have to read them. He had to spend two hours last night watching our last draft. Yeah. He only got halfway through it. Yeah. Ritual. Okay. Three black. So Cody's going to be dumping some of these cards from his hand. Yeah. It's not, so it's not going to be as sexy as... No. It. So I guess... The, oh, those were that he revealed from the ritual earlier. From the Cabal ritual. Yes. Or not the Cabal, the cabal therapy. The Cabal therapy. Okay. Yeah. I was like, what are those down there? Those cards are, are very, very graciously shown to right. everyone by Cody. Gonna roll it up some more, it looks like. Cast the... Cabal Ritual, go up to four. Yeah. What you doing here, Cody? What you got? That's that Kareek. Is... Yeah. And so he's gonna draw another four card. Is it two black or three black? And it's can you pull three... it up? Three, uh, yeah. Oh, yes, we should pull up Kareek. Yeah. I believe it's three black. So he's down in a buttload of life here. He's about to take... It's four. I know he's four colorless for sure. I think it's three black and four. Yeah, he's yes, got six. Yes, it's three for X2 and four. But so he he's going to draw six more cards. Yeah, six life to draw six more cards. And he's got... But he's spent that for the four black mana that's sitting there, right? Yeah, yeah. Those four are gone. Spent. So he's not can I have the opportunity to generate more mana this turn? So this is about yeah. sculpting a hand. And then not dying. <laughs> so he pitched Sire. Uh, hey, Kyle, can you ask him to slide that graveyard over a little bit more towards... Yes. Um, if we can we can get that graveyard... Or even better, just move it closer to under the dice. Yes. Just on the left side so that we can so read it. Ashen Rider, Sire, Swamp. Yep. Yeah, okay, we got... That's better. I can figure it out. I mean, the glare is bad. There. Yes, Avi, I was pointing at myself. <laughs> that was that was earlier. I, I, you know, I would never say out loud that I'm some sort of great reference, but I'll point at myself. That's as close as I'll get. <laughs> yes, you can use me as a reference. You specifically. Not everyone in the chat. I'm just talking to Avi. So Brandon really needs... Ooh, that's channel. He got in his hand. I mean, after but he does it, he can pay a lot of life and then windfall. So, if, yeah, if he plays channel, spews off his so hand, on life there. windfalls. No, he's firing windfall. off windfall no immediately. Channel. I think it's a mistake. Uh, I think you channel some of the life. 
Yeah, I agree. Because then you can save two mana, right? Right. So you channel some of the life. You only you only use two of the colorless. You only have to pay the blue. And then you, you save still the two have mana. channel running for the rest and then you of the have turn. Another, you, know, you only save off ten. So and you still have seven mana plus two up. <laughs> I once interacted with Eric Levine in Twitch chat. Well, okay. If, it depends on the event. There are some events where that would be really a really that, strong event. That'll get you into a judge conference I run. <laughs> That of course, was, hi, how am I doing? Did you go to Judge Conference? <laughs> the time. Yep. Okay, so Brandon. Yeah, I think that was a mistake. I think you channel for. I mean, I guess he's got two beaters down, so he can't, doesn't want to go too much. Right, but still, that would give right. him. That would give. Would have given him the oh card here. Yeah, that would have given him. Oh, well, but yeah. he would be at 14 if he had done that, so he wouldn't be able to play the Emrakul here. He wouldn't be able to channel it out. Right, but if he had channeled it, and then he would still have. He would have channeled for, like, what's Emrakul? 15. 15. So he channels to 13, or he channels 13 to 3. Yeah. I mean, I, I still don't think he go 13. I think he went 10. I think it was a mistake not to keep some mana from the channel. Even if he doesn't, he, like, things like Karn Liberated, things like a Crucible of Worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot and of And he would have two color mana left up to, to do it, so, to help it make better. Well, but he would have had to pay those two colored mana to channel. Uh... Okay, yeah, that's true. So he and he because he, he would have had to tap peatland right. and forest for the right. channel, and so they would have drawn a land. He, yeah, so he would have had only one whatever land he played. Okay, I still think that's a spew. Right, and he draws multiple lands. He got fast bonds. So yeah, the only yeah. channel even seven. Right, you, right. Like, and here you drop, you drop Karn, you right, right, right. You kill Vilas, I guess, because otherwise you die to. to yeah, Vilas. Like he he dropped DT for the Zurin, you know, yeah. something like yeah. There's lots of things there. DT, yeah, he plays the the. Um, I mean, obviously, he doesn't know what he's getting, but at least channels some of it to get. Right, he could get, it. He gets either Bayou or Overgrown Tomb. Right. If he gets DT, he can DT for Zurin, Yes. Right. I mean, even just channel five of it, just to have a little action. Do you have enough artifacts? Yeah. And, and then you're only down five. Here's Animate Dead. I'm guessing Ash. Sire. Oh no, Sire of Insanity. I forgot Sire was in the graveyard. Yeah. Ooh, this is, big this is game. Stitch together for the Ashen Rider. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh, oh, it's all over. Cody just pointing <laughs> randomly at his permanence. Uh huh. Absolutely. He got some counters. I'm not sure from. I think he it's, shocked himself. It's the Kareek. Kareek gets counters from him casting a black spell. Oh, it's just casting black spells. Period. Okay, yep. yeah. And then he's gonna gain life. Four off of the creek, three or four off the creek. Yeah, yeah I mean, he gets four off the creek, he, and and Vi Vilas is what an eight eight. An eight eight. Gosh. So he just took twelve. Bah. Yeah, Brandon has one turn, and, and not a lot of outs. Out. Yeah. And he's got to pitch his hand at the end for sire. Yep. Oh no. no hand. Yeah, 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 I don't game. think Brandon has an out here no. anymore. <laughs> What's that? Top That's a big card? graveyard over there, Cody. Brandon, show us your top card. Show us. Show us what you draw. Show us what you got. Show us what you got. It is Wooded Foothills. Yeah. That will not do it. Yeah, I think the channel cost him the game. Though. Yeah. I think he could pull it off. It would have been would have been a game, at least. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just very meekly. Uh, w wooded Foothills? Sacrifice? Go three. Go to three. Brandon's a troll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is classic Brandon. <laughs> no, you can't search for Time Twister, Brandon. That's not how Wooden Foothills works. He's <laughs> just looking forlornly in his library. Is he saying, well, he's just going to search anything? Uh, any, any, any? No, no, no. no. Uh, I guess Tig. <laughs> hey, that's Tig you put it back. <laughs> <laughs> it returns. I'm just gonna start filling out the old one zero for Cody here yeah, for yeah. this uh, this particular game, and if I'm wrong, I'm willing to we'll, eat. We'll eat that crow. Eat we'll various eat birds or articles right. of clothing, whatever it is. <laughs> Some crow-shaped shoe or something. Brandon draws off nurturing peatland. You gotta yeah, try. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What do we got? It is Oracle of Moldiah. That will that not, does do, not it. do it. No. Yeah, well, we are moving to one zero. I mean, he was checking all his. Uh... Got to look for your outs. Yeah. I'm gonna hop over to the standings, see if we have any updates between games here, because we're getting down to the wire. You're. It looks like you're the only person that we have all seven results done, yeah. for. Yeah. Yep, you are done. 
Caterberg has five. Everybody else is in there. Caterberg is playing match. Joe right now. Yep, I Joe is his, the last. Yeah, yeah, Caterberg is Joe's last match. Right. All right. Brandon and, and Cody perusing their sideboards. So you see some abrupt decay, relic. So you grab relic and something. There. Yeah, I right. couldn't quite see. Oh, and upheaval. Awesome's good. Yeah. If you bounce those reanimation targets, they're yeah. not in play anymore. Right. It's not quite curfew, but it'll do it. How good is Leovold in this matchup? You know what? Leovold was... I don't know in this matchup. Sure, sure. I mean, Leovold was just super impressive earlier. Oh, yeah. It got a... Uh, but it also got a uh, gilded... Uh, he lost a joke yes, that had gilded Joe drake. Joe said he gilded yeah. drake didn't draw it and drew many yeah. cards. Yeah, Leovold was pretty impressive. I'm not sure the, that the Leovold wheel plan is very good in this matchup. No, just because the wheels individually are very bad. Right. You see both wheels... He, he, has, I know he has, has Twister windfall. and Windfall. Oh, okay. right. I mean, Twister is fine. It kills the graveyard. Elaine is 5-2 and two now. Elaine is 5-2 and two now. She lost a Blight. So then. Brandon needs to win two games in a row. If Brandon wins two games in a, lo in a row, he, he, can he, take lands a tie he lands himself in a tiebreaker tie right. match with Elaine. So, But Elaine won a lot 2-0. So. The standings are updated. Let's take a look. Elaine 5-2, and two, Blight in 4-3. You three and four, and everybody else's record is not quite finalized. Elaine lost game one to Artifact after Blyden top decked two kills in a row. Well, I mean, that's what Blyden's deck does, right? Yeah. You he, know what it does? Loses to cards that stop his Artifact. <laughs> <laughs> loses to Collector Oof. Yeah. Loses to Collector Oof and uh, Stony Silence. Kar Caracas clicked him from Hellbent and died. <laughs> oh, oh, no. So you, you clicked his kill and he drew another kill. Lost game three to turn two vault key. Oh, you lost to vault key. Oh, turn two vault key. Is that is that weird? Has that happened to you? I, I don't know if I don't know if that's happened to a win before. Did you I, I think it has. Maybe once. I don't recall. Oh, something. <laughs> it seems like she might have picked it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know. I don't know. Her deck was sick. Her sorry. deck was great. Yeah. It, it was my soundest beating of the day, and that included my loss to Brandon. I, I just cried the whole the whole time. Her deck is great, and her on-camera play has been yeah. fantastic. I, I, I want to say. Like, she is just such a, like, she has such command of that blue-white control deck. Yeah. It's really impressive. Shuffling up for game two here. Brandon playing for his tournament life. If he wins, he will find himself... In a finals playoff with a lane. Well, unless the tiebreaker takes it. So we have a tiebreaker built in. We do? Okay. So last time, um, the Infect deck got first on tiebreaker because he won the most in 2 0. Oh, I Elaine see. and I could not break on tiebreakers. Right. So we have to see what the tiebreaker does first. Oh, okay. I thought, I, I, I may have missed The playoff the was for where there was not uh, a clear tiebreaker. Okay. I'm pretty sure. He may have changed his mind. I'm mind. not sure. I, I thought Mark's, Mark said more magic. I'm right. not sure what he meant. But yeah, so last time we had a three-way tie, and there was a clear win. His was win was clear because like most of his wins were two zero. Mm, okay. Hey Kyle, can you can you find out from Mark what the tiebreaker deal is, just so we can verify that? Because this match becomes much more exciting if Brandon is indeed playing for his yeah. tournament life. Yes, follow Elaine on Twitch and Twitter. It's the same as what you see here. Her her uh, her Twitch name here. And she's very good at pretending to be a cool person. I mean, like top notch. Yeah. I'd give her a Tony. <laughs> this plug would have been much more effective when you were five. I, you know, I was trying to give you a lot of props when you were five zero, and, uh, and now you're, you know, now you're five and two. So I've kind of cooled off on it. Nah, I'm kidding. Elaine's great. This is this is a great group. I I love this event just because it gets a lot of, if nothing else, I mean, and, and a lot else, honestly, gets a lot of great people together. What is that between the dark depths? Is that a basic? Leovold, Channel, Swamp, uh, Corsair. Yeah, Swamp between. Uh, dark Depths, Tracker, Taiga. Tracker. I think that hand's garbage. It's not. It, the hand is multiple. I wish Cody would flex his hand a bit down for Yeah, me. I know. Am I going to be at the Envy? I will not be at the Envy. I don't even know when the Envy is. It's the week after uh, Magic Fest Richmond. Right. Okay. Playoffs are by record. Oh, by record. As needed, though. As so, needed. As, yeah. As needed for top four. Okay. Okay. 
I think I that means. I, I think, think that means there's no tiebreaker other than playoff. We'll I see. think the only tiebreaker is is you either have a better record or you I see fight. Slashing now. I see, I see a dark red in there. Iona reanimation, reanimate dark red. He's got a discount, a discard outlet. That. Oh boy. I mean, I don't think like Iona's as good as it was against like uh, when he beat um, Caterberg. Or Caterberg yeah. sneep hand. <laughs> Caterberg sneep hand that was totally to locked up by Iona. Yeah. <laughs> because Caterberg's whole deck is locked up yeah. by Iona. Yeah. It's like, oh, that result? Oh, okay. So if Brandon wins, he would have a playoff with a lane. Yep. Okay. Confirmed. Yeah. All right. I love it. More magic. More excitement. Brandon Mulliganing. Cody hanging onto his hand. I think Brandon Mulliganing here is good. Yeah, no, I thought the hand was bad. We could have a three-way tie for third, fourth, and fifth. Oh, my gosh. Oh, never mind. Nope. I'm being told never mind. I'm just going to check the standings and see what he means by never mind. Well, I don't know what he means. We'll find out. Yeah. This game's more important. We have a 3-4 tie. Karn. Servant. Leovold. Lotus Petal. Petal. Windfall. Tomb. Sage. This hand also sucks. Yeah. How would the playoffs work for a three-way tie? I, uh, they would all play each other, I guess. We kick people in the crotch until they fall down. <laughs> I think, yeah, Rochambeau. Yeah. The classics. They could, yes, they could tie again. I'm sure Mark has a plan that does not involve me staying here till one in the morning to commentate matches. Yes. Brandon with the turn one overgrown tomb and you nothing. That. That's yeah, well, I mean, you got to keep a hand sometime. Yeah. Dark red in tomb. Here it comes. Gristlebrand. Reanimate, draw, <laughs> jet, ritual. <laughs> Got one man floating still. <laughs> yep. Floating a black. Goes down to 12. He's got a lily in the hand. Yep. Do you just smash the, the bet button here? Do you draw seven? No, I don't. Really? I don't think so. Well, Cody he disagrees. Did. He's doing it. I guess sculpt the perfect hand. Sometimes or did, you did he pass turn hard. and then do it? He might have passed turn and then did it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. If you do it, you pass turn and then. Right. Turn. I think okay. if you if you do it, you do it in Brandon's turn. But he's no. got the jet. No, he did it. He he's is. got the jet, which means he has two black pack rat. Uh, okay. Well, that's less impressive. Uh, uh. Than, uh, <laughs> Does he have well, like thought seas etc. Draw into yes, he has thought seas. He has cabal therapy. Discards action, action rider, rider and somebody. Kyle, can you slide that over again? Yeah, we need to see that yard. <gasps> he doesn't have. He doesn't have channel. If he had channel here, that would be huge. Mm -hmm. He'd win this game. There's no channel for Brandon Curry. Iona, action rider, Iona. Mashing Rider Iona. He can discard reanimation target stand size. True. True. So he already had the jet? Because if he already has the jet, absolutely yeah, 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 smash yeah, yeah. that seven button. But if he doesn't have it, I think absolutely your plan is correct. Wait until Brandon's end step and draw. That's been stage pedal. What is this? Is it windfall? windfall? Yeah, he windfalls here. Windfall. Wow. This is spooky. Because he could, he can just die. But don't shuffle, don't shuffle, don't do that. Oh, too late. No, it's okay. What did he have in yard? He right, had the pedal. He, he had the pedal. He had the Leovold in his. Head. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is not Twister, folks. Okay, it sounds like I, I hear Elaine taking care of he it. He had the Servant. He had the Emrakul. Yep. This is all good. This is all good. Because right, the, the Windfall will go, and then the Emrakul. And then the Emrakul will resolve. Yep. Right. Okay. Elaine caught it, and that's all what he had. Thank you, so. Elaine. Great job, Elaine. And then we shuffle. 
Great. Okay. Emrakul trigger resolves. Right. Shuffle the graveyard into the library. Cody's graveyard stays in his graveyard. Yeah. Yes, I hear I hear both Elaine and Mark talking. Right, right. Which means our many, many judges many are levels on the task. Of, <laughs> many levels of judgery. <laughs> there are many levels of judges in this room, but also many levels of judges out there. Five, nine, yeah. ten, eleven. Lots of judges in this building. Somewhere. Please, you know, this building, as long as this building doesn't fall down, St. Louis judging is good. <laughs> yes, you have a little experience watching games of magic and stopping illegal plays. Yes, that's true. All right, I saw a Zorb in Brandon's hand. And he's already played his land. Taiga. So he can play the Zorb down. Casey will survive. Yes. Case noted a active judge Casey Hanford. <laughs> oh, when was the last time we saw Casey Hanford? I haven't seen Casey in a while. I, last time I saw Casey Hanford was at a wedding, not at not at a magic tournament. <laughs> Or was that? Casey's another one in that death kiss of years where there was a whole bunch of us fast tracking yes, in all three and yes. we all fell out. Oh, it was man. like Max, Casey, me, Pat Cool. <laughs> and it's one of those, he's one of those people, much much like you, where I'm just like, you know, if you ever say, I want to go for it, I'll right. say absolutely, but I'm not going to push yeah. you. Because it's not right. If we ever have the time, figure it out. You know. You're adults and you'll figure out what you yeah. want to do. J yep, Joel's not here. Brent's not. Brent is at work. Neither Kevin Freeman is here. Zeke's not here. Yep. Animate, Animate dead. I'm guessing he hits the Ashen Rider. Ashen Rider. No. No, Iona. What? See, I thought you just hit the Ashen Rider kill a land. I, yeah, I agree with it. I think Ashen Rider just blew up the uh, Overgrown team. Yeah, you Ashen Rider blew up the Overgrown. And Matthew Shepard, yep. Naming Green. Naming Green. <laughs> Swing for... One. Eight. Eight, yeah. And he gains eight. And gain, gain seven off or the... Seven, uh, the Gristle brand. I guess Green stops Fastmon, and Fastmon is Brandon's yeah. fast track. But I don't know. If, I don't know if Cody's seen enough of the deck through other games to know that. Mm, okay. Uh, he was on on coverage when I was out there getting my. Yes, 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 so, yes, yes, okay. yes. He was watching. He right. was watching. He was watching me get him. He was here so, with me. Okay. So you know, not that he picked up any strategic insights right, from right. me, because that seems very unlikely. <laughs> I still think Ashen Rider's the play. Though. I agree. I think denying the colored mana is the correct right. play. Ramanap Excavator. So there's a mind That's twist a... in there. Ramanap, Ramanap Excavator, noted green card. Currently unplayable. Right. What is that next to the Taiga? Is that Wheel of Fortune? Um, Do you have Wheel 2? Between the Taiga no, and the No, I see Zorb. I see... Is that DT? A uh, Zorb. It's Zorb. Zorb okay. Twist. The, the come up with the Zorb look like a wheel for a second. What's that. between? What's what's after the twist? Something very dark. <laughs> Something very dark and, and bitter. I think the base. The, all the duels are very dark. Yeah. So that weird. might be a duel. Mm. Well, we'll see what comes out. Right. It does look like it's DT. It's DT. Okay. Delta Taiga. He says, "Do do you know how to beat you with this hand? Because I don't." says Brandon. And here's the handshake. Oh my gosh. So that locks in Elaine in first place. Yep, Elaine takes it. Let's see those standings. So that means Cody Elaine... Is my, I'm glad Cody has a brother my brother from another mother got revenge. Yeah. <laughs> Elaine locked in first place at 5-2. Yeah. Well done. Brandon moves down to 4-3 with Cody Blyden. Cody moves up to 3-4. Cody up to 3-4. So the question is how that Caterberg, uh joe Wisdom match went. Yeah. One of those will be a 4-3. Right, and that pushes them into a tie with right. uh, Brandon and Blyden for second, third, fourth. So we still have this tie break column over here, which we had last time, yeah. which had a, when it has a one in it, they win the tie break. Yeah, and I don't know but. what that means here. All right, All right, so Steven's going to hop out. Hey, Steven, uh, I'm going to go back to the gameplay screen so I can give you a hearty handshake and say thanks for doing coverage. Always awesome to chat with you. Oh, we, are we were holding the Joe Wisdom Mark Haterberg match. 
I'm going to step out real quick and grab a drink of water, and I'll be right back. Because boy, am I thirsty. news everyone I found my water bottle I know you were all really nervous about it it was right here the whole time I know incredible you're so shocked this is not my headset this is my headset here it is look how orange it is it's amazing so Kyle you're in here with me Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So we have, it's Mark Caterberg versus Joe Wisdom. Is that right? Is that who we have? Amazing. Just make sure you're not muted. So we have Mark. Yes, flashing is muted. Okay, now I'm not muted. It's Mark on the left. Yes, Mark's on the left. Yeah, Mark is on the left. I remember the sleeves. Yeah, and Joe... And both players are three and three right now. So whoever wins gets into this little playoff that we might have. The three-way tie, right, and then we'll see what happens. Which, that's an interesting, interesting beast. Yeah. So, Kyle, we we haven't seen you all day on coverage. Tell us what you've been doing. I have been in the chat a lot, just kind of monitoring, listening to the stream, making sure... Everything goes smoothly, making sure if we need to pause for something, um, making sure that we get everyone on stream, yep. and in here talking with you or Alex earlier. Yeah, Kyle's been doing a great job today helping us out, making sure everybody gets what they need to get, and I've really appreciated your work today, so thank I, you. I enjoyed myself. Good. It was a little bit hectic with pulling all the cards oh, for the yeah. draft. No, Kyle but made sure we, got we had there. all these cards. Uh, that's, but we got there. So please, if, if you're in the chat... You know, just 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 fire off your emojis for thank you, Kyle, because he's been really instrumental in making this go smoothly and making sure there's been content for you to watch all day. So, Ooh. so big thanks to Kyle. Mark starting, starting with the off, island and sapphire. A hot start for Mark. <laughs> Avi thanking you with the bad. Th- thanks, thing. Avi. I appreciate it. <laughs> was, was it a bad pick putting me on stream? Is that what we're saying? Ooh, Mark. For spiking the preordain, keeping Joe on the back foot here. I mean, I don't disagree with the line. No, I don't either. Mark, of course, on this mono blue deck, dropping Ashiok Dream Render. That, I I like this. This is a hot start for Mark. The like, hottest one that is, I've seen on stream. I think this is huge for Mark. This is an absolutely enormous start for him. Yeah, I, I haven't got... I've seen, obviously, the matches that we've had him on camera, but this is... The quickest start I've seen out of his deck. In terms of tempo, yeah. 
This is the the Marketerberg dream here. Yeah, and let's see. Let me remind myself. Joe is the teamer with Twin and Kiki and Resto and yep. getting his ruby out. He's the teamer twin player, dropping his ruby, passing the turn. So we've got mocks for mocks, but Mark heavily advantaged here. He's got the Planeswalker. Joe can't search his library with that Scalding oh, Tarn, which yeah, is a huge that's... downer. And that Carnage Tiger, which is a big win condition against Mark. Yeah. Mark just hitting the good RNG, dropping Let's True Name True Nemesis. True Name Nemesis. He is definitely in the lead here, I think. Yeah. And going to Scrack the Tarn, and, and, and Mark saying, Mark says, uh, you know that doesn't work, you and know you, you can take that search. back if you want. <laughs> oh, ever ever the honorable Mark Caterberg. Ever the gentleman. Brandon, ever how's it going? Gentleman. You Hello, are so Brandon. close. We've got... We've got Brandon Curry here. He was so close to locking up a uh, a final spurt. Yeah, but now tie he's, for the he's here with us. If he made Look no. at this man. Thanks. This the face of the face. Hey, of go one. ahead. We're so close, my dude. You can probably like finagle your way back there. I'm sure. <laughs> oh yes, it's about to get very real here. <laughs> I mean, they yeah, can maybe a little bit. They can sort of hear you. I'll move my legs. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Look Ta-da! at this beautiful man on the stream. Ooh, brainstorm. Brainstorms <laughs> are always fun. And let's see. Mark Mark fires off Mystic Confluence here in response to Brainstorm. I assume He's just saying... He is not letting Joe have anything. Yeah, no, you, you can't have that, and I'm going to draw two cards in the bargain. He is so far ahead. Yeah. So very far. So Brandon, you're gonna. It sounds like you're gonna be involved in this th- three-way tie for second place. Yeah. What does that look like for you? Is that is this gonna result in a just big long playoff where I stay here until you know one in the morning? Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I mean, in theory, it should only be two more rounds, right? Well, I mean, there's three matches to play, right? There's three of them. They each need to play one other person. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yep. Because we can't do them simultaneously with three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what we do is we we play one match, and we take the winner, and we make them play the next match. And if they win both, then we just stop. Yeah, no. That sounds right. Although, I guess third and fourth order does matter. Yikes. So, we're going to be playing three yep. matches. And then yep. we might still have a tie. I think at that point, if we have a tie, we just leave it. And we say... Mm. Yeah. I, I, I think... What we do because it, let's see. Well, third and fourth bit get the same prize. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, but it's they, they, there's no same, right? There's still a pick order for the bottles. How do you guys feel about televised rock paper scissors? <laughs> the thing that we shouldn't do in Magic. I still have it online, so I might just bow out and say that I want online. You might just take your take that, your ball and go home. Honestly, that's. That's fair. That's that's a that's a fair like that is a good point. But I still want to beat them. Whoever beats Avi in melee gets first. Yeah, Ooh, just okay. regardless of how many picks you would get, you get one less. Yes, Avi Avi would win because I'm not playing in this tournament. That's correct. <laughs> um So let's see. Yeah. Strip mine here for Joe versus I mean, all this card advantage. I mean, so strip mine is a good card, but I don't think it's doing enough it's here. It's a little late for strip mine here against yeah. True Name, Ashiok. True Name, Ashiok, which Mark's just going to let that Ashiok sit there forever. Do I have a GameCube controller adapter? Of course I do. Are we just going to pile everyone in this room? What's up, Elaine? Hi, Elaine. Congratulations, see, which by the way. Which card is that from Mark? Well done. I, Elaine, I'm glad that you lost. <laughs> I love sentences that start with "I'm glad that you lost." So no good. offense, but I'm glad that you lost. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, in in her place. I mean, in all fairness, that yeah, like it's true. She is only being honest with us. Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Elaine is just a movie villain here. And it's wonderful. That, I love that it. That might be accurate. Like, <laughs> what uh, what movie are we casting here? This is a Snapcaster Mage. What right. are we picking? What are we picking? Yeah, speaking of casting. Uh, time walk. 
That, that seems like a not terrible decision. Yeah, I guess I'll just time lock again. Yeah, no, it seems okay. You'll and play. yeah, no, that, 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 is, that is game one. Oof, game one going to Mark Caterberg off of just too much value. That is an accurate statement. Yeah, I was gonna ask, but it sounds like you you've already got this figured out. Yeah. No. You don't think yeah, you don't like, think lightning strikes twice for you? Yeah, there. you 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 your deck seems like just kind of like with Elaine, like you have to just get out of the gates fast enough to. I have to have the nuts. Yeah. Yeah, and. Yeah, you have to hope that he does not have Counterspell or his Force of Will in his opening. Whereas against the, your other... Well, so for Counterspell and the Sapphire, obviously. Your but. guaranteed opponent is Jeff Blyden, and you feel okay about that matchup. Yeah, I feel, I feel much better playing What was your uh, record against Blyden in the uh, main I, tournament? I, I, I mean, we can find out if we need to, but it's not important. I think that, yeah. Uh, that's That seems about right. I noticed you got a lot more, like, things seemed a lot more facile for you over the course of the day with that deck. Yeah. And that doesn't surprise me, given the complexity of the deck that you drafted. Mark showing us Scepter, Force Spike, Spell Snare, something else. That. Standstill, Flash Freeze, Shackles, something else. Ooh, Witch Temper? Thank you important. It is. It is. You gotta keep the traditions alive. Avi, if you Avi, if you bring your dolphin set up to Richmond, I'll bring my uh, my GameCube adapter. Um, yeah, I, I dismember jokes are important. I was I was instructed by my wife to make a twid, twiddle my bone flute joke today, so uh, there that is. Um, because she, like a cultured person, read Inquest magazine back in the day. Back in the day, indeed. I think that's when I learned to play Magic, but never got anything more than playing with, like, one or two friends. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think I was in second grade, so I think this is a fair statement. Yeah, we uh, we definitely played a lot of Magic in elementary school and summer camp. That was kind of a thing for us back in the day. I I believe these statements entirely. And uh, some, of these, some of these folks are... Uh... Does it count as making the joke if I just say you, I was supposed to make the joke? Yeah, because no one is playing Twiddle or Bone Flute. So I guess I can make the joke, like, in two weeks when I go to Indy and play side events, but, you know, then I might get an unsporting conduct warning for talking about twiddling my Bone Flute. So... This, this... I mean, I I think... <laughs> I think you might get a UC minor for that, kind of depending on the exact environment you're in. I, I hope... <laughs> I hope a judge would be... Yeah, if a judge hears it, you should get a UC minor for that. A, I hope a judge would at least talk to me about it. I'm yeah. Worried, you know, I'm worried, though, that they might not. Now, are you worried that they might not because it's like, yeah, it's Eric. Or are you worried that they might not because they didn't think to do it when you really no, feel they should have? because it's me, and I don't like that. That worries me. Yeah, you don't want the special treatment. Brandon is trying to figure out a way out of this room, just as he's found out a way into this room. He made it! Brandon is still alive, chat. We will. Thanks, Brandon. It was nice having you here. You warmed my legs up real good. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was nice and toasty. <laughs> like, give us, like, three more months, and that would have been, like... Fantastic. I know. I feel like neither of us are really in need of a lot of excess. I don't. I'm no, not in I, need of I a lot of like excess warmth. I feel like we both have <laughs> excess warmth as it is. Um, it, it wasn't terrible. We My enjoyed friend. his company. Yeah, it was nice. Oh, hang on, I've done something bad. Come on. I believe you need to hit the corner of the black box. Okay. Cool. Uh, that just opened. Yeah, up and we can window. just. 
Dink. That's fine. And then I'll just delete this window. Great. Yay. And then we just need to scroll down. My water bottle is indeed very orange. It used Ooh, to have... you did find it. Well, yeah. It was right here, apparently. Ah. It used to have a black lid, but then that broke at yeah. the MCQ. I, I, I was there for this. Yeah, it was... We had two mishaps with the water bottle. Well, different water bottles at the Brent MCQ. did spill his water all over... Several all deck deck lists. <gasps> yeah. Ex turn one exploration from Joe. He Ooh, that's huge that's, for him. Yes, it is. That could be an enormous. Oh, Mark firing back with mocks into visions. Not onto all the decks. Oh, that would have been tragic. An island on top of that. So Mark Mark is right on top of the mana game here with the no. mocks. Joe only playing that third land. Poor tent. For now. Seeing oh, three basics. Yeah, no. I don't think And one of each. Yeah, I know. He is, he's got the balance game on point. Now, given that he has three basics in play, I think we're going to see a... Sh oh, we're not seeing a shuffle here. He will draw a forest beginning of Mark's upkeep. He must be pretty confident in, in you know, his maybe, hand. Maybe he has Kiki Jiki. Because that's a five mana card. Mark with a uh, library of Alexandria. Oh, it's Reggie. It's Raging Regisaur. Oh. And he is not willing to bait that counter. Interesting. Mark casting a cantrip of some kind. Good point. He, he would need a third third red sword. Yeah. Well, that's the second red source. It's but. Carnage Tyrant, folks. That's... That... Oh, no. That makes sense. Mark can't counter that. He can't shackles it. He... He can't dismember it. He can Mystical Tutor. Yeah, what are his outs here? You went to sleep and woke up and we're still going? Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, we that's how a lot of us feel. <laughs> uh, we have been here... For 11 hours from yep. when we arrived. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm hungry. I'm assuming Eric might be hungry. A little I don't bit know. hungry. Very hungry. We want some dinner. Yeah. And we got a few more hours to go. We got a playoff coming. Because we got a playoff coming. So, Ooh, I, you know. I scrolled this window when I shouldn't have, but also Ashiak's not in play. Let's get Carnage Siren up here. Yeah. Let's bring Carnage Siren up. Good old Carny T. Carny T. Your friend and mine, Carnage Tyrant. What's the cheapest card proxied for VRD? There are plenty of, like, 10 cent cards proxied. Yeah. Uh, probably some of the newer hate cards, honestly. Oh, like Devout Decree? Yeah, Devout Decree. It might Decree? be a lame copy of Devout Decree. Yeah. We, we had a. We had a few cards that were pretty not normally competitive played cards. Yep. The, and, all the all the M twenty eight cards were on my list of stuff that might come up, especially Veil of Summer. Yes, I I honestly would have been surprised if Veil of Summer didn't get picked. Yeah, what it's a card. just so good. And with blue and black being as powerful as they are in this Veil of Summer is just Ooh, Avi sees the play. Bribery for World Spine Worm. Interesting. But Mark chooses to put Time Walk on top of his library. Just buying some time. Maybe he has okay. bribery in hand. Maybe, and he just needs to get the lands out. Yeah, he might just not have access to that land. I can't quite see And he hand. does he does have the Ancestral on one, so if he does Time Walk, he does get those. Yep, that's so. true. That's more cards for him. More cards is more potential answers. And he passed the turn. Well, it's not as though he dies immediately to Carnage Tyrant. Yeah, right? he, he has 20 life. That, Carnage Tyrant's a 7 power creature. That is four swings. But Joe Joe has employed the has deployed the giant implacable death lizard. Yeah, no, the you know <laughs> that there is that flavor text and I do love the flavor it's text. It's so good. Sometimes the correct Maneuver is just to deploy the giant implacable death lizard. And that's what we have here. So you, you can't argue with the, the logic of that, uh... Yeah, and unless Mark briberies up something bigger, the and death lizard... And saying Carney T and Brainstorm in the same deck, we are aware that it seems agree. strange, but 
right now, it's doing the job. It's that classic Joe wisdom. Um, it's gotten Joe this far. And uh, I, I don't think Brainstorm's great in this deck either. He's got one fetch, yep, and the crop rotation. That is about it. Yep. But. He's here. We're not. It may yep, not be yep. amazing, but it is better than nothing. It's probably better than I would have done. <laughs> At least right now. That's why I'm like, can I just help for this one? Because right. uh, I don't know this format at all. Do you feel like you've learned something about this format, though, today? I, I definitely have, and I think that I will have to... I, I have told Mark that I will play in the next one. Mm -hmm. um, so, and my, my picks are going to be very dependent on who else is in the room, I feel. Joe Wisdom takes us to Stardew Valley and goes strip mining, getting rid of an island from Mark. Nope. Well. Rotating those crops. Let's see, so he's leaving Mark with access to two blue. It looks like. And Mark, Mark has um, Archmage's Charm, so being off triple blue is relevant. Although I don't know if he has that in his hand right now. Um, he draws Delver Merchant. And he's Scroll, got another another the island on that. Shackles. Joe does smell that counter magic. He does. Mark did miss his land drop, so the, uh, oh, no, like there's he, one. He drew an island off the Ancestral. Yep, drawing an island off the Ancestral, passing the turn back to Joe. Or, no. He's librarying. I misunderstood his hand gesture. I would have been surprised, but here's Delver. Delver seems like a good choice. <laughs> Library to go to eight. Oh, time Wait. walk. Yep, there's the time walk that we were waiting for. <laughs> Adult videos has resolved. <laughs> Gotta have those ancestral visions. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Is that... Get probes free. Yeah, it looked like a probe on the back end. Stand still. Not gonna do Mark a lot of favors here. This yeah. is tough. And get probe is definitely just a free card in Mark's hand right now. He's... Yeah, but where's that bribery? <laughs> Snapcaster? Merchant Scroll. Yep. Yeah, he is mm. he is not worried about that two life. Merchant Scroll for Cunning Wish. What's Mark gonna Cunning Wish for? This, this is a good question. If nothing else, Mark does a good job at keeping us intrigued. Yeah, he's keeping Let's... us interested, taking some yeah. actions. Get probing. Wants to see that hand. See Reggie, draw a card. Reggie is a good card. And so now Mark knows that he can be hit for 10 this coming turn, but Reggie itself does not have haste, which means uh, Mark still has a turn to come out of this. He does. But that turn seems like it involves uh, Cunning Wish, which costs 3, and uh, Joe has cast Reggie, swings for 10. If only Joe had taken the bolt, which has... Not gone out in this yeah, draft whatsoever. No there is no there's bolt no in bolt. the entire draft. It's unreal. And right now, a bolt would have been really good for Joe. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. It's tapped a little bit differently, of course. But red was criminally ignored in this draft. Just criminally. Very, very ignored. Mark's looking dead. I'm not seeing it. I, I am. I am also not seeing it. Shackles doesn't save you, buddy. No. Didn't flip his Delver. Nope. He's got nothing going on here. I don't... I I think this is going to be going on to game three here yeah, very, about, very shortly. We're about to go to the rubber match. Mark Caterberg and Joe Wisdom playing for their tournament lives in a game three. Yes. Yes. Bolt. No Bolt. Bolt was not drafted. I'm, I'm sorry to report to Twitch user Bolt de Burb that there is no Bolt to Bolt a Burb. I know. Also, Bird did not get picked either. No Bolt and no Burb. Yeah, no Bolt or Burb. The closest, I, the closest I'm, I'm I've sorry. Been, yeah, the closest I've been to any kind of Burb was uh, two nights ago when I drafted M20 and there was a Goblin Burb grabber. What does mm -hmm. it do? It grabs Burb. That's yeah. what it do. And Mark yeah, the, the closest I think we have to a Burb in this uh, 
And this is Shalai, which is not really a burb. Or no, well, depending on how you define it, we do have Noble Hierarch, which is a burb like. Yeah, yeah. So here we go. Burb like effect. It's burbish. It, it's burb adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to game three here. Oh, Mark says it's time for curfew. He, Car- he's going to put Tarnage Tyrant to sleep. It is past your bedtime for that, me, too. That would? Um, <laughs> I didn't see which card he the pulled. The bribery wasn't even in his deck. That's his bribery. Is Could that have been what he was going to wish for? I, You can't wish for bribery. It's a sorcery. Cunning wish oh. gets instant. Ooh. Mark was just spinning his wheels, I guess. Maybe he was going to get curfew. Okay. Uh, Perhaps. Cur- curfew is an instant. He might have been going to get curfew yeah. once... Reggie came down. That was it. Yeah. That is definitely some cards that he will enjoy having in his deck in this game, I believe. Yeah, these two are playing. They're these are they're playing for bottles tonight. So this is this is true. Whoever loses this is not in top four. Yeah. Whoever loses this match, they they, yeah. they miss top four, which means no prize. Yeah. It means they're not qualified for the next VR. They're not all qualified for the next VRD. Yep. Is it top four or top two? I believe top four qualify for the next VRD. Yep. As someone who got in fifth last time, I, I, I seem to recall it's top four. Um, I believe you bribe a giant implacable death lizard with food. Yes, generally food. is the answer. Food. Um. Now that's I, what I would. Im- I would attempt to bribe it with. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if you've played any of those, like, dinosaur-based survival games, but I think food usually is the way. Yeah, a few what goats. Like, yeah, some goats. Like, Maybe a cow. Mm, yeah. It is a, a giant implacable death lizard. Yeah, m- multiple, multiple herd animals, I think, are the, yeah. are the, the goal here. Or, I don't know, just like... Let, just let's see what cash. we got from... Mark. Oh, we see an island. The death lizard is in Joe's we hand. We see the charm. The death lizard cannot be bribed. Oh no, Joe is mulliganing. Death lizard returns to the library and could be bribed. I did see Archmage's the, charm. A I, Mario yeah, hat. I, saw. I did play I did play Mario Odyssey. I think Cappy can bribe. Carnage Asada, mm. nice. I I like I mean if you give it a a cow, I believe that could qualify as Carnage Asada. Chat's making me hungry, Kyle. I understand it. <laughs> the thing is, we're already hungry. It's making me hungry. I'm just going to drink, drink my water very aggressively at them. That, that's one way to handle it. You know, you got to do something. You got to do something. It's not like there's food in this room. I guess I could eat the gush book. That's about it. Yeah, I don't... I don't even see the gush book anymore. There's just a box labeled cupcakes in this room. Well, Come on. <laughs> Mark's wife does like cupcakes. Meme loves cupcakes. And uh, and they apparently are qualifying for bribery mm-hmm. to get you into a VRD if you're so interested. Oh, did you know I can bake really well? Because I... Yeah, we might We might just... Hmm. I mean... Huh. I am also a baker, so... <laughs> Oh, sounds like the, we're going to have the, the great VRD bake-off next time. That would be an interesting, interesting, uh, that would be an interesting buy-in for, for a VRD. Just bake You goods. have, but it has to be homemade. You have to, oh no. You, th- that could go terribly wrong or terribly right, and I'm not sure which to expect. Joe Wisdom with the, uh, responding to Mark's, uh, Fairy Conclave with, Island Ruby Preordain, and it looks like we have uh, Pestermite and Forest off the Preordain here. That looks to be the case. Those are both going away. And I cannot make out what that is he did draw off of it. Uh, it is Factor Fiction, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Mark Ling. Ooh, Ashiok. Ashi turn to Ashiok again. Oh, Ren and Six. Goodbye. And I'm I am certain that Mark was hoping to see that Carnage Tyrant go away there. Get rid of the Carnage Tyrant. Get rid of World un- Unfortunately, Fine Worm. that's not the case. Looks like you drew the Islet for turn. Mm-hmm. Swan Song, Deceiver Exarch, Fiery Islet, all in hand. Islet comes down. 
passes the turn back to Mark. This is the game Mark is looking for. A game it where really Joe just is. hangs out. It it really is. Crop rotation. Vision. Splinter twin. twin. No XR twin today. Oh, okay, that makes a life a lot harder for Joe as he's going to need to summon a third red source up here. Plays the XR. Losing a little life from Fiery Islet. Not that that's really Mark's biggest concern here. Not at all. Moxon are very powerful. Yes, I... I can confirm that uh, powerful is a it's a good term to use for Moxon. Exar uh, Exarch takes one loyalty off of Ashiok Dream Render and, and gets dismembered admembered. post combat. Joe fires off Factor Fiction in response. I don't think this is what they meant when they said E O T F O F Y L because this is the end of Joe's turn. This is not what he wants to be having to cast Factor Fiction. Carnage Tyrant, Elvish Spirit Guide, Strip Mine, Careful Study, and Ancient Tomb all in play here for Mark to make two piles. What do your piles look like here, Kyle? Honestly, I think four and one. Four yeah. and one. Carney, G, uh, I, or Blast. I, I believe that was the correct... I believe that was the correct split. Carney T or Bust has been called, and Carney T resolves into Joe's hand. Not on the board yet. Not yet. It's only Not a yet. matter of time. A couple more mana. Mark kicks down the Ashiok, but is this going to be enough? Yeah, no I don't... Need, no need to separate your Exile and your Graveyard, Joe. They're all going to the and same that place. that was a negate on the top, but I did not see the other three cards. And there were some other cards in there. There were definitely some see. other cards in there. I could not <laughs> identify what they were, unfortunately. Tarmogoyf off the top for Joe. That gets him a little bit faster of a clock here when he doesn't have the lands available for Carnage Tyrant. But yeah. it's a one-two. Yeah, the only, the only card is the Dismember. And Flash Freeze firing off against the Tarmogoyf. Oh, and that's something. That is a card. In response to Flash Freeze, it's Dispel. Joe Wisdom taking a so, damage. We are still, I believe, at a 1-2 on our Tarmogoyf. Everything in the graveyard is an instant Flash Freeze Dispel. Yeah, he he could choose to draw off the island next turn. I don't know if that's in his best interest if he's trying to play that Carnage Tyrant. Let's see, that's in hand. Carnage Tyrant, Sun Song, and what's our friendly card at the bottom? I cannot identify it. Yeah, it's hard to hard to tell from I here. Am, I am not great at identifying art on Oh, the it's Thrun the Last Troll. Oh. I had not looked yet. It is Thrun. Not a terrible another card, card to have. Another card that's very hard for Mark to deal with in this matchup. He really is going to need yes. to bribe up that World Spine Worm. Or somehow to close this game out before... Yeah, there's a big play that Mark needs to make. I don't know what it is right now. We're snapping back. Snapcaster Mage dismembers Members the Tarmogoyf. That's get rid of the Tarmogoyf. He slows down the immediate clock, but and he does have one more activation with Ashiok at this point, and if he is so inclined, I believe it might be better to just leave that your. Ashiok is that your opponents cannot search their library, correct? Yes, but Joe slams the second green source and smashes the run onto Ooh. the battlefield. Uh, Joe should be losing a, a life for Fiery Islet. Should he have been able to factor fiction with that Ashiok on the field? Yeah, that's not a search. That's right, it's just choose. Okay, the life loss for Fiery Islet has been recorded. Very good. Beautiful. I don't need to type anymore. Mark attacking with Fairy Conclave brings Joe down to 14. He's, he's determined to try to get this chip damage in any way he can. Counting Joe's library, though. It seems like Mark's deck right now is split between these two axes of attack, and he confirms that by exiling some cards from Joe's deck that um, are obscured Mountain by Glare. Man. Mountain, Island, Reggie, and something. We will 
definitely have to work out the lighting issue for the next one. Yep, that's definitely something I think something it's just the lights the in the head. kitchen. We need one of but, those lighting umbrella things. Yeah. Those little shady guys. Well, I think it's also that it's an overhead light. Yeah. I believe that's a large, yes. large part of the equation. Run attacks for four. Carney T is here. Mark draws two cards with Archmage's Charm. He's looking for something big. Something world-sized. Something the Maybe size of Maybe something to offer a bribe? Yeah. Quick bribe. Joe at 13. Mark at a precarious 6. Facing down a 7-6 Trampler. And a 4-4 four, four, Thrun the last troll. He can't target anything. He can't survive on this board right now. Because he has... He can summon up yep. a second toughness. And yeah. uh, he can he can take... If he blocks Fairy Conclave in one for one and Snappy on the other, he takes yeah. exactly six and dies. Yeah, he needs to get one more toughness on board at the very least. Yeah. It's Treasure Cruise. All right, that, Mark. That is a way to draw cards. And Desperately maybe. draws his last three cards. True Name won't do it. Time Walk. Time Walk Whoa, might. Oh, Time Walk. Unlocking the Secrets of Time for Mark. People have and done you more said the last. last three cards. Oh he got gosh. one more. He got one more card out of Time Walk. It's bribery! He got the bribery! is here! Now, has Joe had the foresight to sideboard at World Spinor? Let's find out. Pester might! Wait. Huh? That's Pestermite, it, right? I I believe so. It looks like Pestermite. It's definitely not World Spine Worm. It is definitely a blue card. Untapped Fairy Conclave. So Joe did have the foresight to sideboard out World Spine Worm in the face of bribery. He knew what Mark was packing. This is a format where everyone does have pseudo perfect information. They know. Mark what is tosses his pool? hand on the board and concedes. Joe Wisdom is into the second Let place us debacle. Record this result. And I'm going to take team. us into the standings once you do that. We have standings. So we have three people. Three people tied for second. Oh. And that is a. This is incredible. <laughs> this so is... one of them gets second. The other two effectively. Yeah. Are third and fourth, which does not terribly it, matter. It only matters for pick order for the 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 bottles, right? We are of course playing for delicious bottles of alcohol today. But Elaine is going to get her her run of the table here in terms of the bottles. He got there. Yeah, hey, Mark. So we... Hi, Mark. Well, I mean, unfortunately, he took out the world's mind. Yeah, it's yeah. So take take a look, take so, a look here, yeah, Mark. You we, you tell we us have how we're proceeding. Three people tied in second. I I don't know what that TB column is. Joe Wisdom does have a one. Uh, yes. yeah. I I do not know what that is. That was something that. But uh, oh. Bly, it does show Blyden as second in terms of points, based yes. on what I believe is game score. Okay. Okay. So well, with that, Brandon did. You could. We could have Brandon and Joe play. Brandon did say since he has not yet supplied a bottle, he might just bow out of it and let Joe have his choice because he has not supplied one. So. But he it did also like say he wants to win. He did. So Jeff is going to take second. Elaine, of course, taking first. first. And and it sounds like we have might a, have Brandon and and Joe play. We might not. We might have a playoff with us for a moment. We might we'll have find dinner. Out what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dinner is uh, dinner is a good decision here at this point. I can feel dinner coming to me soon. Can can you hear it calling in the air tonight? Yes. Oh Lord. <laughs> I mean, I can hear that Phil Collins drum line. Oh yeah. Elaine, what's that? Hi, Elaine. Yeah, come on in. Sure. 
I uh, give me just a moment. I will mute the mic before I take it off because we're gonna hear absolutely, and we're gonna hear from our first place, uh, our first place finisher, our champ, Elaine Cow. Kyle, thank you for joining us. It was good to have you here in the booth. But we're gonna have Elaine hop in. She is our VRD expert. I think your mic is muted, so be mindful of that. Hey guys, how's it going? Are, are people still watching this for some reason? They are. Hi. Elaine, congratulations. First you. off, you drafted a fantastic deck. You played it expertly. I was really impressed with you today. Thanks. Was not going to go into the mistakes I made or the like I mean, drafting. Okay, like, yes. Everyone, everyone made mistakes, right? Everybody made mistakes today. But I think you were the person who made the fewest. If Cryptic Command was Mr. Confluence, and Mana Leak was Miscalculation, and Search for Escanta was something else, I think this deck would have won went a lot better. Or, and if I had floated Energy Flux until later. Mm, yeah, I think you could have floated Energy Flux until later for but sure. Mark took no rod. Like, yes. And I was like, well, that means I should probably take the flux. Right, that means there's a run on the bank for these effects, right? And that's something right. we were talking about here. I also here. lost to Biden, even though I had all of these effects, so like, <laughs> it just doesn't matter. Alright, so it looks like we are going into the third, fourth tiebreaker match here. Yeah. Elaine okay. taking first, Jeff Blyden in second. And now we have Brandon Curry and Joe Wisdom. So Brandon and I lost to on camera. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, having turned to Dark Depths. Yep. Is, is, yeah. Is, is really, no, having turned to Channel and to Kill You is really good. Yeah, turn to Channel and to Kill You is a hell of a thing for sure. Yeah. Um, and then turn three. And I almost beat it. I almost you beat did. The, uh, you were very close to beating that, that Merit thing. Lage. I actually had no answer in my deck for the second Lage because I don't have Snapcaster Mage. Brandon's so I, hand here does not look good. He has Emrakul, he has Grindstone, and five land. This is not what he's looking for here against Joe. Probably not. Joe, oh, he kept? He's kept it. All right. And what's Joe playing? He's playing the, oh, he's playing. Joe throws down Preordain here. Top bottom. Leaves crop rotation on top and draws it. Another a land, coin? a basic land, is not what Brandon is looking for here. Oh, is that a Courser of Crew Fix? I think it is. I do it's, see not a, a, it's not a... I see a Courser in there, huh. in beside that nurturing peat land. It just looks weird because it's in front of a white-bordered basic. <laughs> ah, bless you, Proxies. How does he have to fetch land for this brainstorm? Mm. I don't. So this he has is crop why, rotation. So this, oh yeah. This is, so this is why I took the ponder oh, 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 out for the brainstorm because like, just like put two on top, and if you don't have the fetch land, yes. You know, I do have three fetch lands though. Right. I have the. Uh, you have prismatic vista. I have, pris pris I have a the tap land that like you search out two basics. Mm, mirrored landscape, right? But that was that did work. That that card was better than I expected it to be. Yeah. Nurturing Peatland for Brandon and a pass. Leaving this grindstone exposed here. Not that I think Joe can really do much about it. Yeah, Strand, Myriad Landscape, and Prismatic Vista. That sounds right. Mm -hmm. And they were quite good. Yeah, I mean... Joe doesn't have a very fast hand, which is weird. I felt. He, I feel like... Oh, he does have a mana He's drain. holding that drain, which he cannot cast right now, because that middle land is a forest? I believe, it's a, I believe it's an island. It's hard. Yeah. Okay. I believe you. You're, you. You know what? You're the champ. You tell me which basic lands are which, honestly. I don't know. I don't know. You know. You're the champ. I, I just can't tell, honestly. Whoop. I think Brandon's a little tired. Oh, he's like, definitely tired. Windfall time. Windfall. That yes, I agree that it's a Vulcan something. Windfall does get drained. That is an island. Champ knows her stuff. Shouldn't have oh, questioned man. her. So, Joe has seven mana. Yup. If he has the land. So, ha has to have something at this point. Like, I would assume so. I think there's a Kiki in his hand. Not that he can cast, cast the, it. Can cast the Kiki. He has twin. If yeah, he has Exarch, he can go off. Or Pestermite. Doesn't really work. Except he doesn't have it. 
Well, he, 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 he can't go off this turn. Oh, he would, he have, he'd have haste. to wait a turn. You're right. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that does that, I think, is uh, Kiki. Yeah, Kiki and Exarch yes. would do it, but Twin and Exarch But Twin Exarch does not. You're right. Does not have haste. Well, he could present lethal. Speaking of, uh, Twin, is that getting banned? I mean, is that getting unbanned tomorrow, I I'm... think? <laughs> I mean... I would be shocked if there was a big unban coming tomorrow. Uh, I mean, we all know what we want, right? And by we all, I mean I know what I want. I, what do you want? Uh, Hogak ban and nothing. And nothing? Hogak ban and nothing. Give me nothing. Um, I'm going to sacrifice a goat tonight to get to the Stoneforge Mystic Gods. And, really? Uh, yes. You th but, okay. Do you think Stoneforge, is Stoneforge Mystic just a card you want? Or channel? do you think it's good for the form? Ooh, channel! Big game for Brandon. Is he trying to bait? He baits out something. He, Joe casts a spell. <laughs> jo Joe responds with spell. <laughs> what? Okay. What is that? What do you think that is? Instant instant spell. It's not a bait. Right. It's, it is in fact this is bait. Brandon trying to win the game. It is mission, mission briefing. briefing. That makes sense. Yeah, okay. Cannot mission briefing into... Brandon taps mission briefing. Thank you. <laughs> um, Brandon could just have Remical. I, as far as I understand, he, he does, does. He does. He does Accord have Remical. According to chat, like... he's got it, and Joe is deceased. <laughs> yeah, Kyle is back in the player area, so he can ask these questions, check on things. But Joe has. Joe finishes resolving mission briefing. He can cast it until end of turn if he picks the thing. Yes. But he, he can't pick anything. Yeah, I feel like Joe's deck is a little inconsistent. It's like you needed a lot more fixing in order to, to play this Kiki in your three color deck. Joe took the, I think, the line that Dan Zielinski took last draft where he waited until the middle of the draft to kind of pick a thing to do. But unlike Dan, he didn't pick something that was linear and powerful. He didn't have a... He, he, yeah, but I don't think he came into the draft with that idea. No. I think Dan had the infect strategy. Dan told me, absolutely, that he had right. the infect strategy. Brandon summons up Emrakul. And, and Joe scoops up his cards, yeah. chooses not to engage with that. Everyone, Everyone's favorite horrible tentacle monster just <laughs> eats up the old board. Yep. Sometimes you get cthulhu and there's nothing you can do. Something like that. Brandon looking longingly at Mind Twist, a Mind Slaver tosses it in there. So, I have done three verities so far. Yes. At no point have I played a proactive combo strategy. Really? Yes. And you've placed, you've placed first. Yes. You've placed... Third, but tied for first. Third, but tied for first. And then I placed third, and it was t tied three, four, five. Right. Yes, you were tied with me and Naveen. Um, and basically what I'm saying is I'm trying to encourage people to stop playing these combo decks. That way I can just win fair mid-range mirrors, which is so much more fun. <laughs> well, see, so I thought you were trying to give legitimate <laughs> advice, but what, what you're doing, what a, shockingly... Shockingly, Elaine is trying to give everyone advice that plays into her plan. Never would have seen it coming. I'm not saying it'll increase my win rate. I'm saying it will increase my enjoyment. It'll increase her fun rate. Right. Yes. I see. Because, it. If, because if I just didn't have to play against, like, you know, turn one, you know, seven mana, or like... Or, you know, turn two vault key, for example. Yeah. <laughs> not that that's happened to you today or but last time. It happened to me... Off, that should have happened on camera. But Blyden goes, I forgot he had Mana Vault. And he goes, he goes, he had Mana Crypt all three of our matches. He goes, turn one on the play, land Mana Vault, um, sorry, land Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, um, the Time Vault, turn two, um, land Transmute Artifact. Wow. And I'm like, oh, well. Okay. Okay, okay, I guess. That's pretty good. Yeah, what are you going to do, right? Uh, Get my shit kicked in. That's yeah, what, apparently. Either counter that spell or die. Yeah, Those are kind of your options. Didn't have it. Mm. I, I needed that spell pierce. If 
Should have taken the spell pierce earlier. I think I undervalued that card. On the ban and restricted as announcement, do I think Lincivian masks block is a big consideration? Well, okay. I think no, and let me tell you why. Uh, my friend, my friend Jeff, I don't know if he still has it, but in his cube, he used to have an RK post altered Lin Civi that had wings that were RK post had drawn wings on it and written flying in the text box, okay. and that was binding rules text in his cube. And he huh. had also altered a bunch of other white creatures to be rebels, just to make like white aggressive decks better. Sure. Uh, so with that in mind, if Did Lin he Errata Thirst Phenology to be a rebel. <laughs> like, some, like, just blue other instance. garbage, right? I <laughs> like wish. Blue instance are rebels. Fast fun, mind twist, mind oh, flavor, pedal. That hand looks. Goodbye. Like it doesn't do anything. It didn't but... do anything. So, so with that in mind, I don't think Lin Civi can come off the band list. She's just too powerful in formats where she has other text around it <laughs> onto her, and so do a bunch of other cards. What do you think, Elaine? <laughs> Um, I feel like at this point it's a meme and it's part of magic culture <laughs> that Lin Civi is banned. Yeah. So, but like, you know what? You know why it matters? Because it means you, if you unban Lin Civi, you can't get it. You can't get it with Spike. <laughs> That's huge. But you can get linger. You you can get lingering souls and intangible virtue. Intangible virtue, virtue because well. those are banned in Innistrad block constructed. You just gotta get them both. Exactly. <laughs> oh man, I'm so glad that you you and I were on the ban. Oh, it's any card that has been banned on at some point. Oh, oh right. Oh man, you can get. So you can just unban whatever from those formats, and it doesn't matter. Spike doesn't care. She does whatever she wants. Yeah. I mean, that's on flavor for Spike to do whatever she wants, I think. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> so we have Zorb, uh, Painter, Mind Twist, Peatland, Courser, Flooded Grove, Misty. On the left here. You'd have to unban the artifact lands and skull clamp in mirrored and standard. Mm, that's true. If you just unban all that old crap, I don't know. I think that is reasonably. Well, I mean, is it banned in mirrored and block? Um, because mirrored and standard is not is not a thing with an official ban list. Yeah, what's banned? Yeah, right. Because you can't unban those cards. I forget what's banned in mirrored and block now. I think I want to say disciple is banned in block. That makes sense. Probably Disciples the artifact lands oh too. My God. Disciple's such a terrible busted <laughs> card in that format. Okay, but like, I've never played a constructed format where Disciple was a playable card. Yeah. It's not playable in modern, and no. no point has it been playable in that affinity deck. Wow, look at this ban list for Mirrodin Block Aether Vile, Artifact Lands, Ravager, Darksteel Citadel, Disciple. You just and, can't play anything. And the Clamps. Yeah, they're. Have fun with your Molder Slug deck, I guess. Uh, tooth and Nail. Ooh, Tooth and Nail, that's true. Tooth and Nail with Elves. Hell yeah. Alright, so we've got some lands facing off against each other here. No early action. If the artifact lands were legal, Disciple would be good in Modern. True. What? M mana. What is... Oh, three mana. What it's Dak Faden? Dak Faden. It's Dak Faden. I don't think we've seen Dak Faden like yeah. all day. Oh yeah, the card is not amazing. It's fine. It, oh sorry, the greatest thief in the multiverse, Dak Faden. Sorry. He's dead. Still the greatest He's thief dead. in the multiverse, even if Pada he's Adele, dead. better thief. I guess you can't be a good thief if you're dead. That's very sad. I mean, but Pada Adele like steals things, steals things from the library, and also gives you information, which was crucial against Mark. But yes. That wasn't on camera. Oh, thank you. I like my shirt too. It has jellyfish on it. <laughs> has jellyfish on it? Yeah, they're great. Yeah. R.I.P. Dak Faden. Altar of the Brood for Brandon Curry. Brood. I think that's a very questionable inclusion. Brandon was trying to do something that didn't work out, and then he just kind of got stuck with Altar of the Brood. I mean, you don't have to register. You don't have to put it in your deck. Am I interacting with chat? Yeah, I usually interact with chat. Who is who is that? Is that someone that we know? I don't know. All I know is that I usually interact with chat when I stream. So I'm I pretty mean, sure Elaine interacts with chat too. Yeah, but 
when there are people in chat. You look, okay, but but I'm trying to say something nice about you. <laughs> Will you accept it or not? That's fair. <laughs> you guys should follow me on Twitch. <laughs> um, yes. Follow um, Lynn. Watch her, watch her try to stay in Top 1200 Mythic. Uh, I actually fell out last night. No! Which, I went 0-4, and, and I was like on so much tilt, and then I won like one game. I was in... 99% and I was like okay I need to stop playing because I'm just gonna like just tilt, tilt off be tilted off it's the worst yeah I I think the worst part was go, like playing against vampires like drawing like the perfect time wipe hand like time wipe mm -hmm. on turn four hand and then like they play like seven and like seven Adonto vanguards and I'm like Jesus oh Christ. just kill me right Corsair <laughs> smell you I also it like was, me a lot, but it was the, the Registrar Alpha. Oh, Reggie's here. Reggie got milled. That card was interesting. <laughs> chat, chat getting weird. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, like I'll take compliments, but take the compliment. Um, I'm. She already did. I'm. I had Asian parents, so I was trained to, to like never accept compliments. <laughs> That's kind of how it works. <laughs> And I was, I was, uh, I was born with Jewish guilt, so you know, <laughs> hashtag Sam. <laughs> uh, is Alter of the Brood a beneficial trigger? Lol. I think it is. Joe has only top two get an auto invite. Okay. Only top, and I was gonna be like, you know what? I'm just gonna commentate the next one but if i win i can't just commentate the next one right. i have to defend my honor yeah you have to defend your title absolutely you've got the belt you got to defend it man we should get a belt oh we should get a belt <gasps> why don't we have a belt we should have a belt oh yeah subscribe now use your twitch prime and we'll put that money toward a belt <laughs> not my money i don't know it's mark's decision i gotta convince him to make up get make a belt i'm sure mark will make a belt. Are we in the same room? I mean, Elaine and I are this in the same room, but we're not in the same room with the players. The, the players are in the other room. They're in the room where it happens. This yes. is like a library. It's yeah. like really nice. It's actually. really classy. Yeah. Much it's nicer than my apartment. <laughs> Much nicer than my apartment. <laughs> but that's because Mark and Neem both make a shit ton of money. Right, and they have a real, you know, house. A real house. Brandon yeah. is here to twist time. He's not here to waste time. He's here to twist it. No, the swan song. Your spell's a bird. Have a bird. That bird is actually gonna do some work. He has some planes. This planes walk is on the other side. All so. right, Chad is definitely getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What's the sub goal for a belt? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question for Mark. Um, <laughs> I think we can convince Mark to get. I bet belt. we can convince Mark to. Oh yeah, especially if I I, I get to wear the belt, that would be amazing. <laughs> De dear chat, I am married and monogamous, and also I'm pretty sure Elaine's not interested. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look, I don't know. I'm just replying. I'm interacting to chat. See, you kind of ignored that because I also saw that and I chose not to engage with it. <laughs> But, you know. <laughs> I will not unbutton the button on my shirt. This is the worst. I will not. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, Chad? Hmm, why am I not? I thought Emily was watching. Where's my wife? <laughs> Emily, set these nerds straight. Uh, um, what is happening? I'm modding Avi. <laughs> One button. Oh God! <laughs> you people are are just the worst. Avi, you're modded. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> so Joe Wisdom is casting a spell. <laughs> <laughs> he is casting a spell. Stuff is happening. I don't know. We got completely off track. <laughs> Because you had to listen to chat. I don't know. I was interact. I'm trying to be a good Twitch person. I don't know. I forgot it was not Wednesday. <laughs> On Wednesday, I get weird in chat. Yes, Wait, that is very true. Why? Why isn't Kyle modded? That's a good point. Let's mod Kyle. He's actually here. His purpose is to help. 
so follow this guy at Pixel Crimes Live or whatever. Yes, twitch.tv slash Pixel Crimes Live. <laughs> Where he is even more weird. Than Much us. weirder. I just remember um, last Wednesday when you were talking about, um, what, what was it? Um, breaking into things. <laughs> yes, yes, my story's about breaking into things. Casting this brainstorm. He's casting brainstorm now again. Brainstorm, not really. There was a fetch land. Oh, he's a fetch land. On the it's a fetch land. It's basically ancestor it's recall. It's basically recall. I mean, I had actual ancestor recall. Oh, brag, brag. <laughs> Look at me. Hey, I deserve a good seat this time, and I got one. Look at so me, you know. Miss Second Pick. <laughs> just ban everyone in chat how do i how do i delete someone else's comment how do i delete twitch <laughs> dan lc or whatever i choose i put i'm gonna pretend i didn't see that that is why I just... so magic the gathering brandon and joe are playing it thoughts yes or no <laughs> We are a little loopy, okay? I got here at like 12 hours ago, so... I can't believe I just now found out what Avi's Twitch name meant. What is this Twitch name? When he was like eight, he misspelled poo-poo head, and he's just used it ever since. Oh my god. Can you at least get a birthday shout out? Yeah. For your friend Dan. Happy birthday, Happy Dan! Birthday. Happy birthday, Dan. Stuff is happening on this board. Stuff is happening. happening. Uh, there's a courser. There's an altar. No one is really doing anything is the problem. Yeah, that's true. Winter Orb is on top of Brandon's library. It is an extremely good name origin. There is a big... Is that a Tarmogoyf under the glare zone? Looks like it. Maybe. It's hard to tell. Joe is searching his library. For some reason. <laughs> or is that his graveyard? It's hard to know. It is a Tarmogoyf. Oh, bless. It's a 5-6. It's a 5-6 Tarmo. That is a graveyard. Okay. Sylvan Library. Number one. Can they turn their lights off, lights off so there is no glare? No, because... <laughs> then they wouldn't be able and, to see. <laughs> and I want to tell you, yes, exactly. As Elaine said... In the future, we will probably have different sleeves. We might get different sleeves. We might get one of those umbrella things. Umbrella things. Oh, you know, you know those lighting umbrella things. Yeah. The, uh, oh, that Moonbase has. Yeah. But there's still glare problems at Moonbase, and yeah. it's taken them a while. To and that actually won't stop the overhead light, will it? Mm. Yeah, we just need better sleeves. Yeah, that's fine. Where did I Careful buy study. my shirt? Uh, Old Navy. <laughs> it was like no dollars, y'all. <laughs> It's Wait, got... you could have just unbuttoned one more because you have an undershirt. Yeah, but I'm not going to do what chat tells me to do. <laughs> Once they said unbutton my shirt, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but... <laughs> Look, it's the principle of the thing, Elaine. That's fair. Once they tell me a big would... phrase button. I would button all of these. There are tiny, but I can try. Bad phrase button. <laughs> Bad phrase button. These people and their demands. Take, un unbutton your shirt. Write a song about me. Send Trogdor to my house. <laughs> this has gone far too far. Magic the game. I, you know, I thought tw chat interaction was the game, but watch me interact with chat. Elaine, what am I, how, show me how I'm interacting with chat. <laughs> Uh, you are putting Chet away. <laughs> okay, wait, Avi, Avi saved us. Bless you, Avi. Stormcrow has not been picked yet. Are you sure it's Man, playable? Someone's deleting a lot of stuff. Bless you, Avi. Thank you. F ban <laughs> phase button. Oh, nice. I see. Okay, so Brandon is fetching something, but he's facing down Carney T. He's facing down the implacable death lizard. This is going to be tough. That seems quite strong. I've lost to Kona's Chiron multiple times. Same. Yeah. 
uh, in mostly in standard, mostly on Magic the Gathering Arena. I've also lost to it in Modern, which is embarrassing. In Modern? Yeah. I mean, it's an uncounterable Hexproof card. Like, Though actually, it's gonna those get gen decks are now playing Chandra Awaken in Photo, which I can beat even less. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Have Chandra, an emblem and Chandra, die! Chandra to gets, death! Though Chandra gets Celestial Purged, so eventually you can... Mm. As long as you don't burn to death before you win. That's kind of the problem. If they get one emblem on you, you can survive. The problem with Chandra and Paper is that you get GRB out of the game. Yes! <laughs> This is a water bottle. It's full of water. There's also ice in it, which is also water. <laughs> Chandra doesn't exist. Chandra's not real. Wait, oh man, someone picked Chandra's Phoenix. I didn't realize that. Um, you hope it isn't water? I mean, wait, how have you been surviving this whole time on just water? I drank like six beers. <laughs> and a lot of scotch. <laughs> Just like a ton of alcohol. Speaking of a, lo a ton of alcohol, I'm excited. Yeah? Oh, you're going to get a ton of alcohol. <laughs> exactly. Good for you. Yeah. I'm not going to drink any of it. Mm. It's probably going to be given away as presents, but you know. I mean, that you know what that means? You have, like, multiple buy-ins for VRD. Oh, I could reuse them. Mm-hmm. I still have the one from my first VRD where I got third. I still have that bottle sitting there. Yeah. So just just slowly reintroduce these into the VRD ecosystem. Does that mean we have to have like so 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 if like one of the alcohol bottles is like you know twelve year old thing of scotch, can I like cross it out and then say thirteen? Thirteen. <laughs> fourteen. Yes. Is that how that works? I think you have to. Oh, the handshake. We something missed happened. something. Something died. Brandon got it. We're free! <laughs> okay. Bless cool. you, Brandon! <laughs> Alright. That you freed me from bad Twitch chat! He Eric is not related to Adam Levine. I gotta leave! Right. I'm putting my... Because I'm trying to be a content creator and stuff. Follow me. Here, let me... I'm cool. Uh... Because I try to be a cool person and do stuff. All right, All right have fun. The oh. We'll do the last yes. Okay. Uh, the chat has gotten like super horny, so just be careful. Well, <laughs> super horny. They want me to unbutton my shirt, which I do not understand. <laughs> No, my wife is not in chat. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Well, I mean, they horny for this one. There's an undershirt. You know, people. there's an undershirt, which is why they were like, it's okay to unbutton. But at that point, I was just not willing to acquiesce to their demands. That's true. Yeah, you can't if you give them an inch. I modded Avi and Kyle so they could uh, clean up the place. That's that's for the best. <laughs> See, now you are new Elaine, and you're being asked to take off shirt. This oh, is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Save us, Mark. Well. That's one button. Oh god. Okay, so we're I'm gonna create a new uh, scene here so we can watch the bottle draft. Yes, let's watch that good bottle draft. Oh, and you're still Elaine. You should probably. Uh, I'm okay being Elaine. I That's, mean, she, Elaine did win. She did. If I could be Elaine, my life would be way better. You. <laughs> All right. So here's the draft area camera. So it's mostly over, except we have to show. The bottle draft, which is really important. It really is the most exciting part. Um, and let's get one more camera. So, chat, is there any feedback we have? I, first of all, thanks everybody for subbing. Yeah, we really appreciate it. That's super nice of you, though. Um, it's also cool that people get to call out bad picks now. Oh, it's so good. Really, the whole reason. That bad pick emoji. Is so good. Emote. Emoji? Emote. emote. On emote. Twitch, it's an emote. So. Look, I I was, you know, I'm not going to say that I thought emoji was a cool way to say emotions, just like Justin McElroy did. I'm not necessarily going to say that's true, but I'm also not going to say that's not true. That's so reasonable, I think. <laughs> uh, and last one is here. We're going to get the top view. Sorry, I'm building a description of the fly here. We didn't have any of this planned out. <laughs> yes, Brandon will not be drafting a bottle because he also 
didn't bring a bottle because of reasons. True. No, Brandon, Brandon will be drafting a bottle. He won. Uh, according to uh, Kyle Richter, Kyle oh, says yes. Brandon will not be drafting a bottle because he's just picking oh, getting a buy-in back. That's very classy. That is a very not, a reasonable thing to do. Okay, so here we have all of the... We ha should be able to see everything. Uh, let me know if you can't see. You can see all the bottles that are laid out here in front. I know it's a little fuzzy. If you can move it down a little bit. Um, but yeah, we have, we have all the bottles via here. Um, Neem's going to move it and maybe turn it a little bit as well. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think they're going to start picking whenever. What do we have out there? Eldorado rum, 15 year. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. The Nika coffee grain whiskey <laughs> is great. <laughs> this top view actually isn't helpful at all. I don't think we need that. No, the top view doesn't do much. Yeah. Yeah, Nika coffee grain, the Eldorado, the, that nice Madeira, mm -hmm. the 15 year Glenlivet, the Bowmore 12, the Hamilton, and then the Willet. Okay, that's what that was. Mm hmm. Nice. What would you? What would your first pick? I mean. Elaine obviously gets first. She gets first pick, she gets seventh and sixth pick. So she gets three bottles overall. So here's the thing. There's Japanese whiskey on the table. Uh, if I'm picking first, I'm going to take that Japanese whiskey and remove it from the table and add it to my body. That is reasonable. <laughs> That's an incredibly reasonable choice. It's not even age marker Japanese whiskey, and I'm still doing it. Because age marker Japanese whiskey would be way above our range. Uh, so it's first gets first, then second gets second, third gets... Yeah, it's a snake. It's a, correct, yes. Yes. It's one, two, three, four, three, two, one. Correct. And then one, 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 one. And one gets the rest. Yeah. But there's seven bottles. There are seven bottles this time, so first place will only get three bottles. Right. Whereas normally the first place gets four bottles. Right, because and Brandon is Brandon is. Right. So actually, one Brandon, two blank four. Did Brandon just uh, just play that whole match for no reason? And he played it to win it. Okay, just for for spirit and pride. Yeah, not for spirits, but for spirit. Oh God, God. <laughs> Look, you set me up. I had to knock <laughs> it down. These are the rules. That's that's fair. It's it's nine p.m. But I don't have bad jokes. I still have bad jokes. <laughs> Elaine just guns for that 15-year Glenlivet here right off the bat. Really? Interesting. Or, wait. So, yeah, for the next round, instead of doing alcohol, we're going to do high-end food. So Ooh. I know I know one person is going to bring, I think, like 10 pounds of really nice uh, of really nice ham of some kind. Like prosciutto? Oh, I think it's a prosciutto. Oh, right. yes. Or some hamon iberico, maybe. Oh, Blyden brought out his own back? Blyden recoups his willet. That's a good choice. So though. bring another day. Yep. So this was a question that came up while we were while we were uh, commentating mm -hmm. for a food draft. Yes. What do you value? Like, if let's say someone, for example, me, sure. is good at baking. Ooh. Yes. How is that valued? I think I would value it at ingredients, uh, ingredient cost plus the skill level of the person. So, right. Uh, I, I don't think it needs to be like $50 worth of ingredients necessarily. No, but if I took, if you, you know. Put four hours of baking time into $30 of ingredients. Exactly. That right. If you value my time baking at $5 an hour, I think that's very reasonable. I've not tasted your food, so that's what I have to start you at. No, no, no. But I think, I think you have to value it <laughs> blind. I don't think you can, I don't think you can take somebody's word for it. I don't think that's reasonable. Fair. But yeah, no, I, as long as it's something that's consumable quickly and pretty degenerate, I'm fine with it. Right, right. so if I made some flourless chocolate cake, something oh, decadent, yeah. right? That's incredible, yes. Okay. <laughs> also, I think, they're, I think they're finishing up. Oh, my gosh. Elena has to carry all this alcohol home. She has all four of those. I don't think Brandon even took back anything. No, he didn't. He wow. said, well, I didn't bring anything, so I don't deserve to take anything home. Reasonable, reasonable. Yeah, Elaine, if you need help disposing of any of those bottles, I know a guy. He's wearing a jellyfish shirt. He's in this room. <laughs> um, he can't find that Stephen Menendian gush book, and he's sitting next to Mark. So Wait, you couldn't find it. I think it's I second even... shelf there. Oh, okay. Oh, no, there, top shelf, understanding gush. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm See, just it's just it out of shelf. my – it's slightly – oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, it was important, seeing as in the last or first VRD we did, there was literally none. 
Um, so it was. Uh, it was you gotta shameful. understand, Gush. Yeah, you, you gotta have understand to. it, Brandon. You didn't take. You took nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice. I'm a true hydro homie. Ah, hydro homies. Are you also a member of Never Broke a Bone? Uh, no, I've broken several. Um, I'm sorry. I've broken all my fingers except for one. Well, not no, everyone can be perfect. Instance. What? Yeah, hey! Which one did you not break? It was, it was all. <laughs> I, I was really. I was. As soon as I said, which one did you not break? I was like, this was a mistake. Because we're going to see a figure that we weren't prepared for. You took back your Willet. Oh, yeah, you took back the Willet? Yeah, oh, very yeah, nice. That was really good. I think Jeff won. See you, Jeff. Jeff. Jeff got the two best, I think. Well done. All right, well, everybody, thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to be calling it a day. We have the next one. I'll get, a, I'll get the, next, uh, the next dates as soon as we get one signed up. Follow along. The best place to see when those are going to be ahead of time is actually on our Twitter. Um, but we also are going to be posting it here, obviously. It's just Twitch doesn't have a great system of notifying you before the event happens. And spontaneously spending 12 hours with us <laughs> is difficult. While delightful. Yes, while delightful. But yeah, the next one's gonna be happening. We might get uh, Mr. Levine into the into the fray once again. But yeah, we'll see what happens. I know Kyle's definitely in. Jason Thurston's definitely in. Jason's in. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah so we're gonna do it. I think after uh, after Eternal Weekend. But we'll see. You're in. Good. And I, yeah, I'll I'll be happy to play. I'll be happy to be in the booth. Whatever it is you need. Yes. Yeah. So we'll find out what happens. But. We got a, we got a, it's going to be roughly three months, realistically two and a half, because I get pretty, uh, pretty bored and <laughs> want to do this instead. Nice. Uh, one of the things we were talking about is, uh, once I finish up that Vintage Q, then you can put the accelerator on. Uh-huh. Uh, if you want to use that still PRD to do that. I love it. Monthly, yeah. Uh, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah Vintage Cube Draft would be great. Uh, we tried doing one of those, and it was, went pretty rough um, because we just didn't have the setup for it ahead of time and because the cube had all alt arts. But as long as your, your stuff is readable on camera and we can kind of do the same stuff here, in. So, yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. And we're going to...